It's really embarrassed, like a stray dog. When Sirius flees, was he as embarrassed as me? No, he must be worse than me. He can only become a stray dog wandering around. Peter ate his sandwich. Memories of the guy who made himself so embarrassed. He threw the finished sandwich bags into the trash can and then sat on a chair by the park in a deep thought. Why did things become like this? Peter had asked himself this more than once. If it weren't for Voldemort, maybe he wouldn't be what he is now, but Peter didn't dare to hate Voldemort, and he didn't have that courage. Therefore, Peter hated Potter, hated Blake, and also hated Lupin, hated them for pulling himself into the Order of the Phoenix, hated them for bringing misfortune to himself. Actually, Peter didn't plan to join the Order of the Phoenix at the beginning, but because of the relationship between Potter, Black, and Lupin, he eventually joined the Order of the Phoenix with them. Then, all nightmares started from then. After being threatened by Voldemort and forced to choose between family and friends, he embarked on a path of no return. Peter chose his family and betrayed his friends, if that really counts as a friend. The betrayal was not just because of being threatened by the Dark Lord but Peter was also retaliating against his friends who caused misfortune and disaster. No, they never regarded him as a friend. It's gone from the beginning, Peter murmured. Yes, he has no retreat. Peter also didn't want to live like this. He didn't want to live like a stray dog. He had to worry about being afraid at any time, that Black would come back to kill him, and that Death Eaters would come to kill him. Albania, Peter said the place name softly. Legend has it that the Dark Lord is hidden in the forest of this country. If he can help the Dark Lord come back, those Death Eaters who wish to kill him will have to give up their hatred, accept him again, and seize him. The Ministry of Magic who took Peter's estate would also be punished. Also, Black, Lupin and others. Peter also hated Albert, who sent him to Azkaban prison. When he escaped from the prison, he also wanted to go and seek revenge from Albert. But Peter finally gave up. He finally escaped. He didn't want to take the risk. In fact, Peter didn't dare to seek revenge from Albert. The arrangement was so miserable last time that Peter had a problem with Albert. Some shadows in my heart. That guy is very nasty, insidious, cunning, and his own abilities are terrifying. He is known as the young Dumbledore. Peter suspects that the opponent can also use magic skillfully without using a magic wand. Once the sneak attack fails, it's really over, and the most embarrassing thing is that Peter doesn't know where Albert's house is. He may be able to find the location of his house after spending time, but Peter is afraid to take risks. He still doesn't want to die. The fact that he is still alive is exposed, and everyone will never let him go. Leaving the UK as soon as possible is the best choice. Maybe, only when the Dark Lord comes back, everything will be different. He doesn't need to live in embarrassment like he is now. At that moment, Peter seemed to have made up a certain determination, resolutely embarked on the journey to Albania. The road to Albania was not smooth. During this period, Peter used muggle tools most of the time, and sometimes he even had to use the imperious curse to control the muggle, let him leave the country with himself and the wand turned into a mouse, so as not to attract the attention of the wizard. It took Peter a full week to arrive in Albania by steamer from an Italian port. Albania is a chaotic and poor country. The muggles there are very poor, the population is very small, and there is no ministry of magic. Many dark creatures and black wizards like to settle in the Albanian forest. However, this really broke Peter a bit. The Albanian forest is not big or small. It is not easy to find the hidden dark lord in such a country. No one knows what the Dark Lord is hiding in that forest. Peter has to look for it one by one. Finding someone is not easy, especially when the target is the Dark Lord. It is even more difficult to find him. However, Peter has a special way of searching. Probably because it is the relationship of Animagus, Peter is relatively close to other animals, especially mice. There is always a strange close relationship. Whenever Peter turns into a mouse, he can communicate with the rats in the forest to inquire about the news in the forest. This makes him more efficient in finding the Dark Lord. After all, no one is more efficient than the residents living in the forest. Understand the situation in the forest. Peter spent a lot of time, but he did not find the Dark Lord, but found a bunch of dark creatures, especially vampires, banshees and trolls, and even some wizards settled here, 
but he just didn't find the Dark Lord. Although it made Peter a little bit disappointed, he also knew that this was a normal thing, whether it was the Dark Lord that was found by someone, instead of the so-called legend that the Dark Lord is hiding here. Peter did not give up easily. He is screening the forests in Albania one by one. It has to be said that the forest area of this country is really not average, and at least 30% of the land is covered by forest. Time is slowly stripping away Peter's patience, but for a guy who doesn't know what to do, this kind of boring thing is undoubtedly very suitable to pass the time, and communicating with mice is actually not too boring. He, you can learn a lot of information about the forest under your feet every time, and you only need to pay for some food. Moreover, staying in Albania, there is no need to worry about wizards, at least there are basically very few wizards here. He has decided that if he did not find the Dark Lord, he would settle here, away from those right and wrong. At least this land is more suitable for him to live in than Britain and even Europe. Yes, many criminals have settled here. There are not many remaining forests. Is it really just a legend? Peter took the map he got from Muggles, and the forests marked on the map were crossed one by one. Most of the legends are actually somewhat based. Peter came to the edge of a forest again. The sky around him was completely dark. The dark forest looked a bit hideous, but he couldn't frighten Peter away. He used to sneak into the forest at night. However, Peter is not in a hurry to enter the forest now because he is hungry and intends to eat something to fill his stomach at a nearby muggle hotel. And he also needs to bring some gifts to those mouse friends. When Peter entered the hotel disguised as a muggle carrying a suitcase, he suddenly heard someone calling himself. Dwarf Peter, are you still alive? Peter was shocked, his heart beating violently, and countless thoughts popped up in his head. When he turned his head, he saw a strange woman. Peter knows Bertha Jorkins who works in the Ministry of Magic and is a woman with a not very clever mind. Well, still alive. A lot of things have happened. Peter lowered his eyes. He knew he had to eliminate the hidden danger. If Bertha Jorkins returned to the ministry with news that he was still alive, God knew what would happen. Maybe some people think that Bertha Jorkins is stupid, but Sirius, Lupin, and the other Death Eaters can definitely guess that they are still alive and come over to make trouble for him. This is something Peter cannot tolerate. He must erase the memory of Bertha Jorkins meeting him and even kill her. I heard you. Some things are not suitable to be said here. Peter raised his hand and interrupted. Let's go out and have a chat. A lot of things have happened during this period of time. Bertha Jorkins hesitated for a moment and finally nodded and followed Peter out of the hotel. The two walked briskly in the night and Peter also began to tell some things that happened to him. For example, how he escaped from Azkaban prison, why he betrayed the Potters, why did he become a mouse and hide? If it were you, how would you choose? Watch your family members be killed or compromise? Peter smiled bitterly. So, you betrayed the Potters? Bertha Jorkins asked rhetorically. No, no. I actually secretly hinted that the Potters should run away and let the mysterious person take the air, but unfortunately they didn't have time to run away and were blocked, so they died. Peter could not hide his face. He is portraying himself as a person who is not dangerous. Later, my mother knew that I was still alive and was always very guilty, thinking that the things that year were all because of her, so I was forced to do it. With that choice, she felt that she was dying, so she took the compound medicine instead of me to die in Azkaban prison. She hoped that I could live well, so I came here to start a new life. Then why didn't you come out to prove that Black was innocent? Bertha Jorkins continued to ask. I think, but Sirius wants to kill me, and the Death Eaters want to kill me too. If I stand up, I'll be dead. Peter retorted. If it's you, would you like it? After the Potters died, Sirius used to chase me down. I tried to explain all this to him, but Sirius just didn't want to believe it thought I killed the potters and used them. A powerful magic, trying to kill me. Later, our spells collided and blew up the entire street, and the injured I had to turn into a mouse and ran away from the sewer in a hurry. As for Black, it is purely that the Ministry of Magic needs to find someone to take care of it. After all, a lot of muggles have died and must be accounted for, and Black laughed over there again, and was caught by the Ministry without trial. Throw it straight into Azkaban prison. Peter couldn't help but laughed at himself. Actually, 
I didn't expect it to be like this. You probably don't know. My mother donated most of Peter's wealth to the Ministry of Magic in order to see me in prison. Real. Of course it's true. Peter stopped. No one sneered. Otherwise, why do you think the Minister of Magic Fudge would allow her to visit me in Azkaban prison? Why? Before Bertha Jorkins was finished, he saw Peter holding a magic wand pointing at herself. The next moment, a red light lit up under the curtain of the night, and Bertha Jorkins was caught by Peter. The coma spell was brought down, and he didn't pay the price for his stupidity. Peter did not give up easily. He is screening the forests in Albania one by one. It has to be said that the forest area of this country is really not average, and at least 30% of the land is covered by forest. Time is slowly stripping away Peter's patience, but for a guy who doesn't know what to do, this kind of boring thing is undoubtedly very suitable to pass the time, and communicating with mice is actually not too boring. He, you can learn a lot of information about the forest under your feet every time, and you only need to pay for some food. Moreover, staying in Albania, there is no need to worry about wizards. At least there are basically very few wizards here. He has decided that if he did not find the Dark Lord, he would settle here, away from those right and wrong. At least this land is more suitable for him to live in than Britain and even Europe. Yes, many criminals have settled here. There are not many remaining forests. Is it really just a legend? Peter took the map he got from Muggles, and the forests marked on the map were crossed one by one. Most of the legends are actually somewhat based. Peter came to the edge of a forest again. The sky around him was completely dark. The dark forest looked a bit hideous, but he couldn't frighten Peter away. He used to sneak into the forest at night. However, Peter is not in a hurry to enter the forest now, because he is hungry and intends to eat something to fill his stomach at a nearby muggle hotel. And he also needs to bring some gifts to those mouse friends. When Peter entered the hotel disguised as a muggle carrying a suitcase, he suddenly heard someone calling himself. Dwarf Peter, are you still alive? Peter was shocked, his heart beating violently, and countless thoughts popped up in his head. When he turned his head, he saw a strange woman. Peter knows Bertha Jorkins, who works in the Ministry of Magic and is a woman with a not very clever mind. Well, still alive. A lot of things have happened. Peter lowered his eyes. He knew he had to eliminate the hidden danger. If Bertha Jorkins returned to the ministry with news that he was still alive, God knew what would happen. Maybe some people think that Bertha Jorkins is stupid, but Sirius, Lupin, and the other Death Eaters can definitely guess that they are still alive and come over to make trouble for him. This is something Peter cannot tolerate. He must erase the memory of Bertha Jorkins meeting him and even kill her. I heard you. Some things are not suitable to be said here. Peter raised his hand and interrupted. Let's go out and have a chat. A lot of things have happened during this period of time. Bertha Jorkins hesitated for a moment and finally nodded and followed Peter out of the hotel. The two walked briskly in the night and Peter also began to tell some things that happened to him. For example, how he escaped from Azkaban prison, why he betrayed the Potters, why did he become a mouse and hide? If it were you, how would you choose? Watch your family members be killed or compromise. Peter smiled bitterly. So, you betrayed the Potters? Bertha Jorkins asked rhetorically. No, no. I actually secretly hinted that the Potters should run away and let the mysterious person take the air, but unfortunately they didn't have time to run away and were blocked, so they died. Peter could not hide his face. He is portraying himself as a person who is not dangerous. Later, my mother knew that I was still alive and was always very guilty thinking that the things that year were all because of her, so I was forced to do it. With that choice, she felt that she was dying, so she took the compound medicine instead of me to die in Azkaban prison. She hoped that I could live well, so I came here to start a new life. Then why didn't you come out to prove that Black was innocent? Bertha Jorkins continued to ask. I think, but Sirius wants to kill me, and the Death Eaters want to kill me too. If I stand up, I'll be dead, Peter retorted. If it's you, would you like it? After the Potters died, Sirius used to chase me down. I tried to explain all this to him, but Sirius just didn't want to believe it. Thought I killed the Potters and used them. A powerful magic, trying to kill me. Later, our spells collided and blew up the entire street. 
and the injured I had to turn into a mouse and ran away from the sewer in a hurry. As for Black, it is purely that the Ministry of Magic needs to find someone to take care of it. After all, a lot of muggles have died and must be accounted for, and Black laughed over there again, and was caught by the Ministry without trial. Throw it straight into Azkaban prison. Peter couldn't help but laughed at himself. Actually, I didn't expect it to be like this. You probably don't know. My mother donated most of Peter's wealth to the Ministry of Magic in order to see me in prison. Real. Of course it's true. Peter stopped. No one sneered. Otherwise, why do you think the Minister of Magic Fudge would allow her to visit me in Azkaban prison? Why? Before Bertha Jorkins was finished, he saw Peter holding a magic wand pointing at herself. The next moment, a red light lit up under the curtain of the night, and Bertha Jorkins was caught by Peter. The coma spell was brought down, and he didn't pay the price for his stupidity. The breeze blew by, mixed with a hint of floral fragrance. The girl took a sip of fruit tea and looked at the flowers blooming in the courtyard, with a faint smile hanging around her mouth. This is not so much a place of work, it is more like a new home for the two. Isabel retracted his gaze from the flower bed, sat back at the desk by the window, picked up the envelope on the table, and carefully read the letter from Professor Bethsheda Bablin. Professor Mowen mentioned a lot in the letter. Useful suggestions and ideas. Sure enough, taking the first step will always be the hardest, Isabel murmured. When she picked up the quill and was about to continue her work, the sound of very light footsteps suddenly sounded in the study causing her to slightly raise her brows and look up at the bookcase next to her. A few seconds later, the bookcase suddenly moved to the side, revealing the secret door hidden behind the bookcase, and a familiar figure walked out of the hidden secret room. Why are you here? Isabel asked in surprise. During the day, Albert basically stayed at home with his relatives and would not come to Hogsmeade's cottage. Now that he is here, there are obviously other things. Well, I just received a letter from Mr. Sarah. Albert took out a piece of letter paper from the pocket of his slacks and briefly described the content of the letter to Isabel. We are going to Egypt to participate in international alchemy the day after tomorrow. Technical conference. Are you going to participate in the competition or just to exchange the experience of alchemy with others? Isabel did a survey of the international alchemy conference. Its nature tends to be more academic conferences and alchemists get together. Exchange research results. As for the so-called Gold Award for Pioneering Contribution at the Cairo International Alchemy Conference, it is to select the most valuable result from the wizards who participated in this academic conference. Since I went to participate, it would be best to win an award. Albert is very satisfied with the task rewards given by the Gold Award for Excellent Spelling Techniques by Barnabas Finkley. The skills of Voldemort's spelling techniques have disappeared replaced by A, a spelling techniques. However, what makes Albert a little bit dissatisfied is that Voldemort's spell casting technique, which had already been upgraded to level 3, has not been inherited. The new skill directly becomes level 0, so he has to spend experience to upgrade his skills again. You need to know that the skill is 2 to 3, but it takes a lot of experience. The rewards given by the tasks in international competitions are usually not too bad. Of course, Albert wants to fight for himself. Maybe the task rewards he brushed out can bring him unexpected surprises. Then what works are you planning to participate in? Isabel is a little curious about this. She knows that Albert is very good at alchemy and also makes many interesting things. Albert subconsciously glanced at the package he was holding in his left hand, smiled and shook his head and said, I haven't considered what to take to participate in the competition. Mandela straw wine is the most suitable result I think so far. It is a magic wine brewed by Albert through the skill of Mandela grass basic common sense. It is said that the effect of this wine is very good. I have to say that Mandela grass basic common sense is really a treasure trove. Basically it can be regarded as a clear arrangement of Mandela grass. Sometimes Albert even wants to comprehend a similar skill. It would be better if he could get the basic common sense of a unicorn. He was sure that he was a treasured unicorn. If it could be used properly, it would definitely be a fortune. Extraordinary wealth. You know that the horns, tail hair, and blood of unicorns are very useful. Can Mandela also be used to make wine? Isabel is surprised. Of course she knows what Mandela is. Yes, 
Fresh Mandela roots can be used to make wine, but the process is a bit cumbersome. As for its effects, you will never think of it. Albert gave Isabel a meaningful smile. Noting the smile on Albert's face, Isabel stopped questioning and turned off the subject. Actually, I'm even more curious about what's in the package you are holding. You said this? Albert handed the package to Isabel and said mysteriously, There are countless people's dreams in it. The dream of countless people? Isabel looked at the package in front of him and asked tentatively, Can I open it and take a look? Take it apart. Isabel opened the package and found that it was a sealed metal box. Except for some patterns, there was no gap in the box. It's very well protected. Mr. Lume sent you? Isabel had seen something similar before and instinctively told her that there was definitely something good in it. This is a kind of insurance, Albert explained with a smile. It is set so that only me can open it, and opening the box forcibly will destroy the contents. As he said, Albert pressed his thumb somewhere in the box and only heard a very light clicking sound. The box opened without warning, and there was a bottle of pure ruby-like potion inside. What is this? Isabel couldn't help asking. A potion that can delay aging? Albert handed the potion to Isabel. Delay aging? Isabel stared at Albert in disbelief, as if he wanted to determine whether the other party was lying, and she couldn't help holding the potion in her palm. At this moment, she suddenly understood why Albert said this was countless people. Dreams. Probably. Okay. Albert took out another bottle of powder from the box, as well as many sheets of parchment paper. The parchment paper detailed the manufacturing method of this potion. This is what you discussed with Mr. Nico? Isabel's voice was trembling, and she seemed to unplug the bottle and drank the potion. No woman can resist the temptation to delay aging. Well, the teacher helped me to complete the preliminary. However, the way he chose was different from the way I originally thought. Albert stared at the red powder in his hand. This thing is actually a catalyst, somewhat similar to the effect of a magic stone. Obviously, the inspiration for this approach came from the elixir of life. Albert knew that as long as he mastered the manufacturing method of this potion, he could improve and perfect it by upgrading his skills. This is the advantage brought to him by panel skills. However, because many of Albert's alchemy are upgraded through panel skills, it directly leads to his high level of theoretical alchemy, but the actual level of alchemy is not too high. He can master the alchemy on the skill panel relatively quickly, but he can't make two advanced items. Mandric root is actually one of the raw materials of the elixir of life, and it can be turned into an anti-aging potion through a complex potion process, as he said. Albert shook the pile of parchment in his hand and smiled and handed them to Isabel with his bright eyes. The latter took the parchment with trembling hands and read the contents greedily. However, Isabel is a little confused. She can understand every word, but she is still confused. Without certain theoretical knowledge of alchemy, it is actually normal to not understand. Albert looked at Isabel's lost appearance and softly comforted, Your expectations are too high. This thing will not go through a long period of time. Research and improvement, the effect is definitely not the same as you think. Won't you want to use it to participate in the competition? Isabel obviously disagrees with Albert's decision. Although using it to participate in the competition, he will definitely win the gold medal for pioneering contribution to the Cairo International Alchemy Conference. But, it's not worth it. It's just a broken prize. It is not worthwhile for Albert to leak out the production methods to delay aging. Once the anti-aging agent is known, God knows what will happen. No. Albert shook his head, smiled and said to Isabel, Come with me. The things in the laboratory will surely bring you unexpected surprises. What is it? Isabel asked. Mandela straw wine? Can you guess what its effect is? If you guess it, you can use that bottle. Albert said with a smile. I don't know. Isabel stared at Albert for a while and couldn't help but curl his lips. Albert's acclimacy became more and more powerful. As long as Albert was unwilling, it would be difficult for others to see what he was doing. What a think. However, Isabel is not in a hurry. She knew very well that Albert's talent in alchemy and potions would definitely be able to improve a more perfect potion for anti-aging. The two walked towards the laboratory. The house elves had already moved all the glass brewing utensils, 
and the liquid inside turned rose red. Well, it's mainly related to the rose petals added in the brewing process of Mandela. Is wine considered a kind of alchemy? Isabel asked in confusion. It's not really wine. It's more like a potion, but it doesn't need to be brewed like a potion. But I asked Mr. Sarah, and he said it should be. Because the scope of alchemy itself it's very wide, and the boundaries are blurry. Some potions are actually made through alchemy. It's not wrong to say that they are alchemy. I remember that pharmacists actually have other names. Brewing pharmacist or pharmacist. What is its effect? Isabel asked. Don't guess? Albert smiled and put his face to her ear and said softly, This wine is good for fertility and has a certain aphrodisiac effect. Would you like to try it? Sarah has already tested it. Now, you can drink with confidence without any obvious side effects. Test? Isabel frowned slightly when he heard the word. After a few animal tests, I will find someone to test it. Albert noticed Isabel's frown, reached out to help her smooth it, and said softly, as long as the price is right, there are many impoverished wizards willing to help the pharmacist test the potion. According to the feedback from the test, this wine does have an effect. It is said that the taste is sweet, a bit similar to sweet wine, which is probably related to the honey added at the end. He picked up a paper cup and poured some liquor from it. A faint fragrance immediately diffused. Albert put a finger on the liquor and licked it on the tip of his tongue. His eyes lit up, unexpectedly. With so many things added, it tastes pretty good. Isabel also learned that Albert dabbed a little with his fingertips and found that this thing did not account for wine at all. It was a bit like a kind of juice without much wine taste. However, there is no alcohol in it, even higher than beer, but it is covered up. What are you going to do? Isabel stared at the Mandela in the bottle for a moment, then moved to Albert who was weighing things, with a little confusion on his face. I'm going to try to make an ointment. Albert took a note from his pocket and handed it to Isabel, which recorded the manufacturing method. Name, flying ointment. Materials needed, 200 grams of beeswax, 20 grams of, 10 grams of billowig insect stings, 25 grams of mandela root powder, 30 grams of chrysanthemum extract, 15 grams of buttercup. Production process. What's the use of this thing? Isabel found that there are two ointment formulations and the methods of use are also different. Seeing how the flying ointment was used, Isabel raised her eyebrows slightly. She felt that this was not a serious thing. Flying ointment can relax the body and mind and enjoy the feeling of floating in the air. Albert was melting the beeswax and said to Isabel, if the formula is adjusted, people can fly directly. Flying. Isabel was puzzled. Literally. Albert explained. However, the danger lies in uncontrollable, and there is a risk of falling directly from the air. Isabel suddenly didn't know what to say. Okay, do you want to try it? Albert put the flying ointment into a small bottle, blinked at Isabel and said, It will definitely impress you. It seems that in order to verify the effect of flying ointment, Albert applied flying ointment to the back of his hand and felt it carefully, except that it was a little cold, it didn't seem to feel anything. Albert asked Isabel to help paint his left arm, and it finally had some effect. He swung in the air a few times and said to Isabel, The arm is indeed lighter, and it seems that something has helped offset it. Gravity. Well, you can understand it as the feeling of a person floating on the water. Although the effect is relatively average, Albert still feels that this potion has good potential. He spent some time finding the flying ointment on the skill panel, and put some experience in it to upgrade his skills. By adjusting the raw materials and manufacturing process, Albert quickly recreated an improved version of the flying ointment, which feels particularly relaxing when applied to the arm. The effect of the other version is more obvious. As long as it is applied to the surface of the object, it will be similar to imposing a spell like a floating spell on the object. Albert suspects that if this thing is further developed, it may be made with the technology of broomsticks a magical version of the airship. He quickly found Isabel, shared his new discoveries with the other party, and successfully let the study chair float in the air. I think this thing is more reliable than Mandela straw wine, Isabel commented. Okay, leave those alone, come and help me apply this stuff. Albert stuffed another bottle of flying ointment into Isabel's hand and took her hand to the master bedroom. Don't you think? Or wait for the evening. 
Isabel understood Albert's meaning. His cheeks flushed slightly. I think there is actually no difference between day and night. Ouroboros Bar, Cairo, Egypt. In just one day, Valeria's good mood for a holiday in Egypt was completely evaporated by the hot sun outside. All right. In fact, Valeria came with her friend Catherine to participate in the International Alchemy Conference and came to Egypt for a vacation. As early as three days ago, they arrived in Egypt. When they first arrived in Cairo, they even ran to visit the tourist attractions here, and then they never left the Ouroboros bar where they were staying. I hate Egypt. I hate this kind of spooky weather. Valeria drank the red drink in the glass, looked sideways at the scorching sun outside the window, and complained to the female companion beside her. It's not good for the skin to stay in this kind of ghost place for a long time. Then why are you insisting to follow me? Isn't it okay to stay and see the store? Kathleen slowly read the Finks Daily, provided by the bar for free, and said without looking up. The United States is even more uncomfortable. There are a lot of rules and regulations, and I almost can't breathe. Valeria is not cold about the atmosphere of the American magical world. She patted her chest lightly with her hand, as if to allow herself to catch her breath, and then glared at her friend and complained. Also, you ran out to play by yourself, so you are embarrassed to leave me in the store to work? Aren't all the profits made during this time belong to you? Valeria poked the ice cubes in the cup with a straw and said confidently, What do I want the money for? Wouldn't it be more comfortable to find a rich person to support me? Then you just refused Cameron what to do last time. Wasn't that guy very rich? Kathleen asked rhetorically. I'm not a fool. The guy named Cameron knew it was not a good thing at first glance. Moreover, he didn't try to chase you in the first place, but he got a dirty nose on your side and then chased me in turn. Valeria was out of anger when she heard Catherine talk about Cameron, the wizard who had pursued her a while ago. Cameron is indeed pretty handsome. He is in the same class as Catherine. The family is also rich. But what makes Valeria very upset is that the guy's eyes are always squinted when they see them, and he is pursuing. Catherine ran to pursue her after her failure. What do you think of her? A spare tire for the car. What irritated Valeria the most was that Cameron was totally insincere just looking for a beautiful woman to play with. Doesn't he know that being young is a woman's most precious wealth? Actually, being single is fine. Catherine knew that Valeria still wanted to find a good home for herself before she turned 25. The beauty shop of the two is now very famous in the United States. After all, there are two big beauties in the shop. The effect of the beauty medicine is also very good, and it is widely favored by the witches. With the money, Valeria's vision of picking her boyfriend has become even higher, and the men who have come to her to strike up a conversation have made her refuse. In fact, half of this is Albert's pot. He raised the eyes of the two of them and made a lot of money because of the beauty. Both of them are living very well now, and finding a boyfriend is no longer so anxious. Ines, are you really looking for one? Valeria couldn't understand Catherine's thoughts. It's difficult to find a suitable one. I can barely make do with it. It's not as comfortable as coming by myself. Isn't there a good candidate? Valeria stared at Catherine. She thought that her friend had a great affection for Albert. It doesn't seem to be a strange thing to change from a friend to a lover. Sometimes friends who have a good relationship can run to the bed to chat, and then they will be together later. So, that's why you got the idea of Anderson? Catherine knew why Valeria ran to Egypt with herself. Be careful that Isabel broke off friendship with you. I didn't say to rob her boyfriend. Valeria pouted. And, aren't they married yet? They are engaged. Catherine reminded. If you don't get married, you have a chance. And you said, Albert may be able to make a real beauty potion. Valeria took half of Catherine's drink and continued to drink. We both someone has to sacrifice a bit. Otherwise, one day Albert really succeeds. And he will surely hide it from us. Don't think about it. Isabel will also come to Egypt. You won't have the chance. Catherine also had to admit that Valeria's words were very reasonable. Who would share valuable research results with strangers who have nothing to do with it? Isabel is not writing a book? Valeria asked puzzledly. Speaking of which, I remember she used to say that after graduation, she wanted to inherit her father's dream and continue to study magic. People always change. And why do you think she and Albert came to Egypt? 
Catherine put down the newspaper and looked at her friend and said angrily, just to prevent you from taking advantage of her absence, the man who went in and slept with her. I dare say the photos you sent last time must have caused Isabel's vigilance. Should it not be the Spanish report that caused Isabel's vigilance? Valeria felt that it should be the Spanish female singer's pot. No woman knows enough to let her boyfriend stay with other beautiful women. Why don't I go and tell her straight? Isabel must know my careful thoughts. She is very good at dementia. Valeria thinks I can talk to Isabel. As long as she doesn't grab each other, the contradiction between the two parties is not irreconcilable. After all, men are all lascivious, especially good men who don't lack women. One day when a lover suddenly appears outside, it's better to put it under your nose, and then they can open a beauty shop together. If you dare to tell Isabel, you probably won't even have to do it with friends. Catherine snorted. She thought Valeria was whimsical. And this guy wanted to go to England to partner with Isabel. She actually knew that life in the United States made Valeria feel very unfree. In fact, most outside wizards hate the atmosphere of the American magical world. They are here. Valeria waved to the door and saw young men and women who had just entered the bar approaching here. Why are you here just now? When exchanging gold coins on the goblin side, I ran into a little trouble. Isabel pulled the chair away and sat down opposite Catherine. Albert put the suitcase at Isabel's feet, then went to the bar to find the bartender to do the room registration and ordered a few ice drinks with the gold coins he had just exchanged. The waiter quickly brought the drink over with the plate and Albert got his room key and their room was booked by Nicholas who had come in advance. The weather here is too hot. If you want to go for a walk, just wait for the evening. Albert sat down next to Isabel, took a sip of the ice drink, and felt a bit like the sour plum soup of the previous life, cool and refreshing. Let's go together tonight. Valeria nodded in agreement. She took a sip of ice cream and asked Albert with a smile. This time you came to the International Alchemy Conference. Do you still want to make a pioneering contribution? Go back with the gold award? Although Valeria's words seemed like a joke. However, this is not impossible. Catherine said that Albert is very good at alchemy. Where is Catherine? Albert did not answer, but instead asked, Are you here to compete, or? I just came here to learn more with Grandpa Nicholas. Maybe I can find some inspiration here. Catherine secretly looked at Isabel with red cheeks, but was surprised to find that Isabel didn't have makeup, but it was better than the last time I met. It's more beautiful. Many people in the bar secretly looked at their gazes, and a small part of them moved to Isabel. She suddenly became a little jealous and Albert must have really developed a more effective cosmetic medicine for Isabel. What about you? Are you really going to win another gold medal? Catherine asked rhetorically. Naturally, we have to fight hard. It doesn't matter whether we can win or not. Although Albert said, everyone who knows him knows that this is a kind sentence. It means that the emphasis is on participation. However, every time Albert finished saying this, he would easily take the champion away before leaving making the players who participated in the competition with him grit their teeth. This is the result of my research, Kathleen said as she took out a box. After opening, it was a medicine bottle with a light gray liquid in it. Plant extract? Albert guessed what was in the medicine. Yes. Catherine nodded and asked, What is your result? I have achieved some results in the research of Mandela grass. Albert took out a palm-sized box, opened it, and pulled out a bottle of wine? The glass bottle really looked like a wine bottle. This is a potion? Both of them were a little uncertain because they had never seen a potion in a wine bottle. This is Mandela straw wine. Albert introduced to the two with a smile. I call it youth and love. Can Mandela grass also be brewed? Catherine and Valeria looked at each other, feeling that they had gained a lot of knowledge, but they didn't expect that Mandela grass could make wine. Moreover, they all guessed that this thing in front of them must have any special effects, otherwise it would be a laughingstock to take a strange bottle of wine in the competition, and Albert obviously would not make jokes about his reputation. Yes, but it's more troublesome. This is a magic wine with some special effects and a very good taste. Albert said meaningfully, after drinking it, the human body will experience the vitality of youth and the beauty of love. So I call it youth and love. Can I taste it? Valeria asked. Wait until you find someone you like. Isabel helped Ite refuse. 
She has drunk this thing and naturally knows its effect. The weird name of Youth and Love was given by the two together. Any other results? Catherine asked. To be honest, using the so-called magic wine to participate in the International Alchemy Conference is still a bit unreliable. This can be regarded as the result of my research. Albert took out a flat container, which contained the improved flying ointment after upgrading to level 3. Before anyone else could speak, he smeared a little flying ointment on the glass cup after drinking, and the cup floated swayingly, as if someone secretly used a floating spell on it. Catherine also smeared a bit on the newspaper and found that the newspaper had also floated. It's incredible, Valeria murmured. This thing is also made of Mandela grass? Although Catherine couldn't think of any use for this thing for the time being, she couldn't help but sympathize with Albert's opponent. Is this kind of ointment a product of alchemy? A young and handsome wizard walked towards them, looked curiously at the cup and newspaper floating in the air, and then fell to Albert's oil on the cup. On the anointing, he smiled and said to Albert, I think you should have also come to participate in the International Alchemy Conference. My name is Arya. I am glad to meet you. Albert. Albert stretched out his hand to shake the opponent. Are you exchanging your alchemy achievements? Can I join you? Arya stared at a few alchemy works on the table and politely introduced herself. I also have a good experience in alchemy. To be honest, it's been a long time since I met a young colleague. Sorry, our table is full. Catherine said quietly, there are already reservations in the two places next to it. After that, she ignored the handsome young man, looked directly at Albert and asked, Where is my grandpa? They met acquaintances on the road. They are probably still chatting. They should be here in a while. Albert gave Arya, who had a slightly stiff cheek, an apologetic smile. Sorry, I interrupted. Let's talk at the exchange meeting tomorrow. Arya gave Albert a polite smile, turned and walked away. That guy's intention is really obvious. Catherine curled her lips in disdain. The other party seemed to come over to talk to Albert about alchemy, but Catherine knew very well that the guy had been watching them secretly a few days ago. I really thought she didn't know. After all, there are three big beauties here, and Mr. Arya is still so handsome, and he will definitely want to pursue you. It's not difficult for Albert to guess the purpose of the uninvited young man. Pursuing beautiful women, it's normal to meet them in a bar. What if he asks your Isabel? Catherine asked. I will reject him directly. Isabel said calmly. What if he chases after him? Valeria asked. I'll take him to the hospital. Albert said with a smile and narrowed his eyes. However, I don't think I have a chance. Arya is obviously a smart man. Are you smart? Valeria didn't think how smart Arya was. She could be called smart if she was able to see through her intentions at a glance. Of course, he talks to me not to you, because strange girls are especially wary of strangers when they are abroad, Albert said calmly, even if he is handsome, he will still be wary when he comes uninvited. His movement is untested. If everyone becomes friends first you can lower your vigilance. Well, that guy actually bet people and soaked one of you, Isabel said suddenly. The atmosphere around became a little weird, and Catherine squinted her eyes and asked, are you sure? I'm a photographer. The Mr. Aria just now doesn't know a clemency. Isabel took a sip of his drink and said lightly, It's not difficult to know what he thinks. Albert must have had a hard time, Valeria teased. Albert is very good at a clemency. I can't see through his thoughts, and I don't want to spy on other people's thoughts at will. Isabel said calmly, of course, I don't have the habit of sharing boyfriends with others. Don't say that, I won't rob you, and I can help you watch him. Valeria said it tactfully, but Albert understood. What's the matter with this guy? Are Ukrainian girls so open? Ahem. Do you want to go shopping together at night? Albert gave a light cough, trying to divert everyone's attention, lest everyone was embarrassed by the topic just now. It's not that safe at night here, especially for outsiders. When Catherine spoke, she deliberately lowered her voice. Moreover, Many of the goods on Cahill Square were prepared by locals for wizard tourists. The fake and inferior products are not too expensive and unreliable. No matter where you go, there is a phenomenon of slaughter. Albert is not surprised. He has seen such things a lot in his previous life. 
Catherine actually likes you very much. Valeria blinked at Albert. The atmosphere at the scene suddenly became a little weird. I'm honored. Albert nodded and smiled at Catherine. He felt that Valeria wanted to make trouble in front of him. Catherine didn't refute, but stared at Valeria dissatisfiedly as if to say, It's fine if you are in estrus. Don't drag me into the water. Isabel was calm throughout the whole process, completely disregarding Valeria's careful thoughts. She actually saw a long time ago that Valeria and Catherine had a good impression of Albert. But what about it? Even if Valeria knew it, that was the case. For a while, everyone was silent. The weird atmosphere at the scene made Albert very speechless. Is this the legendary Shura field? In the past, I wanted to find two or three girlfriends, and my mind was definitely caught by the door. The arrival of Sarah and Nicholas broke the awkward atmosphere. It's been a long time, Mr. Nicholas. Albert couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, and took the initiative to stand up and give the old man in front of him a hug. I heard that you won the Banab's Finkley Gold Award for Outstanding Spelling Techniques a while back. The old man sat down next to his granddaughter and smiled and said to Albert, With your current winning speed, it will be a few years from now. You can get all the international awards together. However, I am more curious now. What alchemy results do you plan to use to take away the gold award from the International Alchemy Conference? I made a little discovery in the research of Mandela grass. Albert took the Mandela grass wine and flying ointment out again. Then, briefly explained the effects of the two things to the two elderly people. After listening, Sarah exchanged glances with Nicholas, and finally Sarah spoke. One thing, I think you need to know that participating in the International Alchemy Conference means that you need to provide the formula and related materials of the research results. You should know what this means. Sarah lowered his voice and said, We suggest you take out both the Mandela wine and the flying ointment, and then only take the flying ointment to the International Alchemy Conference. Why? Valeria asked puzzled. She felt that 80% of this incident had something tricky that they didn't know. Because if you provide a formula, it means that other alchemists will soon know the alchemy formula. Although the Egyptian Alchemy Research Center will apply for a patent, the patent is actually useless because other people can completely produce it privately and their interest will be damaged. In addition, it is almost impossible to hold those guys accountable across the border. It's not difficult for Albert to guess the reason. However, he doesn't really care about these semi-finished products. Both the Mandela straw wine and the flying ointment have room for improvement. If the semi-finished products can be used to complete the panel task, it is actually a good deal. There is another reason. Wizards before the age of 30 can only receive the gold award for pioneering contributions, while wizards over the age of 30 can win the International Alchemy Award. Although the medals and bonuses of the two awards are the same, but the meaning is very different. Why separate the awards? Valeria asked suspiciously. Is it to give young people a chance to win? Yes, that's it. Sarah nodded and said, It is a chance to give young people and save some face for other alchemists. If the interests of both parties do not conflict, the International Alchemy Conference will be more harmonious. Of course. Nicholas looked weird. The other reason is to let young people share the fruits of alchemy. Everyone looked at Nicholas, waiting for him to finish. In fact, Many wizards do not want to hand over their research results, especially those more profitable inventions. You must know that nothing in this world is more profitable than a monopoly, especially the Mandela straw wine. Believe me, many wizards will like it. That means a lot of wealth. If you want to sell this kind of wine in the Americas, you can find Catherine. Anyway, you don't know if you are working together for the first time. Nicholas was very satisfied with Albert and even thought about matching him with Catherine. Unfortunately, after Catherine became his heir, this kind of thing was impossible. I will think about it, Albert said. However, he is not yet ready to consider these things. Valeria winked at Catherine, and she also felt that Nicholas also intended to bring them together and deepen the relationship between them. As far as Valeria knows, Albert and Catherine not only cooperated in the research and development of beauty medicines, but also sold Buffy brain rejuvenants for other reasons. However, Catherine never said that this is also the reason why she suspects that the two are tricky. By the way, here you are. This is the admission ticket to the International Alchemy Competition. Sarah took a piece of parchment from his pocket 
and handed it to Albert. Then he reminded, You guys might have to go to bed early today because you need to get up early tomorrow morning about 5 o'clock. Any questions? I want to buy some specialty products here. It would be better if I could buy a few books on alchemy and go back. Albert said. He felt that when he came to Egypt, there were some things he shouldn't miss. If you want to buy alchemical items, you can go to the black market here. It is open every Saturday afternoon. If you want to go in, you must have an acquaintance recommend it to the bar owner. Nigula is introduced to Albert. Of course, you can also go to the card. Heller Plaza. Well, near Muggles Liberation Square. However, I suggest you use flu powder directly from here. It will be much faster. Although it costs a little money, I think that little money is for you. Does not matter. Are you going together? Isabel invited Valeria and Catherine. No, we've already visited. Catherine refused. I think it would be nice to go shopping again, Valeria said, last time. I passed by during the day, and I left after a quick stroll. I heard people say that there might be a circus show at night. Who said it? Yourself? In the evening, everyone dines in the pub. The staple food here is flatbread. It is said that they will add some grilled meat and fresh vegetables to it. A gray-green thick soup, the taste is not bad, a bit like mixed vegetable soup, but a bit ugly, usually eaten with flatbread. Albert prefers grilled chicken, which is filled with green wheat and rice. The taste is very good, a bit similar to chicken wing rice, and the taste is great. The drink is Roselle tea, which is said to have beauty effects, so the price is a bit more expensive than black tea. It is said that a small amount of honey is added to it to make the taste sour and sweet. Many girls like to drink it. During the meal, Catherine also mentioned that the Egyptian side uses roselle essence as a beauty medicine. After dinner, they sat there chatting for a while, and the four went to find the bartender together. Under the guidance of the service desk, they went to Kahaleir Square through a fireplace, for which they paid a gold coin. At night, the Kahal Square is quite lively. Oil lamps are on both sides of the street. Many vendors are setting up stalls on the side of the road, selling some messy things. They tell Albert directly that the 80% of the vendors sold are things that fool people. It is a pity that there is no circus show in the square today. However, Albert found a stall selling gourmet food, and was even more surprised to find that it was actually selling roasted sweet potatoes. However, since it was not long after dinner, they only bought two copies. It tastes very good, much better than roasted potatoes. Isabel took the piece of sweet potato covered with cheese that Albert handed him and commented with a bite. You can let the house elves do it for you, but it may be more difficult to buy sweet potatoes in the UK. Albert felt that he could hire Dobby to help him grow things in the future. It's best to build a greenhouse, so you don't have to worry about running out of fruits and vegetables in the future. Not knowing that this is the case on weekdays here, Albert found the bookstore. However, what disappointed him was that there were not many books that he wanted. The so-called Introduction to Alchemy, Xiaosheng Black Magic and other books, he has all turned over, and buying them back is pure waste. Money. In the end, Albert only bought a few high-end books that he was interested in, which was not in vain, because the situation in the magic item shop made him even more disappointed. Although alchemy is very advanced, there is not much new in the shop. S things. Most Alberts can basically guess the principle as long as they have seen it, and the last few people returned with some snacks. In addition to Albert bought a pile of books, plus a few suspicious defense against the dark arts items in the magic shop, Isabel bought a bottle of Roselle essence as a beauty potion and the pile of delicacies in the hands of the two girls. I told you a long time ago, there is nothing interesting there at all. Catherine said calmly. You are right. Albert didn't refute, nodding. Let's go back and rest first. See you tomorrow. Looking at the closed door, Valeria took a bite of the barbecue and sighed slightly. It seems that we have no chance. You have no chance. Catherine said. Go back and rest. I have to get up early tomorrow. If you can't get up, don't blame me for throwing you here and go to the International Alchemy Conference by yourself. Don't be so merciless. Valeria looked at her friend helplessly after closing the door. Suitable, do you plan to solve it with your fingers in the future? There is nothing wrong with strengthening contact with Albert. You are not in business. Further strengthening the relationship can make you closer. As for in the future, you can also have a child. 
You don't need him anyway. Responsible, Valeria persuaded. You are very enthusiastic about bringing us together? Catherine looked at her friend with a weird look. No way. Isabel is the first love, and Albert himself is that kind of rational guy. Valeria murmured. But as long as there is the first time, there will be a second time, and I will have the chance. Is it really necessary to achieve this level? Kathleen felt that she knew her friend again. It is necessary, Valeria said seriously. I yearn for money and hope to maintain my beauty. I dream of having a good gentle and considerate man, living a free and comfortable life, and doing what I like every day. And now, Albert shows me that what I want is close at hand. Why don't I pursue it? I won't fight with Isabel, because I can't win, but what about being a lover, anyway? Don't care. Valeria said quietly, Ukraine is a terrible place. If you've been to where you have been, and know where you've been, you'll know why I did that. Albert felt that not long after he closed his eyes, he was awakened by the rapid knock on the door outside. He opened his eyes in a daze, and instinctively reached out to touch the wand on the head of the bed, and muttered, Damn it, what time is it now? Yesterday, although Mr. Sarah mentioned that he had to get up early today, it didn't have to be so early. It was still pitch black outside the window. He yawned again, and the wand in his hand flicked slightly, letting the ball of light escape from the wand and hover above his head. The soft white light immediately dissipated the darkness in the room. Why is it time for departure? Isabel asked sleepily. There was a quick knock on the door outside. Albert scanned the sight glass on the bed cabinet, and the magic alarm did not respond indicating that there should be no danger nearby. So he replied to the door. I'm awake, let's go down. Although the sight glass is very unreliable, Albert also has to admit that the sight glass is still useful after all. At least it can provide them with early warning. If the detection and early warning effect of the sight glass can be combined with the footprint spell, it would be even better to make it into an early warning radar. It's a pity that Albert's attainments in alchemy are limited, and he still hasn't been able to realize it. It is sometimes quite difficult to make magical objects work too delicately. He stretched, pulled the thin quilt away, and got out of the bed. Then he yawned and started to change his clothes when he was sleepy. What are you staring at me for? Albert changed his clothes and found Isabel staring at him in a daze. Do you need me to change your clothes? With that said, he helped Isabel get the clothes over and reached out to help her undress. I knew it was taking advantage of me. Isabel patted Albert's paws, she looked as though she hadn't woken up yet, and seemed very tired. No way, it's hard to fall asleep when you go to a strange place. As a result, you are woken up again before you sleep, and you are already very educated without losing your temper. Isn't your advantage already taken up by me? Albert walked into the bathroom with a smile, ready to brush his teeth and wash his face, so that he would wake up completely. As for watching beautiful women changing clothes, this is not the first time I have seen each other. If you are tired, don't go and stay in the bar to rest. Albert put his head out of the bathroom and said to Isabel who was changing clothes. No need. After Albert finished washing, Isabel got dressed. And it was already ten minutes later when they went downstairs together. Many people are waiting in the bar. It is not difficult to see that most people are in a bad mood. People are yawning and drinking hot tea distributed to them by the bartender. Since the International Alchemy Conference needs to borrow the site of the Alchemy Research Center, and the entrance of the Alchemy Research Center is at the Sphinx, the alchemists participating in the International Alchemy Conference must pass in batches to avoid a large number of wizards appearing the vicinity of the Sphinx attracted the attention of muggles. This is actually the reason why the Sphinx passed so early. After all, the Sphinx is a relatively famous attraction. Can't they use Apparition to go directly to the location of the International Alchemy Conference? Valeria drank the hot tea provided to the guests by the bar and whispered, Don't they know that lack of sleep is the greatest natural enemy of women? It's normal for the Alchemy Research Center to ban the use of apparitions. This is to prevent someone from invading. Catherine is not difficult to understand. Just like the Ministry of Magic in most countries also prohibits apparitions. What's the use? The magic that the wizard prohibits apparition can't stop the house elves. Valeria curled her lips. However, I doubt what the organizers are thinking about. If everyone is in the past, would it be possible to stand together? Snooze over there? 
Yes, due to lack of sleep, most of the contestants are sleepy to death. How can they still be in the mood to participate in some international alchemy conference, and they have not even eaten breakfast now, so they can't compete hungry? There will be enough places for you to sit down and rest, and there will be plenty of free food, so you don't need to worry. It's not the first time Nicholas has come to participate in the International Alchemy Conference, so he understands the situation here. At this moment, a famous wizard yelled to the crowd. All the people participating in the International Alchemy Conference will gather here. And the people participating in the International Alchemy Conference will gather here. Come here and gather. We are about to set off. Let's go there too. Nicholas led everyone to the crowd. Then, they were quickly told that they had to apparate in batches. The six Alberts held hands and appeared near the Sphinx, and they saw lights swaying in the dark. The desert at night was a bit cold, and Albert was blown by the cool breeze and couldn't help but get excited. They walked in the direction of the light source and came to the side of the Sphinx. There stood the famous wizard in the cloak. After chatting with Sarah for a few words, they motioned for them to be flat from the side of the Sphinx. The wall passes through, similar to Platform 9 and 3 quarters. The interior of the Sphinx is a large hall. A wizard checks their admission ticket at the entrance. He inserted the admission ticket from the back of the Golden Sphinx statue's head, then pulled it out of the Sphinx statue's mouth and handed it to Albert again. Okay, come in. Your display cabinet is number 51. The so-called display cabinet is a glass table, a bit like the gold jewelry display cabinet of the previous life. Behind each counter is a staff member of the Alchemy Research Center. After checking Albert's admission ticket and registering, so I put the Mandela wine and flying ointment in display case number 51, and a piece of parchment paper describing their effects will be placed next to them. Okay, let's find a place to rest first. Albert stretched out his hand to cover his yawn and led everyone to the rest area on the edge of the hall. There is also a counter that provides them with free breakfast and drinks, and several house elves are busy preparing meat patties for everyone. It is to add various fillings to the freshly baked pie. Basically, everyone who came here took a pie and gnawed there, with a strong fragrance floating in the air. When Nicholas was resting, he told them about the black material of the International Alchemy Conference, by the way. Many of the so-called alchemy achievements in the display cabinets are mostly useless semi-finished products, and there are even false and inferior products. However, Everyone has acquiesced to this kind of thing, otherwise there would be so many alchemy results. Of course, fakes and inferior semi-finished products are not allowed in the competition. It's just that there will be a few unlucky people in each session who are exposed to lies by the heady newcomers. The so-called participation of more than 100 people is to bluff people. Everyone just wants to use this opportunity to communicate, and by the way to build a relationship, the number of people who actually participate in the International Alchemy Conference may be counted by 10 fingers. The so-called Gold Award for Pioneering Contributions at the Cairo International Alchemy Conference is even more worthless. If it were 50 years ago, the compelling standard of the International Alchemy Conference was actually quite high. Every time the competition was fierce, but then as people explored alchemy, the results of alchemy became less and less, and competition was added. The income of the game is a bit unattainable. So many people just use their achievements to show everyone a little bit, but do not plan to participate in the competition. Although the gold award for pioneering contribution is not always possible, as long as there are no accidents, the probability of Albert's flying ointment winning is still very high. However, Albert himself didn't care about this very much. He was looking at the new task that had just been triggered. Metal Collector now that you have participated in the International Alchemy Conference, why not get the gold medal handily, although no one wants that thing, but he is at least a medal, which can give you a better name. Rewards, 5,000 experience, 2,000 gallons, alchemy plus one, prestige in the magic world plus 1,000. I don't feel as good as the Banab's Finkley Award for Excellence in Casting Techniques last time, but the medals are actually okay. Alchemy plus one can wait for him to raise the alchemy before receiving it. However, the description of this mission is exactly the same as Nicholas said. Few people are willing to participate. Although 2,000 gallons are quite a lot, there is still a big gap with the unique business brought about by alchemy. I saw a lot of old friends just now and told them about you. Those guys are very curious and want to see you. After Sarah came back from a stroll, she took Albert to visit him. Good old men. 
Although Sarah meant to let Albert know each other, more often it was to show him off. When Sarah introduced Albert, he seemed to say to them, Look, this is my proud protege. Seeing those old men stunned, surprised, envious, and admiring gazes, Sarah felt that the bad mood of getting up early was swept away. This is Morpsos. Sarah introduced a Greek to Albert. This is Albert Anderson, a descendant of Mog McDug. The alchemist named Morpsos froze for a moment, then looked at Albert again, nodded at him with a friendly smile, and introduced his son Jason to Albert. That was a boy who was a few years younger than Albert. He spoke very bad English. Albert was very uncomfortable, so he simply talked to Jason in Greek. As for Sila's introduction, he probably guessed who the Morphos in front of him was. Your Greek is awesome. Jason was really taken aback when he discovered that Albert had switched languages without a trace. That group of people are always so good. Listening to Albert's fluent Greek, Morpsos recalled the first time he met McDug, that guy spoke very fluent Greek. Language. Are you going to train Jason as a successor? Sarah chatted with Morpsos in English. Well, Jason is still good, and he likes alchemy very much. I will bring him out to increase his knowledge. It is naturally impossible for Morpsos to give the benefits of flu fans to others. It is the best way to cultivate his own son as heir. Good choice. Which one? I remember he seemed to be good at potions. Morpsos already remembered who Albert Anderson was. The cheating at the Magic School Potions Championship last time caused a small disturbance in the Greek magic world, and recently this one won the Banab's Finkley Award for Outstanding Spelling Techniques. To be honest, that award has more weight than the current gold award for pioneering contribution. He is also good at alchemy, Sarah said meaningfully. Is he here to participate in the International Alchemy Conference? Morpsos couldn't help widening his eyes and asked in disbelief. Yes, and 80% can get the gold medal for pioneering contribution. Sarah is very confident in Albert. Not many young contestants come to participate. If you go to showcase number 51, you will definitely have unexpected surprises. After a brief acquaintance, Sarah took Albert and walked away, leaving only the dumbfounded Morpsos. A minor wizard won three international awards? It's almost like dreaming. Who is that person? Jason asked Morpsos, he is really good. It's really a very powerful guy. You will deal with him in the future. Morpsos smiled and said to his son, let's go. Let's see his alchemy results. He participated in the show? Jason was even more surprised. Yes, and I plan to participate in the competition. It is very likely to win the gold medal for pioneering contributions. Morpsos didn't think Sela needed to lie in brack. The halo on Albert's head seemed to make those bragging bleak. However, Morpsos found that he still underestimated Albert's abilities. The display cabinet number 51 was full of people, especially after seeing the introduction of the bottle of Mandela. If it really has that effect, no, with that young man's arrogance, obviously it won't be fake. Morpsos thought he might have a chat with each other. A voice suddenly echoed in the hall, interrupting his thoughts, and it was Hermes the president of the Alchemy Research Center, who spoke. The old man chatted over there for an hour, is mainly to introduce the International Alchemy Conference and the process of participating in the competition to contestants from various countries. This is an old man with no compelling numbers. He is talking right over there, but basically few people in the whole meeting are listening. Everyone is talking separately. In fact, as long as the process of the International Alchemy Conference is printed on paper and sent to everyone to read, it can also shorten the opening speeches to a few minutes. After I didn't know who was the first to applaud, everyone also breathed a sigh of relief and applauded together. There are more and more alchemists in front of Display Case 51. I don't know if it's people's curiosity or the alchemy results displayed there are too tempting. Anyway, there are many wizards who see the crowds there. So many alchemists gathered over there to watch. The wizards who came together soon joined in discussing the possibility of using Mandela grassroots to make potions. It is very common to use Mandela grassroots to make potions, but the use of it to make wine is unheard of, and the use of Mandela grassroots is unheard of. Does the wine brewed from grassroots really have the effects described on the parchment paper? Wouldn't it be bluffing? If the Mandela straw wine is really effective, it will be very attractive to a large number of wizards. Of course, it may be fake. 
Mandela grass cannot be brewed at all, and the wine in the display case does not have the effect depicted on the parchment paper, and the possibility is very high. The discussion of Mandela straw wine quickly became polarized. More people believe that the bottle was fake, but some alchemists who knew Sarah and Albert thought it was true. It's all gone. This is a fake at all. Many alchemists feel that this is not good, because every international alchemy conference has similar incidents. They think that fraudulent things should be banned from appearing in the showcase. Who knows who Albert Anderson is? I always think this name is a bit familiar. When someone saw the exhibitor of the work, he slightly frowned and asked the acquaintances around him. You don't usually read newspapers? Claude said grotesquely. You don't even know the famous geniuses, and you still think that what people show is fake. Duh. Claude is also an old friend of Sarah, and he has seen Albert at an alchemy party, and he knows the child's ability. However, he speaks so in and young strangely now, because Sarah showed off his face not long ago, and finally had the opportunity to tease his old opponent, and he felt very comfortable. As for things that are fake? Claude didn't think Sarah would be so unreliable, not to mention that Albert was still a genius with countless auras on his head. There was really no need to kill his reputation, let alone do that. Others are planning to participate in the competition to win the gold medal for pioneering contribution. Can things be fake? Real. You should usually read more newspapers. Claude shook his head. The kind of people are so proud that they don't even bother to lie to you. Okay. Claude, there is no need to be so in and young. Adolf couldn't help shaking his head and smiling bitterly, and explained to others by the way. We knew Mr. Albert a few years ago. He was very young back then. Has shown extraordinary talent in alchemy. You mean that bottle of wine is real? Many wizards raised their eyebrows in thought and didn't know what they were thinking. However, Adolf has a good reputation, and since he said that, he must know something. Albert Anderson is the gold medal winner of Barnabas Finkley's excellent spellcasting technique a while back. He has a halo of several world-class champions on his head. Why do you think people should fool you? Are you worthy? Claude felt relieved after spraying the group of people. Hearing Claude said this, the expressions on many wizards' faces were a little unnatural. However, some people finally remembered why the name seemed familiar. However, they quickly became excited because Claude said that Mr. Anderson intends to participate in the competition and then take the title of world-class champion. This means that an opportunity is here, and they all know exactly what is going on at the International Alchemy Conference. As long as there are enough gold coins, there is a chance to buy the formula of Mandela straw from the Alchemy Research Center. As if to verify the authenticity of this statement, several personnel from the Alchemy Research Center came over here intending to review and accept Albert's research results. The people around also began to whisper, and even a few people left in a hurry, seeming to want to find someone, but more wizards stayed in place and waited for the audit result. Of course, there are many guys who think of Albert as a fool. Yeah, in their eyes, what is it that Albert is not a fool? Didn't that Mr. Anderson know that participating in the International Alchemy Congress competition was to hand over the recipe? The Alchemy Research Center is willing to give this bonus. The most important thing is to get some alchemy results from other alchemists. 2,000 gallandos? Not much, not much at all. After all, it is not only the alchemy results that have been awarded, but the alchemy results that failed to be awarded can also be obtained. When the time comes, they can research and improve them and then sell the technology secretly so that the cost can be easily recovered and more at that time. You can even go whoring for nothing because the gold award for pioneering contribution is only awarded to those alchemists who have excellent alchemy results. As for patent protection, everyone knows that it is a joke. This is also the reason why many alchemists only want to show their alchemy results, but are not willing to take part in the competition. However, just as a few onlookers were considering how much money it would cost to get the winemaking technology, they found that the staff took out the flying ointment next to the bottle of wine from the display case. That's right. What he brought out was a small box of flying ointment, not the bottle of Mandela. Puff, I don't know who finally couldn't help but laugh out loud. Why are you laughing? Many people regard Anderson as a fool. Who is the fool now? It's so interesting. Not only Claude, but also Adolf is looking at his colleagues around with interest, thinking they are. It's so stupid. Really treat others as idiots? 
but I don't know that I am the real fool. Adolf's attention moved again to the chair that floated up after applying flying ointment and couldn't help but sigh, if nothing else. He should be the gold medal for pioneering contribution. Although the usage may not be found for the time being, this technique is undoubtedly very valuable. Maybe that bottle of wine was originally fake, so that guy didn't dare to use it to participate in the competition, someone murmured. However, he soon ushered in a bunch of contemptuous eyes, and other people even couldn't help staying away from him for fear of being infected by an idiot. They actually want to figure out the specific effects of Mandela straw wine. If it is really effective, they can cooperate with Albert. As an alchemist, they naturally have no shortage of sales channels in their hands. No one will have trouble with money, and such a genius is worth getting acquainted with. It's not easy to find Albert in the showroom. There are too many people here, and there are chattering discussions everywhere. God knows where Albert is. While those with ulterior motives were looking for Albert in the venue, he was taking Isabel to visit the alchemy results in the showcase one by one, and by the way, to see if he could draw some inspiration and ideas from other alchemists. Or technology. Hundreds of alchemy results dazzled him. There are wizards who claim to have poor magic control, and even dumb guns can use magic wands smoothly. It is said that the inventor of the magic wand also participated in this competition. As a result, a staff member exploded while testing the magic wand. The staff member and the unlucky onlookers around were embarrassed by the explosion. What made Albert even more speechless was that someone claimed to have made the philosopher's stone and showed everyone a red stone. Of course, no one takes the philosopher's stone in the showcase seriously. Everyone knows that it is just a silly joke. Some people claim to have invented a relief agent that can eliminate the blood curse of unicorns and boil the blood of unicorns into a magical potion that can prolong life. Albert felt that it was a bottle of ordinary unicorn blood, and the so-called relief agent was just a powerful restorative made by Mandela Grassroots. However, this thing obviously cannot eliminate the terrible curse brought by the blood of the unicorn. To some extent, the blood of unicorns can indeed prolong life, but the terrible curse is scary, and not many people want to be half-dead. What surprised Albert the most was a piece of metal. The introduction on the parchment said that it was a magic iron invented by a wizard himself. It is said that it can make the magic attached to the magic iron lasting and stable. The inventor wanted to prove the magic iron. As a result, a floating curse was released on that piece of magic iron, making it float in the air all the time. There are indeed some excellent metal craftsmen among human wizards, but the fairies are obviously better at using magic to process metal. The so-called magic iron in the display cabinet in front of them is somewhat similar to the iron forged by fairies. Later, Isabel secretly told Albert that the alchemist who was suspected of being a metal craftsman was actually a guy in a gray area. The so-called magic iron is actually a fairy iron. That guy controlled a fairy who knew how to forge fairy iron to forge it for him, and he put that piece of magic iron here on display, just to take the opportunity to become famous and make a fortune. Before long, Albert discovered another metal called magic copper. According to that person, magic copper has high plasticity. After special processing, it can become soft and light, and it has memory, and it is also very accommodating to magic. Well, it's actually the metal raw material for making golden snitch. Bowman Wright, who has the same name as the inventor of the snitch, is also a metal craftsman. But he is not here to show the snitch to everyone, but to promote a treasure chest to everyone. It is said that it can be used to store things that you don't want to be discovered. The entire treasure chest can resist and isolate the detection of magic. Some ancient wizard families always have some contraband that they don't want the Ministry of Magic to know. They are the best customers and the kind that can be hit hard. However, Albert thinks that this thing is very similar to the box used by Mr. Liu made to store important items. He has two in his possession, and he also knows how to make this kind of box. The difficulty is actually not high. The real difficulty is that how to get the magic bronze. I don't know if Mr. Liu May knows how to make the magic bronze. Albert decided to go back and write to the other party to talk about this experience, and, by the way, to mention the magic copper. There are actually many alchemy achievements displayed in the venue. For example, the cross that claims to be able to drive away dark creatures, the powder that claims to be able to make people smart with a sip, the ointment that claims to be able to eliminate the scratches of werewolves, 
All kinds of messy things look like it's silly, but everyone knows that those 80% are fake. Before Albert and Isabel finished visiting the display cabinet, they were blocked. The wizard kindly expressed to Albert that he wanted to cooperate with him to sell Mandela. Albert euphemistically stated that he needs time to consider, and that Mandela straw wine is expensive and the brewing time is long, saying that he has no plans for mass production. However, Albert still left his contact information to give the other party an illusion that he was considering whether to cooperate with them. No one will finalize this kind of thing all at once. Moreover, the cost of Mandela straw wine is indeed a bit expensive, and Albert does not intend to pursue a policy of being close to the people. After all, the manufacturing cycle is long, the materials are expensive, and the sales volume itself is not too high. If you can't grow Mandela yourself, it is definitely a loss-making business. However, planting Mandela itself is not simple. Thing. It's better to raise the price. Selling less may not make money, just as the blessing will always have a price and no market. After all, the magical world never lacks rich wizards. If those people know that you are deliberately procrastinating, they will probably jump in anger. Isabel saw through Albert's cautiousness at a glance, neither rejecting nor sinning. Anyway, he just drags until the other party is impatient and drags it until the other party gives up by himself. As for the answers other people want, sorry, Albert is still in school. Please wait for two more years and discuss this matter when Albert graduates from Hogwarts. Although it is disgusting, Albert has a fair reason to shirk and others are embarrassed to say something. Who made him underage and not graduated yet? Even if they had the patience to wait for another two years, Albert had already disappeared at that time, making them completely unable to find anyone. Naturally, the reason was that they were worried about being persecuted by the Dark Lord. No one can blame him. After all, life safety is more important. So two years passed. Four years is enough to kill most people's thoughts. As for the fact that he really wants to sell Mandela straw, Albert has no shortage of channels. A profitable business will be rejected by a few people. At lunch, the staff of the International Alchemy Congress took the initiative to approach Albert and informed him that he had passed the preliminary review and needed to provide the organizer with detailed information about flying ointment, so that the Alchemy Research Center could hurry up and analyze the information. Verify. At the end, the Alchemy Research Center also provided a document on patents. Once the Alchemy Research Center has verified the information provided by him, the patent can be authenticated. However, what puzzles Albert the most is, you mean I'm very likely to win a gold medal for pioneering contributions, and it is best to prepare a document, maybe a few minutes of speaking on stage? I don't know if it is temptation or other reasons. Anyway, when he heard this from the staff member who was dealing with him, Albert almost didn't suppress the consternation on his face. Even if the other party said that he admired him very much, he still felt that the other party was tempting him to hand over the flying ointment formula and even the organizer said this to every alchemist who participated in the competition. Moreover, the guy in front of him knew how to use a clemency, and Albert didn't see anything in his eyes. Sure enough, they are all deceptive. Although Albert had been mentally prepared, he couldn't help but curled his lips. When handing over the flying ointment formula promptly, Albert deliberately made the manufacturing method of flying ointment a little more refined and difficult. You seem to be very busy. Catherine took a glass of ice and drank, and motioned Albert to sit down. She had something to say to him. What's up? I heard that after the academic conference is officially held tomorrow, it will be announced who has won the prize. I originally wanted to tell you in advance, but… forget it? Do you know about this? Yes. But, flying ointment is just like that to me. Albert took the black tea that Isabel handed over, took a sip, and said calmly, that thing is only a semi-finished product. Maybe I will use it in the future. Improved into flying paint, it will be more convenient to use. Of course, the Alchemy Research Center may help me complete this process. It's good if you know it yourself, although I don't think you will come to the game without knowing anything. Catherine knew about Albert's relationship with Sarah, and the old man obviously wouldn't deliberately go to pit AI. Bert, many things should be clear to Albert. Catherine is just reminding him now and these things were only known to Nicholas when she told her. I heard that there are 12 contestants in this competition, and four of them are under 30, 
Valeria ate a cone and sat down opposite Isabel and said the news she had just inquired. You there should be a great chance to win the gold award for pioneering contributions. No, this award is very bad, but it's not counted like that. Catherine disagreed with Valeria's statement. If it doesn't matter, or the alchemy results handed in are not good enough, they will not award the Pioneering Contribution Gold Award at all. I suddenly found out that the Potions Championship is actually pretty cute. Valeria couldn't help but vomit. Did they tell you that they might give you a few minutes? Catherine ignored Valeria's complaints and continued. They have said similar things to every young wizard who participated. It's not hard to guess. Albert was not surprised at all. If the alchemy results are promising, they will really let you speak on stage for a few minutes. If you can do a good job in this link, you can easily win the gold award for pioneering contributions, Kathleen said again. Of course, you don't have to worry too much. After all, your background is also very hard. As long as you don't make mistakes when speaking, there should be no problem. What if the contestants are not backstage? Valeria asked blinking curiously. Unless the alchemy results are recognized by most people, it is difficult to win a prize. Catherine told a cruel fact. No way. International awards are not so easy to get. Although insiders know what's going on, outsiders don't know what's going on. They only think that whoever won the gold award for pioneering contribution at the Cairo International Alchemy Conference sounds like a very powerful one. At this moment, the Mr. Aria who had a fate yesterday came over here, said hello to Albert, and briefly talked a few words, expressing the hope that he would have the opportunity to talk to Albert tomorrow. Exchange research results. This time, Mr. Aria didn't have much thought, and he planned to take this opportunity to befriend Albert. After today's incident, as long as he is not a fool, he can see that Albert has a lot of history, and he is still a very powerful genius. There is no harm in such a friend. After Aria left, Catherine suddenly said, have you seen the research results of that Mr. Aria? After a brief recollection, Albert remembered the alchemy achievements of this Aria, which seemed to be a messenger. It was said that the information was transmitted mathematically on the parchment through the resonance effect of two stones. I think he is probably the guy who may be a threat to you among all the players. Valeria has to admit that the communication technology is indeed much faster than the Owl Postman. Yeah, Albert wins casually. What do you mean? Valeria asked. I'm betting that you can win the gold medal for pioneering contribution. Don't you suddenly drop the chain for me. Does this bar have a gambling game? Basically, all world-class games will have bets. Catherine said with a smile, by the way, I also bet you will win. So don't let us down. Does Isabel buy it too? Albert asked curiously. No, I don't know anything about it. Is it reliable to be a banker? Albert considered the possibility of taking the opportunity to make a fortune. This is just a private game, Catherine said. That's it. Albert temporarily gave up this opportunity to make money. You can win, right? Valeria stared straight at Albert. We have over half of our assets. If you lose us, we can only rely on you to feed us during the Quidditch contest. Finesse. Real. What's really? I mean you pressed a lot of money? Albert asked. Not much. I scored two levels after winning, Albert said. What if you lose? If you lose, naturally you lose money. Do you want to have us asterisk X? I'm working hard to make you win money. It seems that you are very confident. Catherine said, actually, I also think that communication technology is quite powerful. His technology seems to be very advanced, but it's actually that way, and it's still difficult to popularize. Eber's simple comment, as far as I know, Muggle already has similar technology, and it has been studied with painstaking efforts. That kind of thing that cannot be popularized might as well improve Muggle technology and see if we can improve a magical fax machine. Albert hasn't lied. There are so many things about wizards. In fact, they all improve the Muggle side. I remember you already have similar technology, Isabel said suddenly, who hadn't spoken much. Fax technology? Valeria asked suspiciously. No, it's information transmission technology, Isabel corrected. When we were still in school before, our chat tool was invented by Albert. It used the function of transferring information by changing the letters on the magic metal piece through the change spell. Isabel recalled, 
I remember it seems to be called a communication bookmark. That thing is more reliable than an owl, and it can also be used for real-time chat in class or at night, which is quite convenient. However, after graduation, we seldom use this thing. The double-sided mirror will be more convenient. Ahem, in short, come on, as long as we win the bet and make money, we will divide you 20%. After Valeria and Catherine looked at each other, they didn't know how, and always felt a little full. This wave of Isabel really caught them off guard. On the podium at the venue, a well-known alchemist, about 60 years old, was speaking in poor English about the slowness and decline of alchemy development in recent years, and Albert's eyelids in the audience trembled. Suwa almost closed his eyes and fell asleep. This morning, Albert still woke up in the dark, even after drinking a large cup of strong tea, he still couldn't stop his sleepiness and yawned. Isabel sitting next to him was not much better, and Catherine and Valeria looked like they could fall asleep at any time. It seems to be to keep themselves awake. Many wizards who came to this meeting were whispering and whispering. It was also the middle-aged wizard on the stage who used the microphone to amplify his voice, otherwise it would be embarrassing. Mr. Sarah, has Professor Dumbledore basically stopped attending the International Alchemy Conference since he won the Gold Award for pioneering contribution to the Cairo International Alchemy Conference? In order to keep himself from falling asleep, Albert planned to find someone to chat, and he also heard something from the words of the middle-aged wizard on stage. I don't know. However, in recent decades, I have indeed never seen Dumbledore attend the International Alchemy Conference. Sarah was not too surprised. He could actually guess the reason. The guy on the stage talked about how to promote the development of alchemy, but are those words really useful? In Albert's view, the old guys on the stage should bear most of the responsibility for the decline of alchemy. Moreover, just nagging over there for a long time, the result is just a bunch of nonsense. The leader fails to fulfill his responsibilities and engages in all kinds of disgusting things over there. Alchemy naturally becomes what it is now. It looks like a ghost. In particular, they like to suppress newcomers. Many older and experienced wizards like this kind of sh asterisk t, but they forget that they are old, and a large part of them are not able to accept new things anymore, and their ability to innovate is insufficient. If there is no innovation and no enterprising person to open up a path for everyone in the front, the development of alchemy will naturally become very slow. The group of people on the stage is naturally very clear, but sometimes for their own benefit, sometimes even if they know that it is wrong, some people will do it. Take the Barnabas Finkley Award for Excellence in Casting Techniques that Albert won not long ago. Someone shamelessly lodged a formal complaint with the International Federation of Wizards. If you change to an ordinary wizard, you will probably be embarrassed. There is a saying, a minor wizard is not a wizard. Moreover, Albert is underage, and underage wizards basically have no right to speak. However, he has a lot of auras on his head, and he has just announced a humanoid restoration spell that helps wizards and werewolves solve their troubles. The Wildsmith family used contacts to help him get it done, and the matter ended silently, otherwise God knows something will happen. While a few people were chatting, several staff members were distributing a new alchemy book to the members in the venue. The International Alchemy Conference was obviously not just shouting slogans on the side, they rewritten alchemy-related textbooks. However, after seeing the price of the book, Albert wondered if this group of people borrowed the book to make a fortune, because the book is not cheap, at least not as cheap as textbooks. If you really want to popularize alchemy, the price should be at least cheaper. Although it is undeniable that this book is actually not bad, and is basically more formal than the one Albert bought the day before yesterday, but that's all. I don't know when the speaker on stage changed to a wizard who was about 50 years old. The topic this time was the use of alchemy. However, I don't know if it is because of this lack of preparation or other reasons. The topic is very fragmented and the talk is very short, about a quarter of an hour, which is really short compared to the previous one who talked for almost an hour. Albert thinks that what this person probably wants to express is to make alchemy practical and apply it to life, not just a record on parchment. He believes that when alchemy is better used, can better promote the development of alchemy. However, it seems to most people to be empty talk, because everyone will try their best to turn their alchemy results into actual benefits that can be seen and encountered. After this, there are third, fourth, and fifth nonsense. 
Everyone's patience is almost consumed by them. The organizers themselves seem to know this very well. As a result, the meeting was finally suspended, letting everyone eat something by the way, let others chat and rest for a while, and then continue to announce the outstanding works that emerged at this year's International Alchemy Conference. Ha! It's so boring. I almost fell asleep, Valeria murmured. In fact, she didn't plan to come over to participate in today's meeting, but was forced to drag her over by Catherine this morning. Is it boring? Catherine asked rhetorically. Isn't it boring? Valeria asked Albert and Isabel. It's okay, Albert said. What's okay? Valeria dissatisfied. I saw you almost fell asleep. Actually, if you can understand it, you will actually find it very interesting, Kathleen said meaningfully. Understand what? Valeria asked suspiciously. The shamelessness of adults. Albert stretched out his hand to cover his face and said, Oh, I almost forgot. I am the only one here who is still under adulthood. It's a hell. However, the opportunity to witness the shameless faces of those people is actually quite rare. Are you trying to imply that we are old? Valeria pouted. At this moment, an elderly man came over here. Congratulations, Mr. Anderson. You won the gold medal for pioneering contribution at the Cairo International Alchemy Conference. The old man smiled and congratulated Albert, but Albert somehow felt that the old man's smile in front of him was hypocritical. But please keep this secret first, and prepare the speech manuscripts you will need to use next on stage. I hope you can share some of your personal opinions on alchemy and contribute to the development of everyone's thinking. I know. Albert said that he knew. My name is Richard. The old man didn't seem to intend to leave immediately, but took the initiative to talk to Albert. Maybe, you don't know me, but I heard other French colleagues mention you. Hello, Mr. Charles. Albert raised his eyebrows slightly, as if he was reminiscing about seeing the name there. When he saw Isabel point to the book in his hand, Albert remembered who this man was. Charles Brick, the author of the textbook Modern Alchemy Development and Research. Modern Alchemy Development and Research? Albert asked, raising his eyebrows. Yes, that was what I wrote. What do you think of that book? Charles was satisfied that Albert recognized him. Hogwarts does not have a course in alchemy, Albert said suddenly. Although most wizards have heard of alchemy, they don't know what alchemy is. They are like wizards who have never studied transfiguration. We'll confuse the curse with the transfiguration. Charles raised his eyebrows slightly, but he was still ready to listen to Albert's words. Perhaps the other party's words were not compliments, but at least he expressed his opinions more clearly. The development and research of modern alchemy is too superficial for people who understand alchemy, but it is really difficult to understand for people who have not even started to understand alchemy. Albert simply said that he had finished reading it. The feel of the book. Do you think modern alchemy development and research is very tasteless? Charles's expression became a little subtle. I don't know what suggestions you have. I suggest you publish a simpler alchemy book, introduce alchemy to wizards who do not understand alchemy, and lead them to open the door of alchemy, and then this book can be placed in the middle, and then published. A more difficult alchemy book can be regarded as a set of teaching materials. You seem to understand this matter very well. Charles was a little curious, and was not angry at Albert's words. He was also considering the feasibility of the suggestion. My girlfriend is currently writing textbooks of ancient magic texts, and I am helping her organize these things, Albert said with a smile. Charles glanced at Isabel, nodded slightly towards Albert and said, I will consider your suggestion carefully. Richard had to admit that Albert made a lot of sense, because in addition to the countries around Egypt, many schools actually do not have alchemy classes, even in France, where alchemists like Nico Mailer have appeared. There is no such thing as alchemy. You don't seem to like him very much. Sarah looked at Richard's leaving back and asked with interest. He made me feel hypocritical, Albert said without hesitation. You are right, that is indeed a hypocritical guy. In fact, most people are hypocritical. Nicholas was not surprised at all. As long as you have value, they never mind making themselves hypocritical. That guy is the honorary vice president of the Alchemy Research Center. The book Modern Alchemy Development and Research was written with his help. Although it looks more formal, but honestly the book is really general. However, 
you can get it. He has to thank him for his pioneering contribution. They originally wanted Arya to win the prize. The others were no longer sleepy, and they immediately raised their curiosity, and they came to listen to the twists and turns of the story. That Mr. Richard thinks that your alchemy results are valuable, and they may be used in certain places in the future, and Arya's magic messenger is difficult to be widely used. Of course, it is also related to what happened yesterday. They all realize that you know a lot of famous alchemists, and there are countless dazzling auras on the top of your head. They give you the gold award for pioneering contributions to the Cairo International Alchemy Conference. You can complete it as a gimmick for publicity, the youngest award in history. It's like you won the Barnabas Finkley Award for Outstanding Spelling Techniques last time. You can use this to increase the visibility of the International Alchemy Conference. Of course, the most important thing is that you are still young and worthy of investment. At least you are a good friend. It is undeniable that you can actually make friends like Mr. Richard. The adult world is really complicated. Albert couldn't help joking. In the afternoon, no one continued to waste everyone's precious time on stage. They neatly displayed the alchemy achievements of the 12 participating players. Albert ranked 7th. The first contestant is a middle-aged man. He used alchemy to extract a small pill similar to a tranquilizer. The thing is not as effective as a tranquilizer, but the pill is easier to store and carry, and it can also be effective. It can be used to cope with some comparisons. Emergency Situation The second contestant is a man in his 30s. He uses alchemy to create a pair of multifunctional glasses that enable the wearer to see objects clearly in the dark and is said to have the ability to see through invisibility. However, these technologies actually existed for a long time, and many people did not recognize them as alchemy results. The third is a witch who is under 30 years old. She extracts the essence from the gill sack and formulates an alchemy potion that is said to be able to make people breathe underwater. As a result, Many people think that this method is extremely wasteful of branchial sack grass, which is nothing more than taking off your pants and farting. The fourth place is Arya. His magic messenger is favored by many people because it seems to be able to transmit information over a long distance, which is very helpful for transnational communication. The fifth, sixth, and seventh Albert, his avatar and alchemy achievements were shown on the projector, and there was a quiet whisper in the audience. Flying ointment is indeed relatively new, but that's it, because there is no use for this thing at all, but there is no doubt that it is useful. However, most people are not concerned about flying ointment, but Albert's age, because he is actually a minor. When the host of the International Alchemy Conference officially announced to everyone that Albert Anderson had won the gold award for pioneering contribution, the conference site suddenly fell into a dead silence, there was no applause, no cheers and some just looked at and questioned. As the alchemists at the scene turned their heads, they all focused on Albert. The feeling of being stared at by many people with scrutiny and questioning is really bad. The alchemists present even selectively forget to keep staring at others is a very rude thing. However, in the face of hundreds of people's gaze pressure, Albert's expression on his face still didn't change much. After all, he was a person who had seen the big scene and the malicious gaze of those people could not make him shrink. On the contrary, Isabel, who was extremely sensitive to others' eyes, couldn't help but frown. She quietly reached out and took Albert's hand, trying to give him courage, encouragement, and support by holding her palm, but Albert was obviously not a lack of courage. People, otherwise they would not be assigned to Gryffindor. Of course he knows that many people are gloating about this, wanting to see that they are embarrassed, and in the end, they may even be pressured to give up the gold award for pioneering contributions, leaving the International Alchemy Conference as they wished, and becoming everyone's after dinner. A joke of gossip, but these people are destined to be disappointed. The awkward atmosphere at the scene did not affect Albert at all. He got up and left his seat, and slowly walked onto the podium with the malicious gaze of countless wizards. The host looked at Albert and probably didn't expect this to happen. After he came on stage, he quickly passed the microphone. The scenery here is really good. I saw a lot of old friends in the audience. Albert took the microphone, seeming to be testing the function of the microphone, and said casually, Of course, I know that many of you are right. I have doubts about being able to win this award, but people who know me here should not have such thoughts. My name is Albert Anderson. 
I am 16 years old this year. Well, I will be an adult at the age of 17 in a few months. I come from a Muggle family. The gold medal for pioneering contribution at the Cairo International Alchemy Conference should be my fourth. International awards. At this moment, a small smile appeared at the corner of Albert's mouth, as if mocking the mediocre people who were jealous of him. Previously, I had won the International Wizard Chess Championship, the Magic School Potions Championship, and the gold medal of Barnabas Finkley's excellent spelling technique. By the way, if I have time next year, I should participate in a dual contest and try one the fifth world-class award. After saying this, Albert deliberately paused for a while, leaning forward slightly, as if to appreciate the change of expression on the faces of the group of people in the audience. Of course, I have won a lot of other awards that are not world awards. Personally, I think the more valuable one should be the Merlin Third Class Medal I won not long ago, because I restored a humanoid restoration spell that can help solve the threat of werewolves. I can understand your doubts about my award, but for me, it's just another award. Allow me to brag about it. I have won too many awards, but I'm still passionate about it. Collect various awards. Quiet. The audience was silent, and everyone in the venue was dumbfounded. How dare he? They didn't expect that Albert would tell them in this way that you really think too much, and I really don't need to cheat, because winning these international awards is as easy as drinking water for me. If you don't believe me, you see, I still have several world-class championship titles on my head as the best proof. However, Albert really dared to do this. He used cruel reality to draw the faces of everyone present and told them that it was time to wake up. If there is no real ability, a muggle wizard with no background, why won this string of world championship titles, and why become friends with those famous alchemists? Sporadic applause began to sound in the venue, and the alchemists who were familiar with Albert waved at him in a friendly manner. The other unconvinced faces looked ugly, but they had to admit that they were shocked by Albert's series of world-class titles. Maybe someone can get so many world-class titles, but they are definitely not as young as Albert, and this is still a muggle wizard, with no wizarding background at all. If someone cheats, 80% of them will say that your brain is broken. Should I knock open my head and see if there is batter in my head? Arya, who was still not convinced, had a particularly complicated expression on her face at this moment, looking up at the young man on the stage who was looking down on them. Just now, the reactions of other alchemists made him feel lucky, but after Albert introduced himself, Arya knew that he had completely lost. Sarah, who was still a little nervous, couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. He was still worried that Albert would not be able to withstand the pressure and get embarrassed, but he didn't expect Albert to slap his backhand, bringing an unexpected surprise to everyone. Nicholas has always been calm. Although he has not had much contact with Albert, he himself has confidence in the wild smith air and is very optimistic about Albert. At this moment, Nicholas was admiring the stunned alchemists around him, and he agreed with Albert's approach. There are times when you absolutely can't retreat. Retreat can only make other people feel more impeccable. They should be hurt. Those people will know how to be in awe, and Albert happens to have this ability, even if he finally falls out with some people. It doesn't matter. Nicholas felt that Albert should not come to the International Alchemy Conference next time. Isabel stared at the figure on the stage, with a slight smile on his face as if he was not surprised by what had just happened. She knew Albert, that was not someone willing to suffer. The counterattack just now was so interesting. It was not difficult for her to imagine the expressions on other people's faces. As for Catherine and Valeria, both of them were looking at Albert on the stage in a trance. The self-introduction just now was so handsome that they caught them a little. Many people have dark faces, dark faces in every sense, but even so, what can they do? Is it possible to lodge a formal complaint with the International Federation of Wizards? Even if you appeal, is it really useful? Anderson can win so many international awards, it is impossible for no one to be convinced to lodge a complaint with the International Wizards Federation, but Anderson still participated in the International Alchemy Conference and won the gold medal for pioneering contribution, which is very telling. After Albert finished introducing himself, he gave the people in the audience a few minutes of buffer time. Then, regardless of other people's reactions, he began to talk about his personal views on alchemy. In this regard, Albert has far surpassed others, 
not only related to his knowledge of panel skills, but also with Nico Lome and even many famous alchemists. He said on stage things are very new and refreshing, and most of the alchemists have very complicated expressions on their faces. They can clearly feel the threat from the 16-year-old. However, just as people were immersed in Albert's speech, the people on the stage suddenly stopped. At this moment, everyone was dumbfounded, and even wanted to shout loudly for the people on the stage to continue speaking, because Albert only spoke half of it. Why don't you keep talking? Is it okay to be so appetizing? In the host's stunned gaze, Albert finished the speech with a smile, handed him the microphone, and then walked off the stage, ignoring the others. The organizers of the International Alchemy Conference would not have thought of his situation just now. Albert didn't believe it anyway. Since the other party makes him uncomfortable, he doesn't mind making everyone uncomfortable. Okay, everyone probably realized that Albert deliberately didn't finish talking about them and disgusted them, and they couldn't be angry with Albert because this show operation was completely within a reasonable range. You said he didn't finish. Albert did finish. The organizer of the International Alchemy Conference originally gave him not much time to speak. But from the time he introduced himself to the present, he has been speaking for more than half an hour. You say that he is finished. Albert can indeed continue to say a lot of things. When everyone was left speechless by Albert, they all realized that this genius actually held a grudge. You seem to be very happy. After Albert returned to his seat, Isabel put his face to his ear and said softly, However, you may offend some people by doing that. If you offend, you will offend. Anyway, I don't plan to come to the International Alchemy Conference again. Albert didn't care at all. After all, the two parties are not friends. Since they are not even friends, what do they care about? I think so too. Isabel smiled. As long as Albert doesn't care, she doesn't care much. It is estimated that there will not be much overlap in the future anyway. Albert came to participate in the International Alchemy Conference, nothing more than coveting the rewards given by the panel task. Really think he cares about the gold medal? Gilded things. What's to care about? With the growth of age and strength, Albert's wings have gradually become fuller, and he will be an adult in a few months, and the magical world's restrictions on him will also be reduced a lot. When Albert is an adult, his body will be traced. It will disappear completely, and the things that once troubled him will no longer exist. The International Alchemy Conference really has no choice but to take Albert. After all, he also walked through their formal procedures, and he really should not blame Albert, otherwise it will become his lecture, which is obviously not in line with process, so they really have to thank Albert. After that is the finishing work of the host. They formally awarded Albert a gold award for pioneering contribution and a patent certificate for flying ointment. No one won the other award, which did not exceed everyone's expectations. Under normal circumstances, only one person won. Unless the alchemy results are very good, there will be basically no exception. The International Alchemy Conference did not end there. The organizers also held a small gathering for everyone and provided a lot of food and drinks so that everyone could sit down and exchange their research results at will. Albert was quickly surrounded by a group of acquaintances. Many people laughed and teased his self-introduction and asked Albert to continue the previous topic. Many alchemists who looked at Albert had extremely complicated expressions because they found that Albert had already belonged to his own circle and there were still a lot of people in that circle. There was no shortage of famous alchemy in that circle. Division. Albert will not be stingy and we'll continue with what has just been said. Many of the guys who were very angry with Albert's sorrows all pricked up their ears and eavesdropped nearby, but what annoyed them was how the guy spoke so quietly. After Albert finished speaking, he was about to leave. He did not intend to stay in Egypt overnight. Sorry, I have to take this medal back now. Albert tactfully refused other people's retention and said that everyone would get together again another day. In the afternoon of the same day, Albert left directly and prepared to use the international flu network on the Egyptian side to return to the UK. Are you so anxious to go back? Valeria and Catherine also packed their bags to go to England with them to watch the next Quidditch World Cup. Don't you go back and stay here to make people look on like a monkey? It is not difficult for Albert to imagine how many wizards will come to watch him after this incident is exposed. He is not Lockhart, but he has no hobby of being watched. 
Your previous wave was indeed a bit cruel. Kathleen joked with a smile. I dare say that the Finks Daily will definitely report this matter. Where shall we live when we go to England? Valeria was more concerned about this question. Broken Cauldron Bar barely make do, Albert said. Can't go to your house? Valeria asked deliberately. Of course you can, but you have to squeeze a room with me. Isabel took the words. After bidding farewell to Sarah and Nicholas, the four went to the Ministry of Magic in Egypt and returned to England through the international flu network there. After all, they are all adults and can take care of themselves. A few people first went to the Broken Cauldron Bar, feeling that the environment there was average and might not be safe for the two girls, so they decided to squeeze a room with Isabel. It looks like it has to be laid on the floor. Valeria wasn't too surprised. Or we can set up a tent in your yard. Isabel puts the suitcase Albert gave her before leaving on the ground. After opening it, he opened a door with a light wave of his magic wand. Come with me. Isabel opened the door and said to the two of them, This is in the box? The two followed Isabel down the stairs and found themselves in a room. Yes, we will stay here next. Isabel took the two to visit the room. So, you don't need to lay the floor. There are enough rooms here. It's more spacious than expected. Catherine pushed open the door of the wooden house and found that the sun was shining outside, and there was actually a large herbal field inside, planting a lot of raw materials for beauty medicine. It seems that we are disturbing the world of you and Albert, Valeria said quietly. Yeah, Isabel replied noncommittal and said suddenly, after Albert graduates, we should get married immediately, and we will send you invitations at that time. Valeria's expression froze. Kathleen raised her eyebrows slightly. He can't wait. Is he too anxious? Um, Albert is indeed a bit anxious, but there are other reasons. Isabel did not intend to explain this to the two of them. You will know later. The youngest winner of the gold medal for pioneering contribution to Cairo International Alchemy Conference was born. Katrina was sitting in the dining room looking through the headlines of today's Daily Prophet and found that she seemed to have seen a similar scene in the newspaper again. Not long ago, the headlines of the Daily Prophet had similarly reported the good news that Albert Anderson won the Banabas Finkley Award for Excellence in Casting Techniques. That guy is really good. The girl carefully read the article in the newspaper and compared the report with what she had heard from other people. She couldn't help but lose interest in this report. At least 70% of the content was made up indiscriminately. She still remembered Isabel saying that Albert's self-introduction after winning the award was particularly handsome, and directly shocked the wizards who questioned his award because of his age. Should I let the Christmas ball come out? Katrina guessed what Albert meant by inviting herself to this year's Christmas ball. She was actually very entangled and even a little angry. However, Isabel has made it clear that he does not intend to attend the Christmas ball and is willing to lend her the dress. Katrina actually really liked Isabel's dress, and it happened to match Albert's dress. Perhaps, she should give the opportunity to Isabel. Putting down the daily profit, Katrina raised her head and looked in the direction of the kitchen, and a busy figure came into view. Since Isabel invited two girlfriends to the house as guests, Katrina suddenly discovered that her house had unexpectedly added a house elf, who was not only responsible for preparing three meals a day, but also helping with housework. She once asked Isabel what was going on with that house elf. If you find someone to borrow it, you will be back soon. This is the answer Isabel gave. Looking for someone to borrow a house elf? Who would lend their own house elves to others for a few days? Who are they trying to coax? Do you really look like a fool? Of course, Katrina has not suspected that the house elves that appear now are servants brought by two female friends of Isabel. After all, they don't seem to be able to take care of their lives. But this possibility was later ruled out by Katrina, because when the pretty girl named Valeria saw the house elves, she seemed surprised that they had house elves at home. Moreover, Katrina always felt that the house elf looked a bit familiar, as if she had seen it somewhere before. And the number of house elves she had seen with her own eyes was really very limited, and she could count it with just one finger. Isabel actually borrowed the house elf from Uncle Mog's manor to help, and Uncle Mog actually agreed? Miss Katrina, breakfast is ready. The house elf bit bowed slightly to Katrina, awakening the girl from her contemplation. Wait a minute, I'll call them. Katrina got up and walked to the second floor. 
raised her hand to knock on Isabel's door, and when she heard that there was no response, she pushed the door directly in. There was no one in Isabel's room, but there was a wooden door on the floor in front of the bed. Katrina reached out and pushed open the wooden door in front of him, muttering, Sister, how many things are you hiding from me? Behind the door is a downward staircase. Walking down to a corridor, Katrina walked to a door, raised her hand and knocked on the door lightly, and said to the people inside, Isabel, get up for breakfast. The door did not open, but the door next door opened first. Valeria, wearing a thin suspender nightdress, walked out of the room with a yawn, smiled and raised her hand to say hello to Katrina. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning, Valeria. Breakfast is ready. Katrina couldn't help but shift her gaze to Valeria's beautiful collarbone. She was a little envious of the other's plump curvature. There is no denying that Valeria is definitely the type that many boys like. In the past few days with three beautiful women, Katrina is under a lot of pressure, and she almost has doubts about her charm. Good morning. The door next to him was also opened, and Isabel, who was still a little sleepy on his face, walked out of it. At this moment, she has put on the beige dress she usually wears, looking pure and intellectual. You stayed up late last night? Katrina couldn't help asking, finding that Isabel's face was still a little sleepy. Insufficient sleep is a natural enemy of women, and Isabel has always paid attention to maintaining his own beauty. Would he risk staying up late? We did some research with Roselle last night and tried to make it a beauty potion. Isabel covered a yawn. In fact, she didn't want to stay up late yesterday, but Valeria and Kathleen, who were overexcited, took her to stay up together, which caused her to lack sleep today. How did it turn out? Katrina asked curiously. In fact, she has been paying attention to this matter all the time, and she herself is also a beneficiary of those cosmetic medicines. Not ideal, Isabel said shaking his head. Don't listen to your sister's nonsense. The effect of beauty potion number 17 is actually pretty good. Catherine walked out of the room, and she had also put on her usual cool summer clothes. I just didn't achieve what Isabel wanted. It's just the effect. Adding lemon slices, rose petals, and honey to Roselle tea also has a beauty effect, Valeria said with a smile, and it tastes very good. It will give you a taste of love. Stop it. You haven't been in love yet. Know what it feels like to be in love? Catherine reached out and patted Valeria on the shoulder, telling her to go back to the room and change her clothes. Secret love is also love. Valeria curled her lips and turned into the house. What kind of cosmetic effect do you want? Katrina is even more curious. She actually knows that Isabel has been studying cosmetic medicine and has also collected a large number of cosmetic medicine formulas for reference, improvement, and research. Great results. It is said that Catherine and Valeria opened a beauty shop, and their business is very hot. It's just that those results don't seem to satisfy the big beauties in front of them. Delay aging, Catherine said without hesitation. Let your face not grow old and stay young forever. Is it really possible to do this? Katrina felt that they were a little crazy to make themselves beautiful. There are all elixir. Why can't there be elixir of beauty? Valeria's voice came from the room quietly. Perhaps, you should go to Albert for help, he should be considered an expert in this area, and I remember that his teacher is Mr. Nicol Lumet. Maybe he can provide you with some useful help, Katrina suggested. Although she didn't know the reason, she always felt that if anyone could invent that kind of magical potion, it might only be Albert. Nicol Lumet? Is that Nicol Lumet? Valeria pushed the door out, staring at Isabel with bright eyes. Yes. However, the Lou Mays have no research on cosmetic medicine. Isabel cast a glance at his sister and turned the subject away. Okay, don't stand here and talk. Go have breakfast. Isabel dare not let Valeria and Catherine know that Albert has developed the prototype of a potion formula that can delay aging, especially when the output of that potion is still uncertain. They knew it was undoubtedly a disaster, and in order to keep themselves young, the two in front of them might even do anything about it. At least, Isabel never overestimated Valeria's integrity. The witness you are talking about is Mr. Nicole Lemay. However, I have heard that the Philosopher's Stone seems to have been destroyed. Catherine suddenly understood what other reasons Isabel said. After losing the Philosopher's Stone, Nicole Lemay probably has little time left. 
If they hope that the old man will become their witness, they will naturally not be able to delay it for too long. Well, the philosopher's stone has been destroyed. Isabel did not deny the incident, but he didn't want to talk about it. So he changed the subject and asked, When are you going to watch the World Cup? The U.S. team has been struggling in recent years. This time it managed to squeeze into the top 16. I planned to cheer for them in the past. I happen to have friends on that team. Kathleen said, We plan to the camp is scheduled for tomorrow. By the way, when are you going to watch the football game? We will probably go to the last few games. Albert did not support which team in particular. In fact, Isabel did not support which team in particular. At that time, you can live in a tent with us, and you don't need to find another camp. It will be more convenient to discuss beauty medicine together. Valeria said with a smile, You say if it's Catherine, there will be house elves to help us prepare three meals. By then, I don't know what arrangements Albert has. It seems that he is going to take his sister to the football game. Isabel didn't plan to live with them. There will be four people on their side by then, and they will definitely not be able to squeeze. Of Katrina, who had been eating silently, suddenly felt as if she had heard something incredible. The so-called house elves looking for someone to borrow, listening to Valeria's tone, the house elves will obviously be with them in the Quidditch World Cup. How does it sound like Albert's? But isn't Albert a muggle wizard? Sure enough, there are some secrets that I don't know. The woman's instinct told Katrina that both Valeria and Catherine seem to have other ideas about Albert. This is considered to lead the wolf into the room. Or are they directly related to each other in an unclear relationship? She secretly looked at the three people who were talking, wondering if she could find a chance to chat with Isabel. She felt that her sister was so shrewd that it was impossible not to notice this. After dinner, Albert stayed with his family in the living room and watched TV news, casually chatting about simple life trivial matters in foreign languages. Naya, who had just taken a shower, came out of the bathroom and quietly came behind Albert, who was flipping through the newspaper and chatting with Luke about oriental food, stretched out her hand over the sofa, and hugged Albert's neck from behind. My dear brother, when will you take me to the Quidditch game? My dear sister, do you want to strangle your brother? Albert stretched out his hand and patted Nia's white arm, motioning for the other party to let go. Why? I'll just ask about the exact time. The girl pouted dissatisfiedly. You also know how much I look forward to the Quidditch match. Naya, you need to be patient, Luke said to his granddaughter. No one knows how long a Quidditch match will last. It may be over in a few hours. It may take a few days or even longer. It is said that the longest Quidditch match lasts about three months, Albert said to Nia while flipping through the newspaper. So don't worry. Get everything you need ready first. Three months. Are they crazy? Nia felt incredible. A Quidditch game actually took three months, and how did they persist for three months? Perhaps it's crazy. I can't understand it anyway, but some games do last a long time. Albert actually couldn't understand it either. He turned the newspaper to the Quidditch column and pointed to it. He said to Naya, It will be a few days before the round of 16 is over. If we pass now, we will not be able to watch the game without tickets. We can only wait in the camp. You can go camping first. Naya said without hesitation. However, she seemed to realize something and quickly changed her words and said, England actually lost to Transylvania 10 to 390. What a terrible loss. In fact, Nia might not really like the so-called Quidditch game. She just wanted to meet the wizard's feast. Okay, let go of my neck first. If I get strangled by you, no one will take you to the Quidditch World Cup. Albert was a little helpless since he told Naya to take her there during the summer vacation. After watching the Quidditch World Cup, the sister who was a little stranger has changed back to the little girl who liked to stick. It's just that the little girl back then has gradually grown up. Naya let go and sat next to Albert. I can probably guess what you want to do there. Albert looked at the expression on Nia's face and said calmly, However, I have to regret to tell you that you have to stay most of the time. You are not allowed to go anywhere in the tent. Okay, I see. The girl was aggrieved. Ever since Albert said that he would take her to the Quidditch World Cup, Nia was a little too excited and forgot Albert's previous instructions and reminders. Just know, if you dare to sneak out, I can only ask Isabel to send you home immediately. Albert warned. Didn't you say that tickets are expensive? 
It's very expensive, but it was given by someone else. Even if you give it away, I don't feel distressed. Anyway, it's not spending my money. Albert once again offered a big killer. Don't forget me, if you stay safe. Next year I can take you to visit Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Go to Hogwarts? Luke was in a trance when he heard Albert talk about going to Hogwarts. Well, go to Hogwarts, Albert explained. This year the school will host the Triwizard Tournament. If I can successfully become the Warriors of Hogwarts before the third game, the relatives of the Warriors will I was invited to the school to watch the finals, and then you can go to Hogwarts. Forget it. Luke shook his head, got up, and went back to the room to rest. Albert looked at Luke's leaving back, looked back at his sister, and sighed softly. Actually, sometimes I even wonder if I did something wrong. What did you do wrong? Naya asked. Take you to the Quidditch World Cup? So, do you regret it? Naya stared at Albert. It's not a regret. I want to take you to the World Cup. I want to take you to Hogwarts. But I don't want you to regret it. But I'm still a little worried. Albert doesn't want Naya to become another hairy Aunt Petunia. What are you worried about? I'm worried that you will be addicted to the world that doesn't belong to you. I just made you worry about that. The expression on Naya's face became more and more weird. Yes, Albert said bluntly, because you are my sister, then I should be glad I am your sister. If you're just a stranger, I don't even bother to take care of you. Albert turned off the TV and said to Nia, be patient. The top 16 will soon be over, and you won't have to wait too long. I see. Naya pouted. After returning to his room, Albert began to use a crystal ball to foretell what would happen in the Quidditch World Cup. When he saw the dark mark from the crystal ball, the door was knocked. Nia pushed the door and walked in, followed by Fat Cat Tom. Are you prophesying? Naya saw Albert sitting in front of the crystal ball, curiously leaning over to look at the scene in the crystal ball and asked suspiciously, What is that? It looks a little disgusting. Dark Mark. Dark Mark. A few decades ago, there was a very evil wizard. Every time he killed someone, he would release such a mark over the deceased's house. Albert reached out and picked up Tom and said calmly, He likes to spread fear in this way. Will people die in the Quidditch World Cup? Naya was suddenly a little uneasy. Will that evil wizard appear at the game? It is said that he is dead or half alive. Albert scratched Tom's ear and said, However, his servants like to torture ordinary people for pleasure. While talking, the scene inside the crystal ball became a few ordinary people floating in the air, panicking. Then, they became a group of guys with hoods on their heads and masks on their faces. Each of those people's hands are covered with blood. You are scaring me again. Naya complained with a pouting mouth. Scare you? You think too much, my dear Nia. Why do you think I want everyone to leave England and go to the East for refuge? Albert raised his hand and gently carried the crystal ball, and the white mist once again flooded the crystal ball in the above picture. A short, bald man reappears. Of course, Albert knew this 5,000 gallon mister, he was able to enter Azkaban smoothly, thanks to Albert pushing him behind. It is said that this 5,000 gallon mister has died in Azkaban jailed. Who is he? Naya looked at the man appearing in the crystal ball, asked suspiciously. The beginning of this chaos, Albert said calmly. He will help the evil wizard return and cause terrible chaos and turmoil to the entire British magical world. Why don't you want to stop him? Naya was a little puzzled. If the other party could prevent the evil wizard from returning, their family would not have to leave the UK. However, as soon as she finished speaking, Albert slapped her head severely, covering her head in pain and squatting down. Are you too stupid, or do you think I live too well? Albert stared at the figure in the crystal ball, stretched out his hand to tease the cat, and said to himself, We are not the protagonist of the novel, nor are we the so-called savior doesn't have the luck to turn bad things into good fortune, so don't try to die, you will really die. What's more, defeating the Dark Lord and saving the world should be done by the savior. Are you right? Tom, is there really a savior? Naya couldn't help asking. Of course, Albert said, looking at the crystal ball. Savior Harry Potter, this Christmas, you will be able to see his reports in the newspapers. Peter Pettigrew would never have imagined in his life that someone would observe him through a crystal ball. 
and the person staring at him was the enemy who once sent him to Azkaban prison. Yes, Peter would never think of, nor would he want to know. Otherwise, Mr. Peter, who was as timid as a mouse, might not be in the mood to help Voldemort find a unicorn in the depths of the Albanian forest, and instead left the half-dead master directly to escape. At this moment, in a dark forest in Albania, Peter is walking through the woods quickly, trying to find the unicorn alone. It's just that Peter's grades in the protection of magical creatures were mediocre, and he didn't know how to find unicorns in the forest. Fortunately, however, Peter can know the approximate location of the unicorn through his dirty kid. But just finding the unicorn is not enough. It is not easy to get the blood of the unicorn. Because unicorns themselves are magical creatures with very powerful magical powers, not only do they walk like flying, but ordinary magic can hardly hurt them. Maybe unicorns are not as powerful as fire dragons in resistance to magic, but they must not be ignored. Moreover, Peter was pretty sure he couldn't keep up with the speed of the unicorn at all. However, Obtaining the blood of the unicorn was the first task given to Peter by the Dark Lord. Peter knew very well that he had to grit his teeth anyway, unless he wanted to go straight away. If he really did that, then the Dark Lord would no longer have his place next to him, and he would still appear in the dark. In the Devil's Kill list, Peter Pettigrew looked at the deep jungle ahead and laughed at himself. Isn't this the result I want? The current Voldemort is very weak, so weak that he has lost most of his power. He can't even use magic, and he can only live like an ant. All this made Peter ecstatic. Because only when the Dark Lord needs help the most, and when he offers his loyalty, it is possible for him to obtain a higher honor than other Death Eaters. Of course, Peter never expected the so-called glory, and knew that Voldemort did not fully trust himself. But, what about that? The Dark Lord will definitely not do anything to him. If he kills himself who helped him when he needs it most, how can he gain the loyalty of other Death Eaters, and who dares to continue to follow his allegiance? What about him? As long as he helps the Dark Lord recover his body, no Death Eaters will come to trouble him at that time. And the magical world in the UK will also usher in a turmoil, and then the Minister of Magic will probably be a headache. Found it. After spending a lot of time, Peter finally found a single unicorn deep in the forest. It was drinking by the river. It looked very beautiful from a distance. The unicorn seemed to perceive the arrival of the evil guest and raised his head. Looking towards Peter, the eye mask was full of vigilance. Peter knew he had only one chance, and once the unicorn started to run wild, he would have no chance. A shrill shout penetrated the night sky. Killing curse. A strong green light lit up in the dark forest. After the green light was dimmed and the forest returned to normal, Peter found that his spell had failed. The unicorn stepped briskly and easily avoided the killing curse, rushed to the distance, and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Peter's sight. Damn it. When Peter tried to chase him forward, he noticed a noise on the right side, and the unicorn sprang out from the side. He was almost pierced by the unicorn on the unicorn's head. Fortunately, Peter successfully used the apparition to avoid the unicorn's attack at the moment of his daughter's attack. What a cunning beast. Peter had never felt that a unicorn was so difficult. He thought that the unicorn would continue to attack him, but he was surprised to find that the beast had escaped, and he was still stupidly vigilant around him. Peter had to look for a new target. Adult unicorns were too difficult to deal with. He even doubted that Avideso could kill such powerful magical creatures as unicorns all at once. Peter regretted his recklessness. If he could find a young unicorn, the situation might not be so bad. Peter found the whereabouts of other unicorns through those mouse friends. This time, Peter was not in a hurry to start. He suspected that he would follow the mistakes of the last time. So, it took him several days to finally find a group of unicorns, but Peter could see that those unicorn groups were not easy to mess with. So he finally gave up and wandered alone on the edge of the forbidden forest, looking for some fish slipped through the net. Peter's luck wasn't bad. He found a single, young unicorn. The wailing of the unicorn sounded in the forest. Not dead. After the green light dissipated, Peter found the unicorn struggling to get up from the ground. The Avada sorcerer did not kill the unicorn immediately, but it still caused very serious damage to the unicorn. His magical power is only average among wizards, 
but the killing curse is easy enough to kill any creature. But the unicorn was not killed immediately, which surprised Albert. Peter added a few more Avidasuo's life spells and completely killed the unicorn, before panting for blood. When Peter put fresh unicorn blood into the glass bottle, he looked up and saw a group of angry unicorns. He was surrounded, but Peter did not panic at all. Before the unicorn rushed towards him, the direct phantom appearance disappeared. The angry neighs of unicorns resounded in the forest. Master, I have collected the blood of the unicorn. Peter hurriedly returned to the forest where the Dark Lord inhabited, took out the bottle containing the blood of the unicorn, and said to the dark shadow in the forest, Next, what should I do? I need you to use the blood of the unicorn and the potion of Nagini's venom to give me a decent body temporarily. Voldemort said of his next plan. At this moment, a rustling sound rang out in the darkness, and a giant twelve-foot-long snake appeared on Peter's. Although it was not the first time I saw this snake, it still made Peter feel very uneasy. But Peter knew what to do. It didn't take him long before he prepared the formula for making potions. The blood of unicorns is the most difficult to obtain, but now it is no longer heard. Peter stood in the cauldron tongs, muttering a spell that is said to be the Dark Lord himself, and then put the snake possessed by the Dark Lord into the cauldron of the tossing potion, accompanied by a scream after the sound. A baby-like figure slowly rose up in the cauldron. Bertha Jorkins, who was under Peter's control, immediately took out the towel and kept the ugly baby, if it was really a baby. Master, how are you feeling now? Peter asked cautiously. This body is still very weak, but at least it has restored me some magic power. Voldemort's voice was filled with excitement, and the situation was developing for the better. Master, what should I do to help you? Peter asked respectfully. I know that an ancient black magic can create a resurrection potion, allowing me to restore my original body and get back the power that originally belonged to me, the Dark Lord said hoarsely. When I restore my original power, you will get the answer. Some rewards. Thank you for your generosity. You need those materials. I will help you prepare them immediately. I need three powerful medicinal primers, Voldemort said hoarsely. My father's bones, servant's flesh. As he said, he looked at Peter who was shaking to the chaff. Don't worry, it doesn't need much, and it won't kill you. And I also need you to help me control the resurrection potion. Peter couldn't help but heaved a sigh of relief, and asked in a low voice, What's the last item? The blood of the enemy, Voldemort said. Peter felt that this should not be difficult, because there are still so many people who hate Voldemort, it shouldn't be difficult to catch a wizard and get blood after returning to England. I know where my father is buried. It is not difficult to get his bones, but I want the blood of Harry Potter. I want the blood of the man who made me lose my magic 13 years ago. With all due respect, Master, it is too difficult to harm Harry Potter. He is under tight protection now. I am afraid it will be hard for me, Peter said tremblingly. If we use another wizard, we can fight quickly. Quick decision. I will help you get back your original strength as soon as possible. It must be Harry Potter's blood. Voldemort's voice sounded weak, but very firm. At that time, the protection his mother left on him will also exist in my blood. That woman's power can no longer shelter Harry Potter. I am afraid it will be difficult to do this with my own strength. If you allow me, maybe I should summon other Death Eaters who have not been imprisoned in Azkaban. Peter suggested in a low voice, maybe, when the time comes, there is enough strength to accomplish this. I'll worry about them, but not now. After Voldemort lost his power, he no longer trusted anyone, let alone showed his weak side to those walls. He is more willing to promote his reputation after resurrection and let those half-hearted guys worship him, let the traitor live in fear day and night, until silently dying in a dark corner. Okay. Let Bertha Jorkins come by, of course. I remember you said that this woman is working for the Ministry of Magic. Maybe she can provide us with some useful information. Voldemort picked up Peter strenuously. Eswand pointed at Bertha Jorkins and used psychic minds on him. The expression on Bertha Jorkins' face looked very painful, and it was obvious that Voldemort was forcibly flipping through her memory. Oh, it's really surprising. 
Someone actually used a strong forgetting spell on Bertha Jorkins. Voldemort was in a good mood, and he easily got a lot of information from Bertha Jorkins. However, when encountering a powerful wizard, the forgetting curse won't work. Master, Peter asked nervously. Now, let's go back to the UK in no hurry. The Quidditch World Cup is being held there. There will be countless wizards pouring into that country from all over the world. All the nosy guys from the Ministry of Magic are dispatched. They will stand guard everywhere. Pay attention to any abnormal activities. So we must wait patiently. Harry opened his eyes suddenly and woke up from his sleep. He stretched out his hand and touched his forehead lightly. He bared his teeth in pain. The lightning scar on his forehead was so painful as if someone had printed a red wire on his skin. When Harry slowed down and turned over to sit up, his forehead was already wet with sweat. He looked around in confusion and his eyes fell on Ron who was lying not far away, snoring. What's the matter with that dream? Harry even knew two people in his dream. One of them was Peter Pettigrew, who was said to have died in Azkaban prison not long ago. The other was sitting in an armchair with his back facing him, but Harry would never forget that cold, sharp voice. It was Voldemort's voice. The person in the armchair is definitely Voldemort. They also murdered a person just now. Harry frowned and concentrated, desperately trying to recall more things. By the way, they seem to be talking about something. They seem to be plotting some conspiracy. What's the matter, Harry? Serious voice rang in Harry's ears. I had a nightmare. Harry was still rubbing the scar on his forehead with his hands, trying to relieve the pain it caused. Sirius noticed Harry's hand rubbing his forehead and frowned and asked, Does your curse scar hurt? Well, the last time the pain occurred was because Voldemort was nearby. Speaking of this, Harry looked around uncomfortably. They were in the Quidditch World Cup camp, where there were a large number of Ministry of Magic guards, and Voldemort was obviously impossible to be nearby. Sirius was silent and didn't know what was thinking. What did you dream of? He asked suddenly. I dreamt of Voldemort and Peter. They are murdering a person, and they seem to be plotting some kind of conspiracy. Harry said in a low voice the scene he saw in the dream and added, I think that dream is very realistic. It's like that happened before. You're right, Sirius. Lupin's voice rang from the side. Peter really escaped from Azkaban prison. Isn't that great? That will pay for it. Black gritted his teeth. Since he is dead, he should lie back in the coffin. Even if he crawls out, I will press him again. Go back to the coffin. Professor Lupin, do you think the dream I had is real? Harry was still a little confused. Although he thought the dream was very realistic, it was really a dream. Or did he actually have the gift of prophecy? However, I have never heard anyone say that someone predicted it through dreams. I don't know too much. But since that dream is very realistic, it might mean what we are not experts in prophecy. We have to find someone who is good at this field, and maybe we can give you the answer you want. Lu Ping did not he would make judgments rashly on the matter, but Harry's dream like that would obviously not be a good sign. Are you talking about Anderson? When Harry talked about finding a professional in Lu Ping, the first person in his mind was Dumbledore and then Albert. Harry was reluctant to disturb Dumbledore with this kind of thing and he didn't even know how to write this letter? Dear Professor Dumbledore, I'm sorry to disturb you, but my scar hurts this morning? This is ridiculous. The principal is very busy, so he shouldn't bother him with this kind of thing. As for Albert Anderson, although Harry didn't want to admit it, the mysterious guy seemed to know a lot. Sirius is still very grateful for his help. Ron next to him seemed to be awakened by the sound of their words. He opened his eyes sleepily and sat up, but soon he lay back on the bed and fell asleep deeply. Let's go out and talk. Sirius motioned a few people to the kitchen outside to talk about it, so as not to wake Ron who was still asleep. They left the room silently and sat down at the garden table in the kitchen. Do you think that dream is real? Sirius lighted the oil lamp on the table, looked at Harry in a trance, and asked in a low voice. Very realistic, as if it actually happened, Harry repeated nervously. I heard that Anderson can see through the crystal ball, something that might happen in the future. Perhaps, we should take the time to write a letter to Dumbledore and tell him about this, Lupin suggested. Well, it's time to write a letter to Dumbledore, let me write it, 
Sirius agreed with the old friend's suggestion, seeming to think of something and asked, I remember Albert will also come to see Quidditch. World Cup, do you know when he will come? Sirius, do you want to find Anderson for divination? Harry could probably guess what Sirius did with Anderson. Yes, look for him for divination. That guy's divination is very accurate. Sirius nodded. But he seems to have to collect a large sum of gallons every time he divination. Harry muttered softly. Isn't this normal? Sirius didn't care about Garen's question at all. Normal? Harry couldn't turn his head. Of course it's normal. Sirius looked at Harry's confused gaze and calmly explained. The price for a real master of prophecy to make a prediction is definitely more than this price. To some extent, his prediction is quite affordable. Affordable? Harry thinks he has any misunderstandings about benefits? What are you going to let him divination? Lupin changed the subject, knowing that Harry could not change his mind for the time being. Perhaps, we can let him fortune out Peter's position. Black didn't intend to let him go, so he thought for a while and said, or, ask him to fortune telling whether Harry's nightmare is true. Maybe, we can try to get Albert to divination Voldemort and Peter's conspiracy? Harry said suddenly. Conspiracy? Lupin and Black looked at each other and shook their heads. It might be difficult for Harry, and there are limits to divination. Okay, Harry, you go back and lie down for a while. I'll prepare breakfast for everyone. What do you want to eat? Lupin took out his pocket watch, glanced at the time and asked gently. I don't really want to eat. Harry looked at Sirius who had taken out the quill and parchment, and asked, Is it really okay to disturb Principal Dumbledore with this kind of thing? There is nothing wrong with it. This can make Dumbledore more vigilant. Sirius felt it was necessary for Dumbledore to know about this. He had a strong hunch that if Peter really escaped from Azkaban prison, he might go to find Voldemort's asylum. When Ron and Hermione woke up for breakfast the next morning, they found Harry's spirits a little sluggish, as if he didn't sleep well last night. Harry told them about his nightmare last night. Ron was completely stunned when he talked about Voldemort from Harry. Hermione's eyes were a little worried. She felt that Lupin's approach was right, and that Professor Dumbledore should be told about it. Hermione, do you know when Albert will come to watch the Quidditch World Cup? Harry suddenly asked, Are you looking for Albert something? Hermione asked suspiciously. Harry briefly talked about Sirius preparing to find Albert for divination. A hundred gallons at a time for divination. Are you sure that guy is not stealing money? Ron was stunned again when he heard the price mentioned by Harry. I've got the price a bit outrageous, but Sirius seems to think it's a bargain. Harry was still a little depressed when he talked about it, even he didn't know why. Hermione was eager to talk. She felt there was a problem with Harry and Ron's way of thinking. What's wrong with Hermione? Harry saw what Hermione seemed to say. It should have been in the last few days. I remember that he seems to be going to see the stadium with his girlfriend, Hermione said with a complicated expression. Maybe you should ask Fred and George. They should be clearer. I'm afraid not. Fred and George borrowed my piglet. We can hardly find the owl delivering the letter. Ron frowned and said that he and Hermione were invited by Sirius because of Harry's relationship. Come early to watch the Quidditch World Cup. Ron's father originally planned to take everyone over to see the Quidditch finals. However, the two matters are not in conflict, because Sirius may need to leave temporarily to help loop in through the painful time of the full moon transformation by the time of the Quidditch finals. Fortunately, after the announcement of the restoration of the humanoid curse, Lupin did not have to suffer too much during the full moon. Don't worry, we can always meet Albert. Hermione comforted. I'll talk to him about divination when the time comes. It seems that Fred and George are planning to make a fortune with this Quidditch World Cup. Ron seemed to have thought of something and suddenly asked, Are you going to participate in that time? Ron, gambling is harmful. Hermione frowned. You probably don't know. Even Percy intends to take this opportunity to make a fortune. Ron didn't care about Hermione's words. This is a rare and good opportunity. You mean Albert intends to cheat by prophecy? Hermione was taken aback. Cheating, the guy himself is very lucky. Does he need to cheat by prophecy? I remember Fred and George said that Albert never lost money. Ron was envious of Albert's luck and talked about Fry, the magical story that Da and George told them. So, 
he just hadn't enrolled in school, so he bet on the train that Fudge would become Minister of Magic and made a hundred gallons. Hermione and Harry were equally stunned after hearing Ron's words. At that time, he had just enrolled. I don't know the magic world yet. That's why Albert's luck is very good. Ron nodded seriously, as if to confirm something again. You don't think Albert, who has just entered school, can secretly cheat through prophecy? I dare say that guy must be rich, Harry said leisurely. He is indeed very rich, Ron said with a complex expression. I heard Fred and George say a while ago that Anderson seemed to have participated in some competition and won another international award. That guy won only in a summer vacation. Won two international awards, two big prizes and several thousand gallons in one go. International Alchemy Conference. Hermione corrected. Albert gave me a small packet of Roselle tea, saying it was a specialty brought back from Egypt. Thousands of gallons. Although Harry was not short of money, when he heard that Albert made thousands of gallons easily, he felt that the two were not in the same world at all. You don't know. When Mom was cleaning Fred and George's room a while ago, she found a stack of order forms with several long pages of price lists. Ron seemed to think of something and said enviously, What fake wand? Magic candy, they have invented a lot of funny things, and they are planning to open a joke shop to make their mothers very angry. It is said that Albert has been paying to support them to do those researches, and even plans to work together after graduation there is a joke shop, and my mother has nothing to do with them. In the end, she can only compromise and stop caring about them. Speaking of opening a store, Harry suddenly remembered something. Sirius seems to be planning to open a shop with Professor Lupin, but they haven't decided yet what shop they want to open, Harry said suddenly. Why did Sirius suddenly want to open a store? Ron was a little surprised. He felt that Sirius's lavish way of spending money would probably lose money when opening a store. Not very clear. Harry shook his head. I guessed it, Hermione said suddenly. What's the reason? Harry and Ron asked in unison. Probably I want to give Professor Lupin a job, Hermione said with a complicated expression. As Professor Lupin, it is difficult to find a suitable decent job outside, and Sirius and Lupin are good friends. He probably doesn't want his good friend to have a bad life, so he wants to give him a decent job in this way. At this moment, the three of them were silent. This seemed to explain why Sirius suddenly wanted to open a shop. However, opening a store and doing business is not an easy task. Hermione is also very dissatisfied with Sirius. If the business is not good, I doubt how long that store will last. The three were silent again. This is indeed a cruel reality. It is not easy to open a shop and do business. Maybe, you can ask Sirius to ask Albert for help, Ron said suddenly. If Sirius really only wants to give Professor Lupin a job, and does not expect that shop to help him make money, as long as he is willing to the part of the earned garen will be distributed to Albert, and that guy must have a way to prevent the store they opened from closing down at a loss. Furthermore, Albert may waive the divination fee after getting acquainted with each other. That guy has always been nice to his friends. Even Harry had to admit that Ron's last sentence was correct. Anderson was really good to his friends. He had helped Hagrid many times. So he didn't see him asking Hagrid for a gallon, and he also helped. The Weasley brothers fulfilled their wish to play a joke shop. You are right. I will mention this to Sirius. Harry also sincerely hoped that Professor Lupin would have a decent job. Ding dong. Doorbell rang. Sansa opened the entrance door, looked at the red-haired girl outside, smiled and let her into the house. Isabel, right? A long time ago, Sansa had seen Isabel in the photos given by Albert. Sometimes she had to feel that the three generations of grandparents had good eyesight, and the red-haired girl in front of her had something special, temperament, very compatible with Albert. I think Albert should have mentioned it to you, Isabel said to the old man with a smile. I'm here to pick them up to watch the Quidditch World Cup. Albert and Nia are still having dinner. Would you like to sit down and have something to eat with everyone? No, I've had breakfast. When Isabel followed Sansa into the restaurant, he saw Albert, who was dressed in plain clothes, was eating breakfast, and Nia's dress was also ordinary. However, with the temperament and appearance of the Anderson brothers and sisters, even if they are dressed very ordinary, they are also easy to attract the attention of others in the crowd. Naya put down her fork, 
took out her handkerchief and wiped the corners of her mouth and couldn't wait to ask, Shall we go now? Yes. But, we have to put everything we will use in the last few days into the box. Albert ate the last bit of food on the plate, then raised his head and said to Naya, You have to do it later. Stay in the box so that you can secretly apparate and enter the camp. Stay in the box? Naya shifted her gaze to the suitcase in Isabel's hand and asked suspiciously, Will you suffocate people to death? There is a lot of space inside, and you'll know when you get in. Albert motioned to Isabel to open the suitcase, directly revealing the winding staircase. Magic is incredible. I didn't expect that even this kind of thing can be done. When Naya pulled the small suitcase in, she was shocked to find that there was actually a house inside, and there was not only sunshine outside, but also a lot of flower fields. Stay here. Apparition will not affect you. Albert smiled and said to Nia, You can choose a room you like here. Are we going to live here next? Naya asked puzzledly. Yes, we may all live here in the next few days. Eber nodded his head and left the suitcase with Isabel. Then we will go first. Albert said to Luke, Aren't you leaving with her? Sansa looked at Isabel who was leaving empty-handed and looked at Albert with a suitcase, asking suspiciously, I'm underage and can't use magic, so we have to leave. Albert took out his pocket watch and looked at the time and said, I need Grandpa Luke and Grandma Sansa to leave the house for a while. You can go to nearby conveniences. Buy something in the store. Take good care of your sister, Luke exhorted. I will. Albert raised his foot and returned to his room. The house elf bit was already waiting for him in his room. Albert handed the suitcase to the house elf bit, and then he entered the vanishing cabinet and secretly operat and went to Isabel's house to join the two sisters. The task of the house elf bit is to return to Hogsmeade's house with a suitcase when there is no one at home, wait for Albert to set up the tent, and then secretly bring the suitcase to meet the three. At this time, Isabel was taking Albert and Katrina's entourage to reveal himself to a site specially designated for apparition by the British Ministry of Magic. When they first arrived, they saw an exhausted old wizard not far away. He was frowning and looking at the young trio. His gaze stayed on Albert for a while, and he moved to seem unaccustomed. Katrina Operat, is there any problem? Albert noticed the old wizard's gaze and asked uncomprehendingly, Is it only you? We have registered in advance. I think you should be able to find McGonagall on the parchment. Albert reminded, Oh, McGonagall, you are over there, and the site manager is Mr. Payne. The old wizard suddenly said, You are Albert Anderson, right? At this moment, several young people fell to the ground in embarrassment, obviously a sequelae of using the door key. Albert didn't answer, but just nodded towards the opponent, and then looked for the muggle mister in the direction of the opponent's finger. The three of them quickly saw the stone house, with a man standing at the door with a trance and indifferent expression on his face. Good morning, you are Mr. Payne. Albert stepped forward to greet each other and he could clearly see that the hapless man had just been casted on the forgetting curse. Mr. Payne looked at the three young people and asked, Ah, yes, you are? McDoug, I booked a tent two days ago, and will probably stay here for twelve days. Of course, it is not ruled out that we may leave early. After speaking, Albert consciously took out the pound sterling he had prepared in advance and handed it directly to Mr. Payne. You have a place over there. Mr. Payne looked at the list posted on the door and took the pound sterling from Albert. Thank you. Albert took the map and took Sister McDoug toward the camp over there. Will that muggle become a fool? No, but I'm afraid I will be a little forgetful. Using the forgetting curse too many times will always leave some trouble, Albert said. As soon as he entered the camp, Albert saw two rows of neatly arranged new tents in the camp, which looked the same as muggle tents but there were still some wizard tents to see that magic was used. He wanted to count on the wizards. It is obviously not realistic to be able to hide oneself. They quickly came to the end of the camp, and it took a minute to find the wooden sign with McDugger in it. Albert quickly unloaded a very simple tent and used magic to set up the tent in a short time. The space inside the tent is also much larger than outside. Except for a table, there are only a few beds left, which looks very simple. Of course, they didn't intend to live in tents, so it doesn't matter how simple it is here. 
this is definitely the worst tint I have ever seen. Katrina couldn't help but complain. At least, it's still a tint, and it didn't let you live here. Albert took out his pocket watch and looked at the time, and said to Sister McDug, Come and join us. Bid is your house elf? Katrina asked curiously. She didn't wait for Albert's answer. There was a crackling sound from the compartment, and the house elf appeared in the tent carrying a suitcase. Albert took the suitcase and opened it at the entrance of the compartment, disguising the entrance of the suitcase as the entrance of the compartment, which looked like he had opened the door and entered the compartment of the tent. As for the current broken tent, it was actually prepared for the house elves. Once they encounter any trouble, the house elves can immediately take the box and phantom and run away, and throw the broken tent directly here. If something happens, you can notify me directly through this thing. With that, Albert took out a bracelet from his pocket and gave it to the house elf, which was a communication item he made. He has made a lot of similar things, but most of the contact items can only be one-to-one, -one, and there are defects. Good master. The house elf put the communication bracelet in his hand and started to busy himself. Owner, Katrina keenly caught the meaning of the house elf's words and looked at Albert suspiciously. The latter didn't intend to explain at all and directly opened the door and entered the suitcase. Have you reached your destination? Naya heard the sound coming from the room and hurried back to the room and saw Albert showing up in the house with two beautiful red-haired girls. One of Naya knew him and the other should be Isabel's sister Carter, Rena. She heard them say that Isabel's sister would also go to the Quidditch World Cup with them. Katrina also looked at the pretty girl in front of her curiously, suddenly a little depressed, because Albert's sister was also a pretty girl. My sister Naya, this is Isabel's sister Katrina. This should be the first time you have met. Albert introduced them to the two. After the two met each other, Katrina suddenly asked Albert, there must be a muggle expulsion curse on the Quidditch Stadium. How do you plan to bring her into the stadium? It is not difficult to block the muggle expulsion curse. It is not a particularly powerful curse. Since Albert dared to bring Nia to watch the Quidditch World Cup, he naturally considered various situations and had corresponding responses. Measure. You have to rest for a while. During the day, in order to prevent muggles from discovering anomalies, the camp is normal and there is no place to go shopping. In the evening, there will be vendors selling things in the camp. Then I will take you around. Go shopping and buy some souvenirs. Albert knew the situation here in advance through other channels. Can I do it too? Naya blinked and asked. Of course you can, but you have to put these things on first, and you won't be able to leave me at that time. Albert took out a few magic items and handed them to Nia and then drew out his wand to apply magic on her. Is it really okay to do this? Katrina was a little worried. Albert, this guy was really unscrupulous and didn't put the Ministry of Magic in his eyes at all. I have studied the traces of the Ministry of Magic. As long as you no longer use magic outside the magic world, there will be no problems. I have tested it in Diagon Alley before. As long as you are in the magic world, even if you are with muggles, you won't be warned if you use magic. Albert took Nia out of the suitcase and appeared in the tent. What is that? The girl was shocked when she saw the house elf at first sight, and she couldn't help shrinking behind Albert. House elves are similar to hiring servants. Some wizard families have house elves to serve. Albert casually explained. His name is Bit, who takes care of our daily lives. This is my sister Naya. Albert introduced Bit, and the house elf bowed slightly to Naya and then continued to work on his own affairs. Does this tent use similar magic? Nia followed Albert out of the tent and found that there was a large space inside the tent, but the outside was just a very small tent. People coming and going outside the tent looked like an ordinary camp. If there weren't those strange costumes, these wizards were trying to disguise themselves as muggles with poor acting skills, but they didn't even realize that their behavior was in muggles. The eyes are so weird. I think they treat ordinary people as idiots. Naya looked at the group of wizards with poor acting skills and couldn't help but complain. Yes, no one really cares about those things, because they prefer to use magic to solve problems. Albert said softly, if a muggle discovers the secret here, wizards will use magic to solve the problem. Let the other party forget? Let the other party forget? Really? Arrogant. Naya muttered softly. 
This is the wizard. Albert patted Nia on the shoulder and motioned her to go back to the tent to rest and stop running around at this point in time. When will the Quidditch match begin? Nia looked up at Albert. About night, Albert said. It's a terrible time period. Staying up late is a woman's natural enemy. Nia murmured. I totally agree with your opinion. A voice came from not far away. Albert turned his head and saw Catherine and Valeria walking this way. Naya looked at the two uninvited guests in front of her in amazement, frowned and said, You are so charming. Who is this beautiful girl? Is it your new girlfriend? Valeria greeted Albert enthusiastically and looked at Nia curiously and couldn't help but teased. Isabel is sure it will be very sad. Go in and talk. Albert invited the two into the tent. Your tent is really simple. Valeria looked at the tent in surprise. It's hard to imagine that Albert would live in such a ghost place with Isabel. Idiot. They definitely don't live here. Kathleen's gaze fell on the girl next to Albert, and she was also curious about who the beautiful girl next to Albert was. This is my sister, Naya. Albert introduced the two. This is Catherine and Valeria, my friends in the magic world. You used to beauty pharmacy also has their share of credit. My sister. Magic world. Unlike Valeria, Catherine noticed Albert's words. Nia is a muggle. Remember to keep it secret. Albert also knew that this kind of thing couldn't be kept away from the smart guy. So he went straight to a showdown. The two looked at each other, but they also said they would keep it secret. If you look for Isabel, she is resting inside. Albert pointed to the entrance of the suitcase. Do you mind if we have a meal with you? Catherine's cooking skills are really not good, and I can barely eat what I cook. Valeria said pitifully. I will let the house elves prepare more of your portion. Actually, if we can, we would even want to move over to live with you. Valeria continues to make progress. This is her goal. Naya looked suspiciously at the big-breasted blonde woman in front of her, who thought she had other plans against Albert. Unfortunately, we don't have any spare seats here. Isabel declined directly. Humph. Women. Sometimes it is troublesome. Especially the more beautiful women are, the more troublesome it is when several beautiful women get together. Most of the time, they don't even do business, but like to compare who is prettier. Since Valeria and Catherine arrived, the surrounding atmosphere has been very wrong. Albert took Nia to escape the wooden house for the first time, sat back in the armchair of the tent, and read the book in his hand slowly. Daily Prophet. It seems that being too popular is also a distressing thing. Naya was a little gloating. She rarely saw Albert when she was so embarrassed, and she felt particularly interesting. Yes, so you don't have to tease me. Albert continued to read the newspaper in his hand. The news in recent days has been related to the Quidditch World Cup. Is it really okay? Naya fiddled with the rough-worked bracelet on her hand and suddenly asked, Is it really going to cause you trouble? As long as you are obedient and don't run around, there will be no problems. Albert calmed down softly. Remember to sleep at noon to avoid sleepiness at night. Although most Quidditch games will end within a few hours, even it's shorter, but sometimes there are exceptions. Naya knew something about Quidditch games, and she also read The Origin of Quidditch, and she knew the rules of Quidditch better. In Nia's view, Quidditch would be so popular, probably because of the low level of entertainment in the magical world. Of course, it may also be related to the excitement of this kind of race, just like a car. Did you tell the two big beauties about your engagement? Naya began to gossip about her brother's relationship problems. In fact, Naya can't understand. Isabel can still talk to Valeria and Catherine calmly. To be honest, Naya still admires Isabel. At least it is difficult for her to do this. Especially in front of beautiful women who might want to rob her boyfriend. And Naya also wonders if Isabel's sister is secretly liking Albert. This kind of thing, Isabel will handle it himself. Albert put down the newspaper, looked at his sister who was some gossip, and sighed slightly. Why do women like gossip news? He remembers that Naya didn't like him to be in contact with other women before. The younger sister also grew up gradually. It sounds like a scumbag. Naya raised her eyebrows. You should tell them clearly. I did. Albert protested, and I also consciously keep a distance from them. I have a friend who fell in love with a handsome and rich boy the year before and later slept with him, Naya recalled. Now, she shares a boyfriend with another pretty girl. 
That man sounds like a public toilet. Albert couldn't help joking. By the way, your friend didn't dump each other? No, the boy's personality and character are actually good, but he doesn't know how to reject others. At this moment, an owl flew in from outside the tent and fell in front of the two of them. Albert was a little confused. Why would an owl come here to deliver a letter to himself? It was a small owl, with a note at his feet, chattering nonstop. Albert untied the note, spread it out, and read the contents. Dear Albert, I heard that you have arrived at the Quidditch World Cup camp, so I can't wait to write you this letter, hoping to meet you. I want you to help me make a prediction about Peter Pettigrew. I think no if that guy is still alive, and if he is still alive, where is that guy hiding now? Also, I will come to visit you before 10 o'clock. I hope it won't disturb you. Sirius Black, is there anything wrong with that letter? Nia asked curiously, noticing the weird expression on Albert's face. Nothing. Someone wants me to do fortune telling for him. Anyway, how do they know that I'm here? Albert murmured. He took out a quill pen from his pocket and wrote, See you later on the back of the note, then let the owl fly away with the note, then took out his pocket watch to look at the time, and then continued reading the newspaper. Sirius Black came earlier than expected. Shortly after the owl flew away, Sirius Black came over, and he was not the only one who came, but was also accompanied by a group of people, Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Group, plus Professor Lupin. Sorry, I was interrupted, Sirius said to Albert. By the way, this tent is not your style. It's really rudimentary here, Ron murmured. Sirius's tent was gorgeous, even better than Ron's. As soon as Ron finished speaking, Hermione glared at him severely. Why are you alone? I thought you would come with Isabel to watch the Quidditch World Cup. Hermione naturally noticed the wooden sign outside. The name on it was McDugger, not Anderson. Isabel is entertaining friends. Albert motioned to Sirius Black to sit opposite him, then waved his hand to keep others away temporarily, like driving away a mosquito. More than, Harry looked at the house elves who brought them tea and water in disbelief. Are you hired by Anderson now? Sorry, sir. I am not called Dobby, and you must be mistaken. I was not hired by the master. The house elf said sharply. I'm sorry, Harry said to the elf. I think of you as someone I knew before. It's okay, sir. The house elf turned and left. Your house elf? Sirius Black looked at the house elf and asked curiously, Are you really a muggle wizard? Of course I am a muggle wizard. Albert changed the subject. You want to know if Peter is still alive, and if he is still alive, where is he now? Right? Sirius put a small bag of gallon in front of Albert. Albert did not go to see Garen, but refocused his attention on the crystal ball in front of him. The white mist in the crystal ball gradually dispersed, and some figures were reflected like water. That person is surprisingly Peter Pettigrew. It seems that Peter Pettigrew is still alive and doing well, but the Daily Prophet reported that Peter had died in Azkaban prison. It is said that officials of the Ministry of Magic also specially went to confirm the body. Lupin said suddenly, Of course the corpse can be fake, Albert said to Sirius. It seems that you didn't give up killing him yourself? Yes. Sirius made no secret of this. The dead should lie in the coffin, instead of running around with corpses like they are now. I agree with you. Albert moved his gaze back to the crystal ball, which was a very hidden room. Albert raised his hand and touched the crystal ball lightly. The picture above disappeared again, replaced by a forest and then a double eagle flag. Sirius Black stared at the changes in the crystal ball and then raised his head to look at Albert again, waiting for the other's confusion. Double eagle flags, Austria, Montenegro, Armenia? However, I think this should refer to Albania, the forests of Albania. This should mean that Peter is going to the forests of Albania to find mysterious people. I dreamt that Peter and Voldemort murdered someone. Harry, who had been eavesdropping, suddenly interrupted. Oh, tell me you dreamed it? Albert looked at Harry curiously. Harry briefly told the story of his dream. It's an incredible ability. I haven't heard of a similar foreseeable dream so far, but I can't rule out such a possibility. Albert said to Harry, As far as I know, you have never shown anything related to prophecy. Ability. So I think it shouldn't be a foreseeing dream. 
but there may be some connection between you and the mysterious person. Albert pointed to Harry's scar. Although it feels a little weird, the mysterious person becomes like that. I couldn't kill it completely. It's incredible in itself. I can't help you, but I suggest you go to Dumbledore. He is the expert in this area. Okay, let's continue talking about Peter. It's terrible news that that guy is not dead. Albert smiled at Sirius. Since you plan to contribute to the British magical world, I don't mind providing you with it. A little help. After all, Peter is still alive and has escaped from Azkaban prison. It is really disturbing. With that, Albert gently touched the crystal ball again, and the picture rotated again and turned into a desolate big house, and then the picture turned into a person again. Do you know this guy? Albert pointed to the person in the crystal ball. It's a bit familiar, but I can't remember it for a while. Sirius frowned and said, The picture in the crystal ball finally turned into a desolate cemetery, and the picture was finally fixed in front of a tombstone. It's just that the surroundings are too dark to see whose tombstone it is. They may go back to England. After all, you may know the man. Albert analyzed. Peter Pettigrew's foothold may be the broken house. And then Peter will come into contact with the man just now. And in the end, it will be true. The cemetery that will actually convert normal income should be the place where Peter Pettigrew will appear. Nothing? Harry couldn't help widening his eyes? The prediction is like this. Albert gave Harry a glance and said to Sirius, If you want to find a clue, you'd better think about who the man appeared in the crystal ball is, and if you want to find Peter Pettigrew, I can give you some gadgets so that you can have a good chat with him. Hermione thought it was ridiculous, and she didn't expect anyone to talk about plans to murder someone here. Do you have a grudge against Peter Pettigrew? Hermione never thought that Albert had such a side. Having a grudge is not counted, but Peter must have grudges with me. Albert smiled. He has grudges against you? Hermione raised her eyebrows slightly. Harry and Ron were a little confused at hearing, obviously not paying attention to what they were talking about just now. Peter was sent to Azkaban prison by Albert. The expression on Lupin's face was very complicated, and he didn't know whether he should support Sirius in killing his old friend. I am not afraid of Peter's revenge myself, but I never believe in the morals of the Dark Wizard nor do I want my family to be harmed by it. Albert took out a wooden box from the deformed lizard skin bag and opened it with all kinds of things inside. Medicine. He picked up a golden pill and put it in the small bottle and handed it to Black. After you find Peter, you will eat it. This thing will give you some help. Albert said mysteriously. What is this thing? Black looked curiously at the golden pill in the bottle. Fortunately, it can last for about half an hour. I think there is enough time, Albert said lightly. Give me some more. I can buy it with money. Sirius felt that he might have more luck in finding Peter. What is a blessing? Harry couldn't help asking. Luck potion. A potion that can bring good luck to people. Hermione couldn't help asking. You can make a blessing potion? It is said that this kind of potion is very difficult. Can it really bring good luck to people? Ron felt that he needed some blessing to change his bad luck. This is a gift from an old friend. Albert explained with a smile. The elixir does not bring real good luck, but it does work well sometimes, especially when it is critical. There are unexpected effects. I'll get rid of that guy as soon as possible. After Sirius Black put the bottle back into his pocket, he seemed to think of something and said, I heard you plan to open a joke shop with Brother Weasley? Yes, it does happen, Albert admitted. Lupin and I are also planning to open a shop. We thought about your last proposal. Didn't think it was appropriate. Black felt a little embarrassed about this, but he still obeyed. Harry's suggestion, asking Albert's opinion, may be able to get unexpected results. This guy is more powerful than imagined. What are you and Professor Lupin good at? Albert suddenly asked. Opening a store is not easy. At least you have to not lose money, or the store will not go on. If you have nothing to do, I suggest you write a memoir. Professor Lu Ping can also write, write your story as a story, and then you can take this time to carefully consider what story you want to open, and then take some time to investigate. The two looked at each other. Albert's proposal was good, but it was difficult for them to write a book in peace. At the very least, it is difficult for Sirius to settle down and write a book. If it were you, what store would you choose to open? Sirius asked Albert. 
Management Magazine, Defense Against the Dark Arts Magazine, Albert said without hesitation, there is no magazine on defense against dark arts in the British magical world, and most wizards and students are relatively weak in defense against dark arts. This is a good idea. Sirius and Lupin looked at each other, intending to study this aspect in depth. As dusk approached, the atmosphere in the camp gradually became active, and the wizards began to walk around frequently, talking loudly about the Quidditch game. When the sun disappeared at the end of the horizon, the impatient wizards abandoned the last trace of disguise, and various signs of magic quickly emerged from all over the camp. At night, Albert took Nia around the camp. Every few steps here, there are vendors selling all kinds of weird souvenirs and small carts. Who do you think will win tonight? Catherine picked up a blue rose badge representing the United States and asked Albert who was buying a hat nearby. Crumb will catch the snitch and bring victory to Bulgaria. Albert picked up a red hat and put it on Nia's head. After taking a closer look, he nodded in satisfaction. Then, he picked up a small red flag from the stall and waved it twice. The lion on it roared. Well, we seem to win against the American team. Valeria muttered softly. Then you will definitely lose money. Isabel and Katrina walked over here, holding binoculars in their hands, and handed two of them to Albert and Nia. You should tell me earlier. Valeria doesn't like losing money, she prefers the sense of security that winning money brings to her. However, she suspected that even if Albert said, Catherine would buy the American team to win the game. This woman is so stubborn sometimes. It doesn't matter, there is still a chance anyway, just remember to divide the money for me, Albert said jokingly. Then it's settled. The conversation between the two made the surrounding vendors look dumbfounded. Does this count as picking up girls? I want that. Naya quietly pulled Albert's arm and pointed at the plastic model on the stall, asking Albert to buy her a model of a flying broomstick. Albert immediately took out his wallet, paid the money altogether, and took everyone to go shopping for souvenirs. During this period, Albert also met many acquaintances. Ravenclaw's Davis was the most interesting. The guy stared at the girl next to Albert as if he had lost his soul when he accidentally ran into a strange wizard and panicked to apologize to the other party, he realized that the language was unclear. Not only Davis but also young wizards from other countries cast their curious gazes here. There is no way who makes their team so eye-catching. Many boys are very interested in the beautiful girls around Albert. There was even an acquaintance who was suspected to be Catherine. Cheekily came over to strike up a conversation. In the end, Catherine said, Who are you? and was so embarrassed that she could only walk away in a desperate manner. Friend? I don't know. Catherine asked rhetorically, There must be many people who know you in the school, but will you know all the students in the school? It makes sense. Albert stopped asking and took Naya to go shopping, occasionally stopping to buy her some souvenirs or watch the performance. Albert squinted his eyes, put the makeup in front of him, overlapped the wizard who threw a red ball like a fish, and a figure in his head. Albert asked tentatively, Danny? You are. Danny looked at Albert suspiciously, unable to remember who this person was before him. Albert Anderson. We used to play Quidditch together. Albert reminded with a smile. The other party did not refute it, indicating that it was indeed Danny, but it was too long since we saw him. The other party had forgotten himself. Oh, it's you. Danny forced a smile at Albert obviously not wanting to be recognized by acquaintances in such a place. His eyes fell on the beautiful girls behind Albert, and he smiled and joked. You are really popular with the girls. Look at the men over there. They are all jealous of you. Why are you the only one? Mario and Jack. Albert didn't answer that, but found another topic. Jack gave up. Mario joined a circus alone, and is now traveling the world to perform. Danny said of his former companions could not help but look calm. Actually, I also gave up. Now I just come to do some odd jobs to earn extra money. Long leave me alone. How are the others now? Would just graduated last year, and seems to have just signed to become Puddlemere United as a substitute. Angelina intends to become a Quidditch player. Fred and George are preparing for the joke shop. They are still hitting the ball on the team. Hand, and I plan to publish a book recently. I often see you in the Daily Prophet recently. Congratulations on your winning the International Alchemy Award. 
Danny reached out and touched Albert's shoulder and said, How is the Gryffindor team? Won the Quidditch trophy last year. Harry Potter is a very good seeker. I thought you would take over as the seeker. Danny was a little disappointed. He actually wanted to hear that Albert became a member of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Forget it. I don't bother to participate in the hard training. Albert suddenly said, By the way, do I invite you to perform for my sister? Your sister? You still have a sister? Albert pointed to Nia next to him and quietly took out 10 gallons for him. I know this request is a bit headstrong, but please, it's a reward. Oh, of course it's okay. Danny looked complicated, but he nodded and accepted Albert's kindness. He took Albert to his tent, took out some juggling tools from it, and took the lead in showing everyone the simplest fancy throwing and catching ball. This is probably Danny's best juggling. The red flower are like red fish swimming in the void. In addition to throwing flower balls, there is also a bubble drilling sky somersault performance, which looks a bit like a bubble head curse. After making a circle in the sky, Danny landed successfully and aroused enthusiastic applause. Then there was the fire show. He seemed to have eaten something and then spit out all kinds of beautiful sparks from his mouth, which looked like fireworks in his mouth. There is also the badass bird singing, and I don't know how Danny trained the badass bird to turn those high-pitched, twittering calls into rhythmic music. After Danny finished all the performances, there was a warm applause around him. I think it's a shame you gave up the circus show. Albert petted Nia's head and smiled and said to Danny, Thank you so much. No, I should be the one who said thank you. Danny smiled and waved goodbye to them. Your friend? Catherine asked. That's it. He is very talented. Valeria said in a low voice after everyone left around Danny's tent. However, People sometimes have to compromise with reality. Albert reached out to take the ice cream that the hawker handed over, took out from his pocket garin and paid for six ice creams, then turned around and asked the girls around him, Are you going to buy something else? Everyone looked at each other, shook their heads and said that they had nothing to buy for the time being. The game should be about to start. Kathleen, who had just watched her pocket watch, reminded, We should go to the side of the court. We will have a long line up. Thank you for leading the way. Albert nodded to Catherine, took Nia's hand and whispered. If you feel something is wrong later, tell me immediately and don't get lost. Don't let go. Um. Nia responded in a low voice, lowered her head and ate the ice cream in silence. Watching this scene, Katrina sometimes gave birth to the illusion that these two talents are actually lovers. But when I think of Nia Muggle's identity... It is not difficult to guess why Albert is so nervous and prevents Naya from leaving him. Sight. While eating ice cream, the crowd followed Catherine to the forest at a walking speed. When they came to the edge of the forest, they found that many spectators had similar thoughts with them. There were hundreds of people walking around, laughter and shouting, and the fanatical excitement was infecting every audience. Albert, it really is you. Sirius brought Harry and his group towards this side and greeted Albert with a smile. Well, thinking about entering the gym ahead of time, I didn't expect so many people here, Albert said helplessly. Yeah, everyone thinks that way. The queue is really annoying. By the way, who do you think will win today? Sirius casually found a topic. Bulgaria, Albert said without hesitation. I also think Bulgaria will win. The American team seeker is a bit overwhelmed. It is difficult to beat Bulgaria's crumb. That guy is a genius, Blake said as he walked. I bet Bagman will definitely I will lose a lot of money. To be honest, I kind of doubt whether that guy has the ability to pay back the money. Ahem. Catherine coughed slightly, defending her former friend. I think Jenny is not as unbearable as you said. At least she can still catch the snitch for the American team. The eyes of everyone around him fell on Catherine, with surprise, confusion, and incomprehension in their eyes. Your friend? Albert asked suddenly. The surrounding atmosphere suddenly became a little embarrassing, especially serious. He didn't deliberately argue about anything. After saying something sorry, he turned to talk to Lou Pin. However, the sights of Harry, Hermione, and Ron stayed on the beautiful girls around Albert. There was even a weird look on the faces of the two big boys, and they looked away, and Hermione's attention fell more on Nia, who was holding Albert's hands with a nostalgic expression on her face. At this moment, there was a crackling sound not far away, 
followed by a whine of pain. Everyone turned their heads and saw a wizard appearing in a whirl. He slammed his head against the tree next to him and groaned on the ground with pain. Gleeful ridicule. Two wizards hurried over to check the situation of the hapless man and quickly used magic to ease the pain of the other party. At this moment, a strange sound came from the forest in front and countless lights lit up in the darkness, forming a path to the stadium. The time is up, everyone follow me. Sirius took the lead in the front, leading everyone into the woods along the illuminated passage. Albert has been paying attention to Nia's situation to determine whether she will be affected by the spell if she enters the scope of the muggle expelling spell. The crowd followed the crowd for a long time in the woods and finally came to the other side of the woods, where there was a huge oval open-air gymnasium. This stadium is really big. Naya looked at the magnificent stadium in front of her, her mouth wide open. It is said that it can hold a hundred thousand people. Isabel walked silently to Nia and protected her with Albert. The ticket gate is over there. Let's go. Sirius greeted Albert and the others to check the ticket. At the entrance is a witch in her thirties from the Ministry of Magic. She looked surprised at the four tickets that Albert handed out. First class tickets, the top box, just walk upstairs. Catherine's and Valeria's tickets are also in the top box, and they got these tickets through Nicholas's relationship. Where did you get so many first class tickets? Sirius, who was about to go up, heard the witch's words and deliberately slowed down. Sirius is a little depressed and the price of first-class tickets is not cheap. At first, he also wanted to buy first-class tickets, but only after Lupin's persuasion did he change to regular tickets, but he didn't expect that Albert and the group were all first-class tickets. From an old friend, Albert separated from Sirius and his group on the sixth floor. He walked forward with the tickets of the top box until he reached the top floor, and then separated from Catherine and Valeria. The four followed the tickets. No soon found his place. Naya has been holding Albert's hand, looking at the scenery ahead, and couldn't help but sigh with emotion. The view here is really spectacular. Yes, this is for you. Albert took out two buckets of popcorn that the house elves had prepared in advance. What is this? Katrina asked curiously. Popcorn. Albert picked up a popcorn and threw it in his mouth. I also prepared a drink here. You are always so sweet. Isabel took the popcorn and handed it to Katrina. Try it, it's not bad. Katrina ate some popcorn and found that it was really good, but it was a little bit smaller. This food can last you a long time, and you will know later. Albert said with a smile, as if he could see through Katrina's mind. The small box is just for easy holding, and the inside has actually been expanded by the innocent stretching curse. While everyone was happily chatting about trivial topics, a not-so-pleasant guy appeared in their box. Lucius Malfoy showed a little astonishment after seeing the four Alberts in the box. Perhaps he didn't expect Albert to get the tickets for the top box. Old Malfoy's gaze swept across Nia, fell on Sister McDug, and then looked at Albert again, his mouth trembling imperceptibly as if to say something. Whenever, anyone can come here. Draco murmured and was stopped by the old Malfoy. Malfoy, who claims to be pure blood, obviously wouldn't speak too outrageously at this time. At least, you can't say it out loud and let it be heard. At this moment, Old Batty took two wizards into the box. One of the short and fat girls saw Albert on the back seat. Her eyes lit up and she waved to them. You are really welcome. Naya was a little surprised, always feeling that Albert could meet acquaintances no matter where he went. Albert smiled and nodded at the other person but remembered who this person was in his mind. Oh, by the way, the girl in front of me seems to be the pudgy girl from the Readem Strong Academy in the Magic School Potions Championship. The short girl seemed to have said something to the wizard next to him. The wizard in the gorgeous black velvet robe with gold trim looked at Albert and then said a few words to Barty Crouch next to him. Seems to be asking about Albert. Albert Anderson, the best genius in the British magical world for nearly a century. Batty Crouch introduced him in Bulgarian. Perhaps, you have read his name in the newspaper. He recently he has won several international awards. Oh, yes, Anderson should also be able to understand Bulgarian. If you want to get to know each other in the past, of course, I would love to meet this young genius. Obolonsk said, Mr. Obolonsk, 
Minister of the Bulgarian Ministry of Magic, Batty introduced Albert to the wizard next to him. Next to him is his granddaughter, Miss Romiana. You should know him. Oh, hello, Mr. Abalonsk. Albert shook hands with the old man in front of him and smiled. I think the victory tonight will belong to Bulgaria. Crum is an excellent seeker. Thank you. I think Crum will be very happy that someone approves of his abilities. Mr. Abalonsk looked at the young man in front of him curiously. The other person speaks Bulgarian really well. The newspaper says you are going to participate in the international duel competition next year? If I have time, I should go there, Albert said. The action of the minister of the Bulgarian Ministry of Magic made the old Malfoy feel uncomfortable, especially when they heard a series of Bulgarian chats. His face was even more ugly. However, for Mr. Abalonsk, an outstanding wizard who has shown his talent is worthy of attention, especially since the other party has taken four international awards before he was a child, and he is an acquaintance of his granddaughter. There is always nothing wrong with the relationship, let alone the wizards who can watch the game here have a little background. Are you a Crumb fan? Rumiana asked. That's right, Albert said perfunctorily. This year you will definitely have unexpected surprises, Rumiana said regretfully. It's a pity that I have already graduated. It would be nice if I could graduate a year later. You mean the Triwizard Tournament? Albert asked with a smile. You know, Lumiana was relieved quickly. Are you planning to participate? It should be an interesting game. Lumiana suddenly felt silent for Albert's opponent. A wizard who won the Banab's Finkley Award for Outstanding Spelling Techniques and was planning to participate in the international dueling competition to participate in the Triwizard Tournament. It was a bit of an adult bullying a child. In S. Ladies and gentlemen, a thunderous voice resounded throughout the stadium. Ludo drew his wand, pointed his throat, and explained to the audience, Welcome to the quarterfinals of the 422nd Quidditch World Cup. The audience below burst into cheers and applause, accompanied by the chaotic national anthem, and the scene was really lively. Albert and Rumiana also stopped chatting and began to cast their sights on the stadium ahead. The advertisement on the huge blackboard had disappeared, and now it was displayed. United States, zero, Bulgaria, zero. Let us welcome the mascot of the U.S. national team. As soon as the voice fell, there was a thunderous sound in the sky, and a thunderbird passed over everyone's heads, bringing lightning and heavy rain. What is that? Naya looked at the lightning and dark clouds in the sky and couldn't help but shrank to Albert's side. Thunderbird, a well-known American magical creature, its appearance is always accompanied by storms, Albert explained in a low voice. After the appearance of Thunderbird, the audience below was simply pour out blood mold, because the sky began to rain torrentially, which directly showered them with a chill. However, there is no such problem in the box, they have a canopy above their heads. This thing was actually installed by the Ministry of Magic after learning that the mascot of the U.S. team was Thunderbirds. No way, you can't let the distinguished guests also follow the rain. Then it was the turn of the Bulgarian mascot. Albert saw a hundred beautiful women sliding towards the stadium under the rainstorm. They are really beautiful. Naya couldn't help but sigh. That's Viva. Albert closed his eyes as soon as the music started. He didn't want to be fooled by Viva and do some indecent things. In Albert's view, because Viva's temptation may be more difficult to resist than Imperius, he didn't want to embarrass in front of his sister. What are you doing with your eyes closed? Naya asked suspiciously. However, she quickly realized something, because someone in the box was doing something strange. The son of the family whose gaze made her hate jumped onto the chair like a demon and put on an incredibly stunned and ashamed posture and his parents seemed to want to pull him to sit down, but it was in vain. Not only Draco, but all the men on the court were doing some puzzling things under the girl's doubtful eyes. Viva's dance will make men forget everything in the world and fall in love with them. Albert explained with his eyes closed. So looking away appropriately is a good choice. Of course, Hermione didn't understand Viva at all. She just opened her mouth and watched suspiciously at the strange movements of the boys around. Harry, Ron, what are you doing? Hermione was trying to stop a good friend from getting muddled, but to no avail. A similar situation spread to the entire court like a plague. After the music ended, 
an angry roar broke out in the gym. The men did not want Viva to leave, and many spectators who supported the U.S. team even threw away everything related to the U.S. team and changed to support the Bulgarian team. Albert opened his eyes after the music ended and looked at Draco Malfoy, who was extremely embarrassed in the front row, with a smile on the corners of his mouth, and said softly, It's a huge social death scene. In the box, only Draco Malfoy was recruited, and his embarrassed appearance was seen by the big men here. Draco seemed to realize what he had just done. His cheeks flushed flushed all of a sudden, and he retracted back to his parents like quail eggs, not daring to show his head again, for fear of attracting other people's attention. After the mascots of both sides appeared on the field, it was the turn of the Quidditch players of both sides to enter the field. Ludo Bagman was yelling out the names of every Quidditch player. After Victor Crumb came on the field, the atmosphere on the court was finally completely detonated, and countless spectators were all screaming. Crumb cheered. Is this guy Victor Crumb? Albert used the panoramic telescope to observe the young seeker floating above the court on a broomstick. He was a tall and thin man with thick eyebrows, big eyes, a hooked nose, and gray skin. He was not particularly handsome. At least it doesn't match Xiao Bai Lian. Accompanied by the referee's sharp whistle, the game officially began. The flying broomsticks of both sides are very fast. The ghost ball was passed quickly in the chasing hand from the beginning. Even Albert had to admit that compared with the exciting game in front of him, the Quidditch game at Hogwarts was simply it's like a kid's play. However, compared with the exciting game, Albert is more concerned about the panoramic telescope in his hand. He found other uses of this thing. As long as the slow on the right is turned, the speed in the field of view can be slowed down. It is simply a black technology. In Albert's memory, there is no magic that can achieve this effect. What's even more amazing is that as long as you click the game analysis button at the top again, and then aim the camera at the attacking chasers, purple text such as Eagle Head Attack Formation will appear on the camera, even Albert I haven't been able to figure out the principle of this for a while. However, the magic world with such advanced technology is extremely backward in some respects, especially the messenger that appeared last time at the International Alchemy Conference. If he hadn't witnessed it with his own eyes, Albert could not have imagined that the wizard had no such skills and still used owls for correspondence. It can only be said that it is indeed the world of novels. Perhaps it would be foolish to try to explain magic using common sense. Albert put down the panoramic telescope and glanced at Naya beside him. The girl is holding binoculars in both hands and staring at the game intently. She doesn't like to yell like other audience members, but it's not difficult for Albert to see that her emotions are unusually high and Quidditch's novel rules of the game bring Nia a different visual enjoyment. The match started to heat up, the scores of the two sides were not widened, but as long as the wizards who study Quidditch a bit, it is not difficult to see that the Bulgarian team is vaguely suppressed by the American team. It wasn't until 20 minutes after the start of the game that the Bulgarian team finally scored for the first time, and the Vivas danced directly to celebrate the first goal scored. At the moment when the dancing music sounded, Albert only felt that his mind was blank, filled with a kind of extreme joy, somewhat similar to the feeling of being under an imperious curse. He shook his head and immediately got rid of that. Feel. Of course, this may have something to do with Viva stopping dancing. Fortunately, he didn't make any extraordinary moves. Albert could not help but breathe a sigh of relief. In order to hide his emotions, he grabbed some popcorn and put it in his mouth and chewed slowly. I really don't understand. Don't my hands feel sore when I keep holding my glasses? Albert couldn't help but complain. The game has lasted for more than half an hour. Bulgaria has always been at a disadvantage in points, lagging behind the American team by 50 colon 20. In fact, Albert is even more curious about how such a game lasts for three months, even if it lasts two days. It feels incredible. Maybe they will stop and rest and wait for the next night to continue the game? Albert finally blamed it on the magical world, which is always full of unscientific things. In addition to the seekers of the Bulgarian team, the other players are a bit overwhelmed. I have to say that this team can eventually reach the finals, mostly due to Victor Crumb. Jenny of the US team is obviously not Crumb's opponent. She has been led by Crumb for the third time. When people saw Crumb speeding down, they thought he saw the snitch, but that was just Crumb wants to use this to contain his opponent's actions. 
Johnny's luck was good and finally stopped his momentum to avoid hitting himself on the ground. When she saw Crumb climb up, she realized that she was almost cheated by the other party just now. That is the Lonsky fake used by Crumb. So Jenny stopped staring at Crumb, but worked hard to find the whereabouts of the snitch. I feel that the US team is going to win. Naya put down her sight glasses and rubbed her wrists. She kept her wrists sore by keeping the binoculars watching the game. Before catching the golden snitch or opening a sufficient gap between the scores of the two sides, it is best not to easily determine the outcome of the game. Is that right? Yes. Albert asked gently, How do you feel about the Quidditch World Cup? Very interesting and exciting, Naya said excitedly. However, can the Bulgarian team really make a comeback? Now that the two sides have opened a 70-point gap, the score will only increase. A gap of 70 points is actually the same as a gap of 140 points. Only by opening a gap of 160 points can you really win. Because catching the golden snitch can get 150 points in one go. As long as the Bulgarian team's crumb caught the snitch before that, and he could easily turn defeat into victory, Albert explained. As the opponent of the Bulgarian team, the American team must have studied the weaknesses of the Bulgarian team. As long as Crumb is limited and the score is widened enough, even if Crumb can really catch the snitch, the Bulgarian team will eventually lose. Competition. Therefore, the U.S. team specifically targeted Crumb, not allowing him to concentrate on searching for the snitch. However, such tactics are actually not easy to implement. At this moment, there was a burst of cheers on the court again. The American team scored again. They were oppressing the Bulgarian team a little bit. The American team's tactics were actually successful, until a referee blew the whistle to suspend the game. Later, the game began to become unscrupulous. Although there has not been a situation where the two batsmen attacked each other with sticks, the frequency of the referee's whistle has obviously increased. Did the Bulgarian team deliberately? Naya asked, puzzledly looking at the suspended game. The Bulgarian team just wants to use reasonable fouls to break the opponent's suppression. It was Isbel, who had been silent since just now, who answered her. The key to winning. The Bulgarian team has always relied on the Seekers to catch the golden snitch to win the game. Their other players are relatively average, so they must adopt such a tactic, especially in this case. Albert can understand. After all, the tactical core of the Bulgarian team revolves around Crumb. As long as you don't get sent off, in order to win the game, doing certain things is tacitly accepted because the winner should not be blamed. I remember that someone in the school used to grab someone else's broom from behind. At that time, Albert couldn't help looking at someone, and the guy doing this kind of thing was right in front of them. Look, Crumb is about to catch the snitch, Katrina shouted, reminding the three guys who were chatting. The spectators were screaming and cheering on their respective seekers. Waves of red and green were set off on the court, and countless pairs of eyes were looking straight at the two figures that were swooping down. Crumb of the Bulgarian team is catching up behind Johnny of the United States team, speeding up a dive, like an athlete who jumped directly from the plane without a parachute. They are about to fall to the ground. Naya screamed in horror. At the last moment, Johnny slowed down because the snitch was too close to the ground. She was not sure that she would be able to dive and catch the snitch in that situation and ensure that she would not hit the ground. However, Crum, who dived with her, didn't mean to slow down and soon surpassed Jenny. With a bang, Crum fell heavily to the ground. Everyone thought that Crum would raise the broomstick at the last moment, and the scene before them was beyond their imagination. Could it be that Crum's Ronsky fake action made a mistake? Is he dead? Naya looked away in horror and leaned her head in Albert's arms. Don't worry, he shouldn't die. The wizard's life is very tough. Albert softly calmed Nia. In fact, this is where he always wanted to complain. He dived from a high altitude and hit the ground without breaking his neck. He just smashed his nose. It was incredible. Perhaps, the protective gear on the athletes was cursed to relieve the pressure of the impact. Otherwise, it would be hard to explain that Crum had just broken his nose. He didn't believe that the hooked nose could absorb the impact. Special effects. With the help of the doctor, Crum quickly regained consciousness. The talented seeker who was admired by countless people raised his right hand laboriously. The audience quickly noticed his movement 
and saw it from the gap between the fingers. The golden light from inside. Oh my god. Crumb caught the snitch and he caught the snitch. Bagman shouted. The Bulgarian team won. The final score flashes on the scoreboard. The United States. 90. Bulgaria. 170. The atmosphere on the scene suddenly stagnated. The voices of the audience became louder and louder, and finally burst out countless joyous shouts. As usual, the Bulgarian team rode a broomstick around the field, but it is not difficult to see that Crumb's situation is not very good. After the game, Albert did not leave in a hurry, but continued to sit in their seats and eat popcorn with Nia, chatting about what had just happened. Aren't you leaving? Lumiana asked while looking at Albert who was still sitting there eating. No hurry. Let others go first. Albert didn't want to crowd the stairs with others, especially among the many avid fans who lost money. God knows what they will do when their brains are hot. Then let's go first. Lumiana left with her grandfather. Why Crumb would fall to the ground in the end? Katrina is actually very curious about this, but she doesn't know much about Quidditch. Albert, who has served as a seeker, obviously has a better say. Probably the snitch was too close to the ground and he had only one chance again. So he didn't slow down? Albert speculated. Is that guy named Crumb really not afraid of breaking his neck? Naya muttered softly. Quidditch games are dangerous. Normal people will definitely die if they fall from that height. Actually, I am also curious why Crumb didn't break his neck. I think there should be some protective measures. Albert speculated. Don't you know? Katrina asked suspiciously. I remember you were also a seeker before. Before? Naya blinked curiously and asked, Why did you give up? Well, Quidditch training is too much trouble. I have a lot of work to do all day, and Gryffindor has a good seeker. So I gave up. Albert shrugged and motioned for them. Can go now. When descending the stairs, the four met many desperate fans of the U.S. team who had not yet recovered from the blow. However, what surprised Albert the most was that many fans of the U.S. team believed that the Bulgarian Viva was the main reason for their loss, and even caused some unpleasant quarrels. A lot of fans get their brains hot and can do everything, Alberta told Nia to stay away from the chaos over there, and the Ministry of Magic staff had already stopped it. I thought they would be more rational? Katrina murmured. They have been too depressive in the American magical world. They naturally have to vent after going abroad especially when they have just lost a large sum of money, and they are feeling aggrieved. Albert curled his lips, and it was not difficult to guess what happened. The cause of the conflict. Reason has never been matched by the United States. Free America. Shooting every day is not a joke. Albert never doubted that wizards would be imprisoned by the U.S. Ministry of Magic every few days. When the four left the gym and returned to the camp, it was already an hour later. Four cups of hot chocolate. Albert said to the house elf, and then sat down on the chair. If it weren't for Naya, they would probably use apparition to come back directly. The camp is too noisy, the tents are not soundproof at all, and the Bulgarian team's victory is celebrated everywhere outside. Some people don't seem to plan to sleep anymore. Katrina murmured as she listened to the noise outside. If the seeker can be brave, it's right for her to give up. It wouldn't be a good deal if she broke her neck. Albert didn't think it would be a problem for Jenny to slow down. Crumb's behavior was very risky, and he almost fell to death with luck. The house elf brought four cups of hot chocolate with milk. After drinking, go back and rest. If anyone can't sleep, I have medicine here to ensure a good night's sleep. Forget it, we don't need that stuff. Katrina took a sip of hot chocolate and returned to her room. Thank you, I had a great time today. After Naya stepped forward and gave Albert a hug, she also picked up a cup of hot chocolate and went back to rest. Let's go back and rest too, Albert said to Isabel. I remember you said that something would happen to the World Cup? Isabel asked suddenly. Well, after the game, it should be the trouble caused by the Death Eaters. However, we packed up and left as soon as we watched the finals. We should be able to avoid possible dangers. Albert had already had a solution. Good morning, Sirius. Where did you go? Lupin poked his head out of the kitchen, looking at Sirius who had just entered the tent, and asked questioningly, Why do you look unhappy? I just went to Ludo Bagman, and that guy only paid half of the gallon last night. Sirius didn't have the slightest affection for Bagman, who was trying to go wrong. 
When did you bet? Lupin looked at Sirius in shock. He didn't expect his old friend to be gambling secretly. This is not a good thing. I thought you would care more about how much I won. Sirius pulled a chair and sat down, putting his legs on the table, not knowing what he was thinking. Well, how much did you win? Lupin asked helplessly. Probably. A thousand gallons? Sirius said. How much? Lupin's eyes widened in disbelief. A thousand gallons? Sirius repeated in shock. Don't bet, just accept it when you see it. Lupin didn't care about the black smoke that was slowly floating in the pot and tried to persuade Sirius. He really couldn't understand why his old friend took the risk of gambling. What if he lost a thousand gallons? How many gallons would he bet on? Bagman didn't have enough gallon to pay me, so he suggested that I continue to bet. Sirius glanced at Lupin, whose face was slightly gloomy, and said casually, I have agreed. Anyway, those gallons are all it doesn't matter if I lose everything I earn, let alone I won't necessarily lose. Lupin was silent. He also knew that he was not qualified to preach to Sirius, and finally said, Don't be too greedy, just accept it when you see it. Then he turned back to the kitchen and continued to make breakfast. If I lose, I will lose? No, I won't lose. There was a weird smile on Sirius's face. He didn't think he would lose, and the money was not all his money. Half of it belonged to Albert. In fact, Sirius doesn't like gambling, but he met Albert yesterday, and the two reached a certain agreement in private. The good name is, everyone who has money makes money together. Well, they did make a lot of money, and the hapless Bagman lost a lot of gallons. However, Sirius did not sympathize with Bagman. If it weren't for Ludo Bagman to try to induce him to bet, Sirius would not necessarily agree to Albert. Well, this is a lame excuse. From Sirius's point of view, why doesn't Cannon, who has made a steady profit, doesn't make it? Not an idiot. Moreover, according to Albert's tone, Ludo Bagman is unreliable, otherwise Albert would not require him to recover at least half of Gallon after winning the bet. Good morning, Sirius. Harry appeared in the dining room clutching his yawn, smelling the burning smell in the air and said in surprise. It's rare to see Professor Lupin burn the rice. By the way, you were there just now. What to talk about? It's nothing, Harry. Sirius didn't want Harry to get into the gambling habit, and turned off the subject and said, Lupin and I have already planned to run a defense against the dark arts magazine called The Defense Guide. After preliminary discussions with Lupin, Sirius intends to accept Albert's proposal to start a magazine related to defense against the dark arts. Considering that Lupin once served as a professor of defense against the dark arts at Hogwarts, he has a natural advantage in the field of defense against the dark arts. Sirius has also been fighting dark wizards for most of his life, and he is considered a relatively good profession. In S. Working in a field that is good at and likes makes it easier for people to keep enthusiasm, put in more energy, and be more likely to succeed. Of course, it is not easy to open a magazine store. Lupin and Sirius have no experience in this area. Who will be the editor-in-chief? If you open a store rashly and enter areas you don't know about, you are likely to stumble, and it is not surprising that you will even lose a lot of money. Are there any magazines like Witch Weekly and Transfiguration today? Hermione asked Sirius curiously. Well, if there are only two of us, it will take about half a month. Sirius nodded. There will be some content related to the defense against the dark magic. In this regard, Remus should be better at it. He used to be black, professor of magical defense, and I can also help him find a way. Harry and Hermione looked at each other. To be honest, they are not very optimistic about Sirius opening magazines and newspapers, let alone becoming editor-in-chief. What does Professor Lupin think? Hermione asked Professor Lupin, who was busy in the kitchen. I think the probability of losing money is relatively high. Knowing defense against the dark arts and launching defense against the dark arts magazines are two different things. Lupin is not as optimistic as Sirius. They do not have rich management experience and are likely to mess things up. Speaking of opening a store, I still admire Albert. He started paying for Fred and George to open a store very early on. Ron sat next to Harry with a yawn. From the beginning to the present, I don't know how many gallons have already invested in it, and I think their shop will sell well. Perhaps, 
He has already fortune-telling, Harry said without hesitation, serious. If you want to open a shop, you can go to Albert for divination. Harry, there are limits to divination. Hermione disagreed with Harry's view. Are you really planning to open a weekly magazine? Lupin brought the food from the kitchen and asked, looking at Black who was thinking seriously. Canon one. Even if he loses in the end, I don't feel distressed. This is actually one of the reasons Sirius agreed to help Albert. He needs to find an excuse to persuade Remus to help start a miscellaneous weekly observation. Otherwise, he will never agree, and a windfall is the best excuse to be speechless. Losing money? I think you can ask Albert for help. As long as the price is right, he will definitely provide help, Ron suggested. According to him, Fred and George have very clear ideas and plans for opening a store, and most of these are Albert's points. Moreover, Albert writes articles to magazines brilliantly, and he clearly knows better than them how to summarize the contents of a magazine. If Albert can provide them with many constructive suggestions. However, how to persuade Albert to help is actually more difficult. If you want Albert to contribute, he must naturally give the other party enough benefits. However, Garen Albert obviously won't see it. So what should he use to convince him? Finally, Ron's remarks woke up Sirius. His own industry is naturally different from others' industries. If Sirius can get Albert into the partnership, the other party will naturally not just watch the shops move across the shops. A hand of them. And Sirius's purpose is just to find a job for Lupin. As long as he doesn't lose money, Sirius can accept it. After watching the Quidditch match for several days, Albert found that the Quidditch World Cup was not as interesting as he thought. Especially after the excitement of the previous few days, the original novelty began to fade, and even Naya's curiosity about the wizard's camp was greatly weakened, and she didn't even go out to wander at night. Instead, she was facing Isabel, and Waleria and Catherine are interested in the cosmetic medicines they studied. Women always care about their looks, just like men always like beautiful women. It's almost time. Albert glanced at the open pocket watch, put down the newspaper, and prepared to go to Black, not forgetting to tell the house elves to watch Naya before leaving. Sirius's tent is in the camp next door. It's about ten minutes walk away. This is actually not that far. After all, the Quidditch World Cup Stadium can accommodate 100,000 people, which means that there will be at least 10,000 tents divided. It is normal to have several camping areas. If it were not for the magical tents of wizards, Albert wondered whether this land could accommodate so many wizards without being noticed by muggle satellites. Compared with the night, the camp during the day is very deserted. Many wizards are sleeping to make up for their sleep. Of course, some wizards are packing their tents and preparing to leave. There are many wizards who only watch a game. After all, Quidditch tickets are not cheap. Albert, here, here, as Albert walked through the camp, he found his roommate Lee Jordan was desperately waving at him, and beside him stood a black wizard who looked a lot like him. He seemed to hear his son's shout, no talk to the man next to him, but turn his head and look at Lee Jordan's line of sight. When did you arrive? By the way, this is my father. Lee Jordan enthusiastically introduced his father to Albert. Oh, dear Ludo, let me think about the stakes for a while, and I'll look for you later, okay? Mr. Lee cast an apologetic expression at Bagman, then smiled and went forward to talk to Albert say hello. You are Albert. I often hear Jordan mention you. Originally, I wanted to invite you to watch a football game. Bagman couldn't help but frowned, but he looked at the young man in front of him curiously. He always felt that the other person was a bit familiar. After hearing the person next to him say Albert's name, he remembered who the other person was. Albert Anderson. The most talented wizard of the century? Bagman said in an exaggerated tone. Hello, Mr. Bagman. Albert said in surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. Do you know? Mr. Lee asked curiously. Mr. Bagman is the commentator of the Quidditch World Cup. Albert explained. Mr. Anderson is now a big celebrity. He has won two international awards in one month. How about, do you want to place a bet on the game? Ireland has a great chance of winning this year, Bagman said excitedly. Okay, Ludo, don't teach bad kids, let's talk about the stakes later. Mr. Lee interrupted in front of Bagman, Albert, come in and sit for a while, by the way, try my latest tricks. Arriving tea. Well, see you later, Bagman frowned, 
turned and walked away. Dad said Bagman is very fond of gambling and always likes to pull people around a bet. Lee Jordan warmly invited Albert into the tent and poured him a cup of hot tea with a silver pot. Albert glanced at the fresh mint in the cup and took a sip. The pot was filled with green tea, which tasted good. If you can win money, who doesn't like gambling? Albert put down his teacup and said meaningfully. However, I heard people say that Bagman lost a lot of money. How much did you squeeze? Lee Jordan asked straightforwardly. No. Albert noticed that Lee Jordan's father was looking at him and said, However, Mr. Bagman is right. Ireland's winning rate is not small, and it is very hopeful to win this Quidditch. World Cup champion. That's great. The three talked about the ball game for a while, and Albert left. Lee Jordan's father looked at the bag of galleons on the table and said to his son, Your friend is very unusual. Of course it's not ordinary. That's a genius who won two international awards in a month. He won more prizes than many people have earned in a few years. Lee Jordan smiled and rubbed his hands and asked, Dad, you how much you intend to suppress? This is a trade that will make a profit without losing money. Take him the same amount. I guess that 80% of your friend doesn't just ask us to bet. Lee Jordan's father naturally knew that he couldn't stand up to one person, and he was going to look for other hapless guys. If you really make Bagman bald, you won't be able to get the money back then. Treasure your relationship. It is not easy to find good friends. After Albert left a bag of galleons, Lee Jordan's father no longer doubted Albert's judgment. Albert did find a few acquaintances who were willing to help bets. As for making the bet personally, it was too eye-catching. Adhering to the principle of making money together, many reliable acquaintances helped, and the interest relationship was sometimes particularly reliable. After greeting many acquaintances along the way, Albert finally came outside Sirius's tent. Hermione and Lupin were setting up a grill, and Harry and Ron were helping them. However, they are more often unhelpful. Harry, you and Ron will get some water back. Sirius handed the bucket to Harry and Ron. See you later. Harry greeted Albert and left with Ron carrying the bucket. Let's go inside and talk about magazines and publications. Sirius embraced Albert's shoulder enthusiastically and led him into the tent. Hermione looked at the two entering the tent suspiciously, thinking that they seemed to have something private to discuss, so she didn't want to disturb them either. Sirius's tent is very luxurious, but it has a stale atmosphere. It seems that it has been a while. As soon as Albert sat down, Sirius put a bag of gold coins in front of him. You're right, Bagman is really unreliable. He only gave me half of Galleon. Sirius crossed his hands and said to Albert. The other half continues to bet, but this time Bagman learns to be smart. Yes, the odds are not high. Albert took the money bag and kindly reminded. You can go to other dealers to bet. Don't keep staring at Bagman alone. If he owes a debt, he will definitely go wrong. You make sense, but I haven't found any other dealers yet. Sirius was also worried that Bagman would suddenly fall back. If you really owe a debt, you will definitely do so. Many wizards like to gamble. Albert said without hesitation, you can always find it. By the way, are you interested in investing in magazine publications? We plan to start a defense against the Dark Arts magazine publication, according to your suggestion. Remus is the editor-in-chief. You know, he used to be a defense against the dark arts professor. You shouldn't be short of money? Albert's expression was a bit weird, and he didn't seem to understand why Sirius was looking for his own investment. To tell you, I started a magazine and publication just to find a job for Remus. You should also know that his werewolf status is difficult to find a decent job in the magical world. Sirius sighed. Of course, we you don't need to pay how many galleons just occasionally help with some ideas, and you don't usually need your help. I can also give you three-tenths of the shares. If you really lose money in the end, I can use the original price of galleons. Buy back the shares in your hand. Albert thinks that black is more like a decision on this matter with a hot brain, but the conditions given by the other party are very sincere. I don't seem to have a reason to refuse. Albert thought for a moment and smiled. As long as nothing goes wrong, the defense against the dark arts field has indeed been selling well in recent years. As long as you have a firm foothold in the past few years, you won't worry about making money. No money. When Sirius heard Albert's promise, 
he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. The conditions he gave were quite favorable. However, considering Albert's idea of making money together, and the other party helped him win such a large sum of galleons, Sirius felt that he should be more generous. Albert is not short of money at all, and this time he doesn't know how much he won in the gambling. Albert can find himself, and naturally he can find others to help bet, and no one knows that he did that. But the reason that made Sirius determined to get him into the group is that Albert is a very suitable friend to make friends. It is not difficult to see this with the attitude of friends. Of course, Albert also helped him to settle the trouble, and Sirius saw the former figures of the robbers from the Albert Quartet, but they are much better than the former robbers, and they are not like they used to be. He and James are so strong and bully. Ever since Sirius learned that Albert had spent money to help two friends open a store to fulfill his wish, he was ashamed of who he was and wanted to help Remus find a decent job, making his life so difficult. If the former self could be like Albert, maybe the bad things of the year would not happen. Although Sirius hated Peter, he also realized that they might have caused the tragedy of the year. So naive. He recalled more than once that if he and James had not invited Peter to join the Order of the Phoenix, maybe Peter would not have been forced to join the Death Eaters. But there is no ever, and there is no if. James and Lily died, and he was imprisoned for more than ten years. Peter took refuge in Voldemort again, threatening Harry's safety. The two sides are already endless enemies. Sirius, the barbecue is ready. Hermione's voice came from outside, and Sirius, who had been immersed in his thoughts, suddenly recovered and gave Albert an apologetic smile. In two days, I will study other magazines and publications together with Remus. First, we will set a simple framework. Then we will have a chat. By the way, the name of the magazine publication is temporarily called Guide to Defense. If you can think of it a better name would be fine. Sirius invited Albert out for barbecue. By the way, what is the slogan of the magazine? Albert asked suddenly. The slogan of the magazine? Sirius was a little dazed. Obviously, he didn't understand the meaning of the words. The magazine's slogan of Transfiguration Today is to change lives. Albert reminded, to put it bluntly, it is the positioning of this magazine. What do you think is appropriate? Sirius thought it was the right thing to find Albert. Neither he nor Lu Ping had a clear idea about starting a magazine, which is why Lu Ping thought they would lose money. Stay away from danger and protect yourself, Albert said with a smile. Teach everyone how to stay away from danger and how to use magic to protect yourself. You can start with spells, plants, and dark creatures, just like teaching students how to defend against dark magic in class. Did you convince him? Lupin listened to Albert's analysis and looked at Sirius in surprise. Are you really going to start a magazine publication? Hermione was also surprised. Hermione can also help, publish some papers and magazines, and even learn from other journals, solicit relevant papers from all Hogwarts students, and give everyone a chance to be famous. I think many people will be willing to publish defense against the dark arts and magazines. Thesis. Is it really possible? Hermione handed Albert a kebab. As long as the quality is not too bad, it is all right. Transfiguration today, innovation of the curse, and master of practical potions are all like this. Albert has written many papers, so he is very clear about these. It always feels not as simple as you said. Harry swallowed the food in his mouth and muttered softly, Have you seen the opposite? Albert asked suddenly, What's that? Everyone looked at each other. Obviously they didn't know that there was this thing the wizarding newspaper published by Xenophirius? Lovegood. Albert looked at Ron and said, Perhaps, you know who Lovegood is? Lovegood is near my house. Ron nodded and said, However, we have nothing to do with them. How about that publication? Hermione asked curiously. A word is difficult, Albert said with a weird expression. You can get a copy and you will find that wizard publications are not as difficult as you think. As long as they contain useful content for wizards, people will be willing to buy them. In the entire British magical world, the defense against the dark arts is a mess. Even foreign students know that the defense against the dark arts at Hogwarts is notoriously bad, thanks to the curse at Hogwarts. Who knows who the defense against the dark arts professor will be next semester? Alastair Moody, a retired Auror. He is an old friend of Dumbledore. 
Lupin noticed that everyone was looking at him and quickly explained, I heard from Dumbledore, and wrote a letter to Moody, telling him about the defense against the dark arts class, Dumbledore's old friend? Albert said in a strange tone, Is there anything wrong? That curse is not a joke. Albert's face was even more weird. Professor Dumbledore really has the heart to let his old friends take risks. Professor Lupin, maybe you should write to that Professor Moody. Telling him about the curse and early resignation may help him escape. Does the curse really exist? It lasted for 50 years. Do you think it was a coincidence? Albert really couldn't understand the thinking of these people. Are they reluctant to believe it? Or are they really stupid? Sorry, Bagman, but I do have something to leave today. Sirius pretended to say helplessly, You can clear up the remaining canon for me first. Are you really not staying to watch the Quidditch World Cup final? Bagman exaggeratedly said as if he had heard some incredible news. This is the World Cup final. You just left? Harry didn't know there would be what a disappointment. The UK has missed the trophy for 30 years. This is a very rare opportunity. No, I have to go. Sirius glanced at Lupin, who was packing his things, and shook his head. However, Harry will stay and watch the final. The Weasley family will come to see the Quidditch World Cup final today. I have asked Arthur to take care of those children. Bagman was still a little unwilling to let Sirius leave like this. The guy in front of him had won a lot of galleon where he hadn't lost once. Hateful. Look, Arthur is here, Sirius said, pointing his finger somewhere. Bagman looked in the direction of Sirius's fingers and saw the red hair with Weasley's logo. Well, do you want to keep betting? The probability of Ireland winning this year is very high. Bagman saw that the change in the subject was useless, so he changed his method. Little Agatha Timms thinks the final. It will last for a week, and she also weighs half of the stock in the eel farm. I agree with you very much and I believe that Ireland will win, but I don't think the game will last that long. Bulgaria's crumb is a great seeker. It's hard to imagine that he won't be able to catch the snitch in a week. Sirius talked with Bagman and thought that Sirius was once a good Quidditch player. To be honest, I think Crum is better than Lindsay and is more likely to catch the snitch to end the game. But Bulgaria can easily be opened up by Ireland in terms of scoring. The gap between the players on both sides is obvious. So far, Bulgaria has always relied on Crum to catch the golden snitch to win. Once the score is exceeded 150 points, there is no chance of winning. What you said makes sense. Do you want to continue to bet? Bagman said with a smile on his face. If you bet on Ireland to win, but Victor Crum will catch the golden snitch, I can give you very good odds. Don't look at me that way. I just want to beat you once, and it's really frustrating to lose all the time. Well, then I'll add a little more bet. I think the Irish team will score first, and after the game, the difference between the two sides will not exceed 30 points. Sirius seemed to be interested and asked Bagman very confidently. Adding up four points, what odds do you plan to give me? How about this number? Bagman made an eight gesture. All right, I bet on 500 gallons. Sirius nodded in agreement. But you have to settle the remaining gold coins with me first. I thought you were very confident, but this is my highest odds, a rare opportunity. Bagman's eyes widened, as if he could not believe what he heard. It's because the probability of losing the gambling is so high that I dare not press it all up. Sirius stared at Bagman, letting him stop. Well, you can settle yesterday's money first. Bagman reluctantly paid out the money to settle the remaining money, and then opened a parchment note to Sirius, then turned around and greeted Arthur, who was coming over here. He didn't see Sirius's micro-edge at all. The corners of the mouth evoked. Of course, they expected that Bagman might be reluctant to pay back the money. So they made the exaggerated bet just now and took back the remaining part with Garen, so that Bagman would not end up wronging the bill. In order to make sure that Bagman did not use Leprechaun's gold coins to dismiss himself, Sirius opened the purse and checked the gold coins. Although he felt that Bagman should not dare to do that, there were some things he had to guard against. However, Sirius naturally has an easier way to deal with it. Following Albert's suggestion, he deliberately let Ludo Bagman see that he had hired a goblin to handle the gambling gold coins and revealed that he was buying it in Diagon Alley. The willingness of renting a shop to open a shop. Arthur, Harry and Hermione will take care of you. 
Sirius stepped forward to shake hands with Mr. Weasley after Bagman had greeted Arthur. Don't worry, I will take care of the children, Arthur promised. Does anyone want to place a bet on the game? Bagman asked everyone with a smile on his face. Everyone looked at each other. Sirius has won a lot of cannon for me. He even bet me that Ireland will win the game and score first, but Victor Crumb will catch the golden snitch, and after the game, both sides the score will not exceed 30 points. Bagman had to use Sirius's deeds to attract everyone. I gave a very high odds. Does anyone want to follow? Sirius has never lost. He earned thousands of gallons from me. Really? Fred and George looked at Sirius together. Well, I have always bet on who will win. The odds are not high, but I did win some money, Sirius said honestly. Ireland has a high probability of winning this year, and Bagman thinks so too. What are the odds? George asked curiously. This number? Sirius said eight. We have fifty gallons, just like Sirius. After Fred and George looked at each other, they immediately took out a bag of gallons from their pockets. The bag of gallons contained Ron and Ginny's. Children, gambling is not a good habit, Arthur Weasley said in a low voice, and this is almost all your savings. Arthur is right. Gambling is really not a good habit. If you want to make money, you can invest in the publication of the Defense Against the Dark Arts magazine I started. Sirius couldn't bear Fred and George falling out when he thought of Albert. Lee, he said, don't worry about the newspapers losing money. Albert is very optimistic about the branch publication and even invested a large sum of gallons, accounting for nearly one-third of the share. Don't spoil Sirius. Bagman eagerly wrote the Weasley's list, then turned to ask, Arthur, do you want to place a bet? Well, then I'll take out a gallon. Bet on Ireland to win. Mr. Weasley hesitated for a moment and finally took out a gallon from his pocket. In fact, the wizard is just in a hurry and does not want to gamble with his children. However, their tickets were obtained with Bagman's help, so they had to give the other side some face. Does anyone else want to gamble? Bagman looked at Harry, who seemed to be planning to pay for Garen. Um, if Sirius wants to open a magazine publication, I am willing to help with some money. Harry knew why Sirius started the magazine publication, so he used all the cannon he originally planned to bet on to invest in Sirius magazine, publications, and Harry plans to publish a hundred gallons. Since Albert is even optimistic about Sirius's magazines and publications, he should not lose money and go bankrupt. Don't listen to Blake's nonsense. That guy is not short of money at all. The Garen one from me is enough for him to run several magazines and publications. Bagman curled his lips, but he was satisfied with the results and gave him a favor. After reading the invoice with George, Reed turned and left. Albert seems to be with his girlfriend to watch the football game. Fred asked Sirius, did you meet him? Albert is in the camp next door. If you have time, you can help me to pass the parchment to him, so that Albert can take the time to see what needs to be revised. After that, Sirius gave a few parchments to him. Fred, the above is their preliminary design for the magazine. If the speed is fast enough, it may be possible to produce the first edition of the Guide to Defense magazine publication before the start of school. By the way, Bagman, Sirius stopped Ludo Bagman, who was about to leave, and asked, If I want to advertise in the Quidditch finals, is there still time? This should be added, but the advertising fee for the World Cup finals may not be cheap. Bagman frowned and asked, Hasn't your magazine publications been released yet? Are you starting to advertise now? The content of the magazine has probably been finalized. It doesn't take too long, and it's only the 22nd. There are still a few days before September. Even if you can't get the machine in the end, you can go to Lovegood to borrow him. Machine, Sirius said with a smile. As long as I can help to make this happen, I'm willing to pay some consulting service fees. With that, Sirius took out ten gallons from the bag and put them in Bagman's hand. Well, I'll help you ask, but I don't guarantee that it will be added. Bagman immediately agreed to help. This matter will not waste his time. It seemed weird to Bagman, however. What he didn't know was that it was Albert's idea to advertise in the World Cup final. In Albert's view, the World Cup advertisement is very suitable for quickly gaining fame. After the game, the dark mark is undoubtedly the best publicity, a magazine and newspaper to teach everyone how to protect themselves. Panic in the magic world. 
The time comes out, and it will definitely attract everyone's attention. As long as the insecure residents make sure that the content of the magazine is valid, they will definitely be happy to order, and there will be no shortage of money at that time. Although it would take a lot of Garen at first, Sirius was not worried, because the gold coins he got from Bagman were enough for them to spend a long time. Moreover, Sirius didn't have a good way to gain fame quickly, so he chose to believe in Albert's judgments and plans. Anyway, Garen won in vain, and it really doesn't hurt to spend it. What's more, Sirius knew that he had to put enough trust in Albert before the other party would help him make plans for magazines and publications. What's the matter with the newspapers? Ginny looked at Sirius who had left with Bagman, wondering Ron. Sirius intends to open magazines and newspapers related to defense against the dark arts. Ron explained. It is said that Albert made the proposal. Harry added. Albert always complains that the defense against the dark arts in the British magical world is terrible. Even foreign students know about it. Fred and George are not surprised. They all know that Albert has special interests, such as defense against the dark arts. Field. Okay, kids, let's go to the camp and set up the tent. Mr. Weasley greeted everyone to leave with him. Remus, I will take them there first. Well, goodbye Arthur. Goodbye Harry. Hermione and Ron, Lupin waved his wand and quickly put the tent into his backpack, and then stood here waiting for Sirius to get things done and come and meet. Go home together. Goodbye, Professor Lupin. Harry left with Mr. Weasley. You just made a bet like that? Ron, who had been silent, suddenly asked Fred and George. Ron had to care about it. No way, the gallon that Fred and George bet on has part of him. If he loses, he will really become a pauper. The probability is very high. Albert also thinks that Ireland will win the championship. Fred and George both felt that Sirius's ability to win a large gallon from Bagman had something to do with Albert, especially Sirius who made Albert. They confirmed this when they invested in magazines and newspapers. After all, the two had helped Albert before and were no strangers to this kind of operation. Don't chat over there. Come and help set up the tent. Mr. Weasley called the three of them to help set up the tent. It took nearly half an hour for before they finally got to Mr. Weasley. The tent was set up without help. We need some water, and we also need to pick up some wood for fuel. Mr. Weasley said to everyone, The division of labor is done. Dad, we have to go to Albert, and we have a stove. So there is no need to use wood to make a fire. After the Weasley brothers dropped their backpacks, they slipped away with the parchment given by Sirius. When they see Albert's tent, they will be surprised. Ron muttered quietly. That guy is weird everywhere. And there are strange house elves helping to prepare food. House elf? Ginny asked in confusion. As far as she knew, Albert was a muggle wizard. Albert must have hired him with money. Hermione said without hesitation. Hermione, no one would spend money to hire house elves. Ron felt that Hermione didn't understand the situation at all. Perhaps Albert is an exception, Hermione said stubbornly. He's very good to people. Maybe, that guy is a weird person. Ron didn't bother to discuss this with Hermione. If Mr. Anderson really hires a house elf, then you'd better remind him to be safe, so as not to trouble him with the Magical Creatures Management and Control Department of the Ministry of Magic. Mr. Weasley, can't the wizard hire house elves? Hermione asked, frowning. This... Mr. Weasley's expression was a bit embarrassed, as if he was afraid of others hearing it and lowered his voice. There is almost no such precedent in the magic world, because no wizard is willing to waste Garen hiring them. Of course, as long as they are not known, don't get into big trouble. It's actually not a big problem either. Merlin's beard. You can't find it here. Fred looked around the humble environment in the tent and looked at his friend questioningly. Don't tell me. You live here in the past few days? Don't be silly, Fred. Albert likes to enjoy life more than you. How could you possibly sleep here? George thought Fred's words sounded silly and handed Albert the parchment that Sirius asked them to pass on. By the way, brought the topic back to the reason why the two came to find Albert. Did you ask Sirius to help place a bet? When George saw that Albert was looking at the parchment carefully, he had no intention of answering and he knew that the other party had acquiesced. There are some things, just know in your heart, there is no need to clarify them. George continued, We bet on Ludo Bagman. 
like black. We bet that the Irish team will win the game and score first, but Victor Crum will catch the golden snitch. Moreover, after the game, the scores of both sides will not exceed 30 points. Fred grabbed George's words and continued. How many times? What? Fred didn't react for a moment. Eight times, George said immediately. Ludo Bagman has lost a lot of Garen recently. Albert took out his pin from his pocket and began to make comments on the parchment and said without looking up, he is looking for the goblin in Gringotts. We borrowed a large amount of cannon, and it is estimated that we will not pay it back. You mean? George frowned deeply, apparently understanding what Albert meant. Is he going to run the bill? No wonder I thought his reaction was a little strange. The fairies won't let Bagman fall back. Fred shook his head. They are not house elves. No, you didn't understand Albert's meaning. George raised his hand and interrupted. He meant that Bagman might use our Garen. Of course, there is also the fairy Garen. Can you talk normally? Fred felt that he couldn't keep up with the thinking patterns of the two. He and George were obviously twins. Why could George understand, but he didn't? The Irish team's mascot is the leprechaun. They like to throw magic gold coins on the court after the performance. Albert said again, The leprechaun's gold coins do look a lot like Garen. Do you think Bagman might fool us with the leprechaun gold coins? George frowned and considered a solution. As long as we check immediately after receiving the gold coins, we should not be easily fooled by Bagman. Although Fred has never seen the gold coins of the leprechaun, he believes that Bagman can't be vigilant. Fool them. Lee Jordan's tent is nearby. You will drop by to find him later and tell him about this. Albert took a sip from his teacup and exhorted, You haven't seen him yet. Family, it seems that you have a rich harvest. George couldn't help but sigh Albert's means of making money. However, Bagman also deserves it. After learning from Albert that Bagman would fool himself with fake gold coins, Fred and George's last sympathy for Bagman disappeared. His guy is a very good bet and has lost too much gallon. The fairies are destined to pay off the debt. In the end, he will probably choose to run, Albert reminded. If you want to get the money, it has to be before he has any money, otherwise you don't want to get a gnat from Bagman. It seems that the situation is worse than we thought, George murmured. I will talk to Lee Jordan about this. So, see you tonight. Before leaving the tent, Fred suddenly turned around and asked, By the way, you seem to be very optimistic about the magazine publication Black started? Because people need it, Albert said with a smile. After the Weasley brothers left, Albert continued to flip through the parchment in his hand. For a moment, he seemed to think of something. He called the house elf bit over, took out a glass bottle from the deformed lizard skin bag and handed it to the house elf. The glass bottle was filled with black beads. Albert lowered his voice and told the house elf what to do tonight. Bit looked uneasily at the glass bottle in his hand, but nodded his head to indicate that he would finish. Oh, yes, after watching the game tonight, we will leave here immediately. There is no need to clean up the tent and just throw it here. Then you can just carry the suitcase and leave, and you have your hands. That thing is a gift left to the troubled black wizards. Remember to spread it out, so that no one will doubt us. I know the master. The house elf bitter bowed slightly and went back to make preparations before leaving. Albert put away the revised parchment and returned it to the box, and told Catherine and Valeria about leaving overnight tonight. As for whether the two will leave with them, it is not something he can decide. After watching the game, shall we go home? Naya took Albert's hand and followed the crowd to walk in the forest. They had walked this road several times, and they knew the environment quite well. How about the third place, don't you watch it? Katrina knew that Albert had tickets for the third place, and the price of first-class tickets was not cheap. I have already sold the tickets for the third place. Albert looked at the crowd in front of him and said calmly, After tonight, there will probably be martial law. It seems that the situation is really bad. How did you know that something was going to happen tonight? Valeria was very curious about the news that Albert got from there. Don't you know that he is a prophet? Katrina muttered softly. Prophet? The two looked at Albert. Are you sure it's not a bad divination? After the silence of the short station, Catherine suddenly asked, Did you cheat by prophecy during the potions championship? Do you think I need to cheat? 
Albert asked rhetorically. Prophecy is really unreasonable. Valeria looked at Albert with fiery eyes. No wonder Albert always guessed that the team would win. This time the Quidditch World Cup, they won a lot of money by betting. Although they have to divide a part of someone, the gold coins they earned are still considerable. What did you predict? Catherine asked. The flame, the dark wizard, and the dark mark, Albert said in a low voice. What is the dark mark? Valeria and Catherine didn't understand Voldemort's mark. In fact, today's young wizards don't know much about the dark mark. No way. Compared with the first Dark Lord Gellert Grindelwald, Voldemort's reputation spread only in Europe, and most of his followers stay in the United Kingdom, unlike Grindelwald who has a wide range of supporters. Naturally, no one told Catherine and Valeria not to call Voldemort's name directly, let alone tell them what the Dark Mark is. I suggest you read the Daily Prophet tomorrow morning. Albert made a hushed gesture, beckoning them not to talk about this topic here. Can't be mentioned? British wizards are very taboo to talk about this. You will know it by reading the newspaper tomorrow. After going to the top floor to separate, Albert several people entered the familiar box and found that there were already many acquaintances here. Harry, Hermione, and Weasley are all in the same box at the same time. Fred and George waved to Albert vigorously. Harry was chatting with a house elf. Hermione didn't know why. Looks very angry. In the corner of the back row, there is a house elf who seems to be occupying a place for the owner. But Albert knows that Old Crouch will not be watching the finals, because the empty seat is actually for Little Crouch. To be honest, Albert really wanted to sneak off the invisible cloak from the opponent and give the audience in the box an unexpected surprise. He was convinced that it would be more sensational than anyone who won the Quidditch World Cup, and that fudge would definitely do it. Excitedly asked the Dementor to give Little Crouch a kiss. However, it is not the time yet. Little Crouch is still useful. Albert finally resisted it. If the people are lost, the panel task will not be able to be squeezed out later. What's the matter? Isabel noticed Albert's mood changes. Nothing. Albert shook his head. She didn't think it was nothing. Following Albert's sight just now, looking at the empty seat next to the house elf, she couldn't help frowning and thinking. But Isabel didn't intend to go further and started talking to Katrina after sitting down. At this time, the box began to enter again, and Minister of Magic Fudge led the Minister of Bulgaria into the room. The two reached out their hands and gestured to each other, speaking to each other in a language that the other did not understand. Well, at least Fudge does not understand Bulgarian, and the Bulgarian minister may not understand English. Do not use English to communicate with Fudge. 80% of them use Fudge for fun. Coming behind the two of them was the Malfoys, and Lucius Malfoy seemed to have some unpleasant exchanges with the Weasleys. At least, after a few short chats, Mr. Weasley's expression was not natural. The Bulgarian minister who was sitting in the front row was not having fun with Fudge and chatted with Albert who was sitting behind them. The expressions of the people in the box were weird, and Fudge was no exception, because he discovered that Albert was actually chatting with each other in a very smooth Bulgarian, and the two seemed to know each other and looked very familiar. Having said that, does this guy have such a wide range of friends? Do you even know the Bulgarian Minister of Magic? Those who didn't know thought you were pure blood. Fudge suddenly understood why the British youth representative of Wiesengamma turned into that last time. I should have asked you to translate for me just now. This sort of thing is usually handled by Barty Crouch. You should know Barty. I have met several times. Albert looked at the new friend before him again and asked in fluent Bulgarian. Mr. Abalonsk should understand English. Understand. But I think it's more fun. The Bulgarian minister shrugged his shoulders without being embarrassed at all. Moreover, that guy thought I didn't understand English, so he didn't have much scruples when speaking. By the way, you who do you think will win the championship tonight? It's hard to say, but Ireland has a greater advantage. The Bulgarian team's championship point is on Crum. If Crum cannot catch the golden snitch before the gap between the scores of the two sides is completely opened, he will lose the chance to win the championship. Albert told the truth. Both parties should be very clear about this, and in the end it depends on who is more prepared and who has better luck. You're right. The Bulgarian minister is naturally aware of the disadvantages of the Bulgarian team, but he does not think that the Bulgarian team has no hope of winning. The game kicked off with Ludo's shouts. 
After the Bulgarian team's mascot Viva entered the field, many men on the field still suffered community deaths. Harry and Ron had been prepared for it. When dancing, they closed their eyes and missed the move, but Fred and George were not so lucky. Even Percy was also shot. For this reason, Draco Malfoy, who was sitting behind them, pointed at them, his face full of schadenfreude. The mascots of the Irish team are more popular with everyone. The group of dwarfs wearing red vests and beards skimmed above their heads and combined into various fireworks. In the end, they formed a huge, shining clover. Hovering over the audience's head and sprinkling a large amount of gold coins, the audience below are all clamoring for it. Don't they know that these gold coins will disappear? Naya looked at the few dwarf gold coins in her hand, and she didn't understand the audience's mentality. Moreover, after the gold coins rained in the sky, some people would think that the gold coins were real. Many people don't know. When Albert was speaking, he caught a glimpse of a hand that appeared out of nowhere and was taking the wand from Harry's pocket, and the house elf who had taken care of Little Crouch had been holding it with his hand. Face. At this moment, the panel task was triggered. Although I didn't give much experience, it still made Albert happily raise the corners of his mouth. This was a good start. Little Crouch, who had just gotten the wand, hadn't recovered from his excitement, shuddered suddenly, and could not help looking around. He just felt an inexplicable malice. Who is it? Little Crouch looked around, but didn't find the person who disturbed him. Even if some people know the fakes, they still collect them enthusiastically. Everyone cares more about the lively atmosphere. It is indeed the World Cup. The two national teams have shown great strength. Without testing each other, the game went into intense heat. Especially the Irish team. They continued the American tactics, while suppressing Crum, are quickly grabbing points from the Bulgarian team. As expected, the Irish team took the lead in scoring. The Irish fans on the court cheered frantically for the first goal. The game is still going on. The Irish team's suppression tactics are better than that of the U.S. team, which forces Crum to use Ronsky's fake moves to buy time for himself. This time, he didn't fall to the ground, but Lin Chi, his opponent, was sturdy, giving him the opportunity to find the golden snitch without any interference. I think they are fighting for their lives, so don't they really worry about breaking their neck? Naya is still a little uncomfortable seeing such a scene. If it is an ordinary person, she must have fallen to death. If you fall to death, you can only admit that you are unlucky. Under the voice of the Irish team supporters and the doctor's help, Lin Chi stood up again, mounted his firebolt, and returned to the court. However, it is not difficult for Albert to see that Lin Chi is in very bad condition. The close contact with the ground just now caused him serious damage. The Irish team obviously realized this and accelerated the offensive against the Bulgarian team. The skill and ingenious cooperation quickly enabled them to quickly grab a large number of points from the Bulgarian team. Perhaps the Irish team did not expect Lin Chi to catch the snitch from the beginning. After the score was further opened up, the pressure on the Bulgarian players became very heavy, especially after the score increased to 100 points, they had to adopt the same method of dealing with the US team again and violently broke the game, giving Crum a chance to catch the golden snitch. Chance. The game began to become unscrupulous. The degree of fierceness and intensity has never been seen before by any audience. The batsmen on both sides were merciless, especially the Bulgarian batsmen. They launched a vicious wave of the stick in their hands. They didn't care whether they hit the ball or a person at all. They just swaggered desperately. Confusion. Their seekers were equally fierce. In order to prevent the opponent from scoring, they rushed directly to the pursuit hand holding the ghost ball and almost fell the girl off the broom. The Vivas who had acted as spectators also began to help create chaos, fighting with the Irish dwarfs, and even in order to distract the referee, Aviva lighted the referee's broom tail in the confusion. In the chaos, Crum tried to repeat the same trick and break free from his opponent's suppression. However, the two Irish seekers are still keeping an eye on Crum constantly using the roaming ball to cause trouble for him. Free throws, free throws, or free throws. The Bulgarian team paid the price for their tactics. They lost a lot of points, but Crum failed to catch the snitch in a short time. He was injured because of the roaming ball, and the expression on his face was even more gloomy. In S. Bulgaria lost. 
Albert looked at the scoreboard and said softly, because Ireland has led the Bulgarian team by 170 points. However, many spectators did not notice this. Their eyes were staring at the fierce stadium, and then they continued to protest with dissatisfaction, but they did not realize that the Irish team had actually won. Crum was clearly aware of this. They lost, and they still failed miserably. Therefore, when he saw the Irish seeker chasing the snitch, he did not hesitate to speed up to chase it. Crum did not step forward to hinder the opponent from catching the golden snitch, but to end the game. He knew he had to do this, made the Bulgarian team a decent end. This is the only thing he can do now. Thing. After all, a slight difference in scores will make fans who support them feel that the Bulgarian team is just out of luck. If you get beaten up and down, it will seriously hit the self-confidence of teammates and fans. Both of them are speeding up and diving to chase the snitch. This time, Crum didn't hit the ground like last time, but Lin Chi, who was accelerating with him, hit the ground for the second time. However, Crum, who caught the golden snitch, did not smile on his face. Instead, his face became more gloomy. He personally made the Bulgarian team lose the game. A very brave person, Naya commented. Crum is really brave. He let the Bulgarian team lose the game decently. Albert agreed with Naya's words. Yes, our young man played bravely. The Bulgarian minister glanced at Fudge's face and said in fluent English, What? You speak English? Fudge glared at the Bulgarian minister very annoyed. But you let me make gestures here all day, like a fool. Hey, that's fun. The Bulgarian minister shrugged his shoulders and stood up, moving towards the podium below. At this moment, on everyone's heads, the dwarves began to shed a large amount of gold coins to celebrate Ireland's championship. Fudge, who knew that he was being tricked, was annoyed. The Irish team won the Quidditch World Cup just now, but he didn't cheer him up. Finally, with a stern face, I took the stage to present the championship to the championship team with an unhappy expression. Let's go, we should go back. Before the awards were over, Albert greeted the others to leave, while Fred and George went to Ludo Bagman for money. They obviously did not forget what Albert said. This wonderful game will be discussed for a long time, Ludo Bagman said hoarsely. Ah, by the way, by the way, how much should I give you? How much? 450 gallon, Mr. Bagman. Fred and George smiled and opened their palms to Mr. Bagman. Okay, 450 gallon. Ludo Bagman took a deep breath, reached into his pocket and took out a purse and handed it painfully to Fred and George. Wait a moment. Fred and George took out a few gold coins from the purse, leaned under the light source of the magic wand to observe carefully, and couldn't help but squinted to look at the anxious man in front of him. Mr. Bagman, I think you may be mistaken. This is the gold coin of the dwarf. With that said, Fred handed the purse to George, who also took out a few gold coins from it. All gold coins of the dwarfs. Albert was right. Bagman really wanted to use the dwarf gold coins to send them away. This is not a good sign. Ah, dwarf gold coins? Sorry, I should have made a mistake. Ludo Bagman barely squeezed a trace of surprise on his face. He reached out and took the purse that George had handed him and pretended to take out a few from it. A gold coin, carefully inspected under the light, seems to be to discern whether these gold coins are canon or not. I remember it should be right to put it here. Ah, uh, it was here. Ludo Bagman stretched out his hand again and took it out of his pocket. Finally, he took out another purse of the same money and handed it to Fred, grudgingly smiled at the twins and said, It should be this bag. You should check it again. And this to you. It's an apology for the wrong wallet I just took. Bagman handed George a signed poster featuring all the Quidditch players of the Irish team and showed an apologetic expression to the twins. The Weasley twins were not attracted by the poster. Instead, they fished out a few gold coins from the purse. After several inspections, they took the purse and waved goodbye to Bagman contentedly. It was definitely on purpose, Fred said angrily. If you didn't check, you might have been deceived. As a result, the gold coins disappeared the next day. I still think there is a problem, George murmured. What's the problem? Fred couldn't help being wary. Bugman was so refreshing when he gave the money. George frowned, looking for flaws. Even if we expose a lie, I don't think he will pay so readily. 
Ever since he suspected that Ludo Bagman would deceive them with fake money and personally encountered that kind of thing, George felt that Bagman was a liar no matter how he looked at it. But we have spot check just now, and the bag is indeed full of Garin, Fred frowned and suggested. Or, after we go back to the tent, we will ask Bill to check again. He is in Gringotts. At work, I must know Cannon better and know how to distinguish them. By the way, do you want to tell Dad about this? Better not. It will only embarrass him. George shook his head. The tickets for their house were given by Ludo Bagman. Although Bagman was to pay back the favor, it is undeniable that the price of first-class tickets is very expensive. If we can't identify the true and false, we will use it to identify the fairy. Then we will use the money to open a vault in Gringotts and use it as a vault for the joke shop, Fred proposed. If the money is fake, contact other people who have been cheated by Bagman and go to him to collect debts. However, George didn't intend to hit Fred. He just nodded, intending to check Garen again when he went back. In fact, he knew that if the Garen in the bag was fake, they had no other way. According to Albert's broken mouth, it would be very difficult to get Garen from Bagman again. Perhaps, betting on Bagman was the wrong choice from the beginning. Where did you go? Mr. Weasley asked anxiously. We just went to Mr. Bagman to get back the money we won in the gambling. George took out the money bag he got from Bagman, smiled and said to Ron who was staring at the money bag. The one between you and Ginny I'll give it to you when I go back. To be honest, I have never been as happy as I am now. I have 24 gallons in one fell swoop. Ron felt that today was his lucky day. He had never had such a huge wealth. It's 27 gallon, Ron. Your math is really bad. Hermione corrected. Oh, 27 gallon. Ron smirked and asked happily, Percy, I remember you were planning to bet too. Did Bill and Charlie also bet? Well, I bet that Ireland will win, but the Bulgarian team will catch the golden snitch. Although the odds are only four times, the profit is also very good. Percy's face is also full of smiles. He hates the taste of poverty. Bill and Charlie looked at each other and reluctantly said, We didn't have time to bet. We really missed a lot of gallons. Don't tell your mother about your gambling. Mr. Weasley urged everyone in a low voice. Don't worry, Dad, Fred said with a smile. We plan to use this money to open a vault in Gringotts. What do you do to open the vault? You have no money. The joke shop needs a vault to save money. George said without hesitation. That's something later, Ron said. It's not far anymore. After returning to the camp, I found that the camp was full of fans celebrating the Irish team's championship. Not far away there was a vague sound of rough singing and tapping. I don't know who lit the bonfire. A large group of people were encircling. Tap dance over the bonfire, as if preparing to stay up late to celebrate. Fortunately, I don't need to tell the Irish to stop celebrating the victory, otherwise it is hard to imagine. Mr. Weasley murmured, well boys, you should go back to sleep. However, no one wants to sleep. Everyone is discussing the game. They don't like Bulgaria's fouls, but they admire Crum very much. To a certain extent, Crum did not fail. He caught Golden Snitch. On the other side, Albert, who returned to the tent, was also still not asleep. He stood outside the tent, observing the lively people around him. It feels a little weird these days. Isabel quietly came to Albert's side, leaned his head on his shoulder, and asked in a voice that only two of them could hear, guess in advance that the game will end. Will it be boring? Actually, I prefer to see the wonderful matchups of the players. Albert drank the hot cocoa prepared by the house elves and looked at the tap-dancing wizard not far away and said, Unfortunately, such a peaceful time has already not long. No wonder your friends don't like to let you talk. Isabel said with a smile, Actually, you should say something that everyone likes to hear. Yeah. Albert thought for a while and said, I don't think we need to worry about money for the time being. I don't think you need to worry about not having money. In Isabel's memory, Albert has always been rich from when he first entered school. After all, I have to support my family. Albert couldn't help but laugh. Girls nowadays are very realistic. Believe me, no girl will like poor ghosts. If I don't have a gold coin, Valeria will how far away is it from me? Speak ill of me secretly again. Valeria and Catherine didn't know where they came from. 
I think he was telling the truth. Catherine agreed with Albert's words. Valeria is a very realistic girl, and she knows that. No, Valeria shook her head and said, Albert is so talented that he will definitely find a way to turn his talents into wealth. People like him can never be short of money. Well, let's go inside and talk about it. Albert asked a few people into the tent to talk. Why did you come here so late today? Of course it is to get back the bet money. Catherine took out a bag of gold coins from her handbag and threw it to Albert. This is your share. Albert took the purse and handed it to Isabel. You can't figure it out? I'm not afraid that we will fool you with fake gold coins. Valeria asked with a smile. I'm not afraid. I don't think you will ruin our friendly relationship because of that little money. Albert really doesn't worry. He and Kathleen have a closer cooperation relationship than others thought. In Kathleen, there is no shortage of money at all. By the way, will something really happen tonight? Valeria asked in a low voice. Anyway, we are leaving. Let's get in. Albert motioned to some people to return to the suitcases. Before he followed in, he did not forget to tell the house elf, take us to Isabel's house. Good master. After Albert entered the box, the house elf lifted the box and left the apparition, leaving only the empty tent. Draco, there may be chaos later. You go and hide in that forest first, Narcissa Malfoy said to her son. Chaos, what's the matter, mother? Draco was a little confused, didn't understand what his mother meant. I just received some news, Narcissa Malfoy said vaguely. Some people drank too much and seemed to plan to do something. You know, the Irish team's championship made a lot of people overexcited. Aren't you going with me? Draco suddenly realized something. Dad, he. Don't talk about it with other people. Narcissa interrupted severely. Oh, I know mom. Draco nodded and turned away from the tent and headed towards the forest. Okay, my dear, Draco has left. Are you really going to do that? Narcissa looked at her husband nervously. He had put on a cloak and a mask and became a Death Eater. Only, he made many people feel threatened. Lucius said hoarsely. In fact, it is a bit inaccurate to say that the threat is more of a fear. This is the main reason why other people change their original plans. They think he is even more threatening than Nobby Leech. That guy has already received support from many people. It will be a matter of time before he becomes the next Nobby Leech. We can't tolerate this happening. Lou Hughes was also very afraid of each other. Killing or sending people to the St. Mungo's Hospital for magical injuries and injuries is the best option for eliminating possible threats. I see. Leave it to me here. Be careful yourself. Narcissa nodded and took out the compound medicine prepared in advance. He would pretend to be his husband to avoid him being suspected. Soon after, a series of crackling sounds suddenly sounded by the muggle camp manager's hut, and several suspicious guys with hoods and masks appeared out of thin air. Are you all here? Lucius asked hoarsely, looking around. It's all here, and someone over there has already dealt with it. Everyone will only think it was an accident. Another person replied. At that time, other people will gradually join our team, making the idiots of the Ministry of Magic think that we only drank too much to make this incident. If there were only a few of them, Lucius would naturally dare not provoke the Ministry of Magic at this time. But if there were enough participants, there would be no need to worry about these issues. Very well, let's start. Lucius drew out his wand, roughly opened the wooden door, broke into the camp manager's cabin, and used magic to float the sleeping muggles in the air. However, this family was stunned by the wizard of the Ministry of Magic, and even if they were suspended in the air, they would not be able to wake up for a while. If the tortured muggle doesn't scream, how can it be regarded as torturing the muggle? So Malfoy used magic to wake them up, and then led the four of them toward the wizard's camp like a balloon. Tonight, everyone is celebrating the Irish team's victory. It is undoubtedly the weakest time for the Quidditch World Cup. It is a good opportunity for them to start. I hope it will go smoothly over there, Malfoy murmured. Okay, let's help this group of guys cheer. On the other side, McNeil and Avery are in action. Their task is to relieve the Mudblood's threat. McNeil and Avery have always liked torturing their opponents, so they took this task and now they're waiting for Lucius to create chaos. The noisy atmosphere in the night still did not subside, adding some difficulty to McNeil and Avery. 
They could not be found by others that something was wrong, and they had to eliminate the threat while they were in chaos. Therefore, the two of them did not rush into the tent, but when they saw a large fire light in the distance and the commotion around them, they broke into the tent under the cover of the phantom spell. After entering the tent, McNeil and Avery were both stunned. The environment inside the tent was so simple that they could not imagine them. After they looked at each other, they began to search for the whereabouts of the owner of the tent with their wands. However, they were surprised to find that there was no one in the tent at all. Damn it, that mudblood didn't sleep in the tent. Where did they go? Avery was very annoyed by this. They planned for a long time, risking such a big risk to eliminate the threat. As a result, the plan had just begun because the other party didn't know. Where to go? Completely in vain. What should I do now? Do you want to notify Lucius and let them cancel the plan? McNeil asked with a frown. It's too late. We went to meet them and told them about this. The mudblood should still be in the camp. If we are lucky enough. Avery didn't say anything. He also knew that he had met each other. The probability is not high. Under the cover of the crowd, Avery and McNeil left in a hurry. They didn't take much time to join the parade that was setting fire everywhere. We didn't find the mud blood, McNeil said in a low voice. What happened? Lucius's good mood disappeared all at once. I don't know. He's not in his tent, and no one else is there. McNeil frowned and asked, What are you going to do now? What else can I do? Of course, continue the parade. Lucius thought for a moment and said, Go to Weasley. That guy has a good relationship with Weasley. Maybe they will be there, even if you can't find anyone. It can also leave a deep memory on Harry Potter. It is impossible to stop. Since the main goal can't be achieved, then complete their original goal. At first, they just wanted to give Fudge an impressive lesson. The parade is getting bigger and bigger, and even some dark wizards who are not Death Eaters have joined in. It seems that they want to take this opportunity to vent, which is a good thing for Lucius. The tent was burning. The muggles above their heads were screaming in horror, and the parade still used magic at the wizards who fled in embarrassment, not caring about who hurt them. Anyway, creating more chaos was the right choice, and those cowards from the Ministry of Magic were afraid to step forward to stop them. Because the number of people here is overwhelming, and the four muggles above their heads also gave them good excuses. Yes, they are not afraid, but afraid of the safety of those muggles. Once there is an excuse, no one is willing to risk the threat to fight against the Black Wizards. At least until the Ministry of Magic gathers more helpers, they will stop all this. This is difficult, because the Ministry of Magic has to help maintain order, and the British Ministry of Magic obviously does not have enough staff. Before the Wizards of the Ministry of Magic gathered enough people to stop the chaos, things changed. Some tents lit by them suddenly exploded, as if someone lit a small bottle of gas and scared the Black Wizards who were marching. I jumped, thinking that an enemy was chanting a spell at them. The parade is still moving forward, but the surrounding explosions are getting more and more frequent, especially the tents ignited by them, which seem to have turned into bombs. Once they explode, the contents inside will splash around and make the parade group a little embarrassed. Damn it, what's going on? Looking at several of his companions who were blown up, Lucius's face went gloomy all at once. So far, he is still at a loss. He didn't understand what happened. He only felt that the tents around him might explode at any time. If it wasn't for the idiots of the Ministry of Magic who didn't dare to come up, they would probably be in even greater trouble. At this moment, a green light rose into the air, and Lucius was horrified to find that a huge green sparkling thing appeared to them. It was something familiar to them. The dark mark? It was like being stabbed into a hornet's nest, and the wizards around them all operat and fled here, as if they were afraid of being involved with that thing. Lucius knew that tonight's farce was over, and he left without any hesitation. Everyone knows what the dark mark means. It is a provocation to the Ministry of Magic. This undoubtedly touches the nerves of many people, and the Ministry will not stop there. After the wizard left, the muggles who lost their magical control immediately fell from the sky, were caught by the Ministry of Magic, and tampered with their memories. Many wizards who were originally assembled, after seeing the group of dark wizards fleeing, all heaved a sigh of relief. It is undoubtedly a good thing not to have a conflict with them. It's not that they are cowardly, 
but Crouch divides most of the manpower and rushes to the position where the Dark Mark rises. The Ministry of Magic is obviously more concerned about the daring to rise up than these troublemakers who don't know if it's a Death Eater. Demon marked B asterisk starred, because that guy is undoubtedly a Death Eater, this is everyone's nervousness. After all, Death Eaters have always been the target of the Ministry of Magic's key attacks. No one hopes that the peaceful life will be destroyed again, but they are doomed to be disappointed, and the last peaceful time is leaving them. At noon the next day, when Albert woke up, the place beside the bed was empty. He got up from the bed, got dressed and went downstairs, and saw Isabel sitting in the dining room with today's newspaper in his hand. He didn't know what he was reading. Albert stepped forward, put his arms around her shoulders from behind. His eyes fell on the newspaper. You don't seem to be very happy. Look at this. Isabel handed it to Albert. The headline on it was impressively. The horror seen at the Quidditch World Cup, accompanied by a flashing black and white photo of the dark mark hanging on the treetops. It seems that some bad things have happened in the World Cup, although Albert said so, but he didn't really care too much. Because of the chaos of the World Cup, he had expected it a long time ago. What happened? Albert felt that this incident should not have caused Isabel to have such a reaction. After all, this matter had been known in advance. This morning, my mother went to help early. Our tent was not burned down, but Isabel's words seemed to contain a trace of anxiety. Someone went into the tent after we left. Stranger? Albert couldn't help narrowing his eyes. When Bit reclaimed the tent, he used the mantra in the tent and found the footprints of two strangers. What exactly this means, Isabel knows all too well. In such chaos, no one would run into their tent at all. And as long as you think about why Albert did that, you can guess that the person who broke into their tent was obviously unkind. Who wants to do to them is what Isabel is worried about and those people are most likely to come to Albert. As for who it is, Isabel is not difficult to guess. After all, it is not a day or two for some pure-blood wizards to see Albert not pleasing to the eye, although there is no conflict between the two sides. Don't worry, I'm a master of divination. I will pick out those people and arrange a big gift for them. What you need is to protect yourself. Don't worry me. Albert softly comforted and glanced at the task by the way. Panel. There are new tasks. Having said that, going to watch the Quidditch World Cup this time is really rewarding. Ahem. Katrina gave a light cough, walked in, and asked casually, What about mom? I remember she should be on vacation today. There was an accident in the camp last night and many people were injured. Isabel handed the newspaper to Katrina without telling her about the footprints. Dark Mark? Katrina looked at Albert with a weird expression. I suddenly understood a little bit. Why do you think that kind of magazines and newspapers will be popular? Today I have to take Nia home. Albert handed a small bottle to Isabel. This is... Katrina stared at the bottle curiously. Fulfillment, Isabel said. This thing is a lucky potion? Katrina naturally heard the name of lucky potion. Albert took out another silver pocket watch and handed it to Isabel. Don't take risks. Leave temporarily when you are in danger. Your own safety is the most important. Katrina felt that Albert was really nervous, but she also envied Albert's meticulous care of Isabel. Just then, a white owl flew in from the window and threw a letter in front of Albert. Albert picked up the letter, glanced at the sender, and found that it was from Hermione. Albert stuffed the envelope into his pocket and didn't intend to immediately. Don't you read what's written in the letter? Katrina looked away from the dangerous pointer on her pocket watch and turned her gaze to Albert again. A letter from a certain girl. A friend. Albert corrected. Well, go and call the others up for dinner. So that Catherine and Valeria can arrange to return home as soon as possible. Britain is in chaos now. We are up. Catherine and Valeria went into the kitchen yawning, and Naya got up too, looking awake. The six people sat around the dining table and talked about what happened last night while eating. Catherine and Valeria realized the chaotic situation in the UK through the newspaper, and they believed that Albert really had the ability to predict. Another owl flew in from the window, and Albert glanced at the sender, who was a twin brother. Then, the owl was out of control, and one after another came in and out of the room. There was a letter from Sirius, a letter from Bud, a letter from Lee Jordan, a letter from Harry Potter, 
and even a letter from Grandpa Luke. Many people were sending letters to him anyway. You are really welcome, Catherine said with a weird expression. He is indeed very popular, Naya murmured. When we will go home, Grandpa Luke may have seen today's report. If we don't go back soon, they will probably be very worried. Grandpa Luke has asked Shara to send us a letter. Albert pointed to the owl resting by the window. After lunch, we will go back. You should also pay attention to your safety. Starting today, the United Kingdom the magic world is not as peaceful as before. After lunch, Albert left. Naya was also sent back by the house elf bit in a suitcase. Luke and Sansa were very surprised at the sudden emergence of Albert and Nia from the room, but they were relieved when they thought that it was a magic method. I saw the report this morning. Luke still has some understanding of mysterious people, and he also knows that they are all evil guys. Albert took us out of the camp before the chaos happened last night. Naya sat beside Luke and showed them the souvenirs she bought at the World Cup. Yes, Albert has always been reassuring. Luke looked at the Firebolt model and nodded. Albert never needed them to worry. Nia combed Tom's hair while chatting with Luke and Sansa about the Quidditch World Cup. Albert listened to their chat while opening the letter he had just received, and occasionally echoed a few sentences. Fred and George mentioned in the letter that they were deceived. Although they saw through Bagman's attempt to pay back the money with the dwarf gold coins, they were still deceived by Bagman, the bag of galleons that they gave them. There are a lot of Garen's replicas in it, and there are not many real gold coins in it. It is not difficult to see from the handwriting on the parchment that Fred and George are angry. The content of Lee Jordan's letter was also poor, but they obviously hadn't noticed a problem with the gold coin. Grandpa Luke's letter was simple, asking when the two of them would go home. Mr. Bard was worried about Albert's safety, and he also mentioned the chaos last night, and some worries about whether the turmoil predicted by Albert is coming. Sirius mentioned the news about the newspapers in the letter. Because of the dark mark last night, someone had asked them to inquire about the magazine. He also mentioned that the printing problem has been solved in the last two days, and the first issue will be launched next month. It was Hermione's letter that surprised Albert. The content of the letter was about the unfair treatment of the house elves. It also mentioned Barty Crouch's firing of the house elves last night. With anger, Hermione seemed hoping to get some support and comfort from Albert because other people didn't care or even ignored it. In the letter, Harry mentioned the loss of his wand and the release of the dark mark by someone holding his wand and suspected that the man might be the man who appeared in Peter's prophecy. Albert took some time to write a reply, especially Hermione's letter. He didn't try to convince Hermione, he just told her about the current situation of house elves and suggested that Hermione try to write a book about the harmonious coexistence of wizards and house elves. The story, to slowly guide the wizard to treat the house elves correctly and treat them as loyal and reliable family members, so as to improve the bad situation of the house elves. Everything needs to be flexible and changeable, and after Hermione finishes writing, she can also serialize the story in the magazine. This is much more useful than the vomit that Hermione later formed and it can also help Sirius solve the problem of magazine content. Several birds with one stone. It's me. After checking the content of the letter, Albert nodded in satisfaction. What's more, to his surprise, he actually triggered an additional panel task. Although the rewards are not many, the task can be triggered. A surprise. Why can't there be a normal dress? Ron was in a bad mood, especially after seeing his dress. He almost went crazy. After returning from watching the World Cup, he felt that everything went wrong. First, Fred and George found out that the gold coins given by Ludo Bagman were fake, and his 27 gallons were directly lost. If it weren't for Fred and George, George still had a little conscience, and he would even lose all his savings because of returning the real Jalong that was not in his pocket. But that kind of mental gap still made him unbearable, otherwise he could order a new dress in Diagon Alley instead of being angry here. Blame Fred and George? No, they are the biggest victims. The real Jalong in the money bag can't make up for their losses at all. Percy's face was also ugly because his cannon disappeared. Yes, Bagman used the dwarf's gold coins to pay for the winnings. Now, the Weasley family knows what Ludo Bagman is, but after internal discussions, they didn't plan to tell their parents about it because that would only embarrass Mr. Weasley. Of course, 
Maybe their father knew it a long time ago, so he tried to stop them from betting. You can buy another one. Didn't you win a lot of money from the bet? Hermione also felt that Ron's dress was a bit fancy. You won a lot of money from the bet? Ron couldn't help laughing, making Harry and Hermione very disturbed. Harry, Hermione, Fred, there is your letter. Mrs. Weasley's shout came from downstairs. Who sent it? Harry asked. Fred said, Albert, what did he say? Ron asked anxiously. He can't help it. After reading the letter, Fred said with a gloomy face. He reminded it a long time ago. It's our problem. Now I have to write a letter to Lee Jordan. And Sirius. George reminded. Harry, did you write a letter to Albert too? Ron turned his head and asked. Well, about the dark mark. Harry said. Sirius asked me to write to him. What did Albert say? Hermione asked. He said that I would cause trouble to myself every year. Harry curled his lips and said, He thought the mysterious man's conspiracy might be directed against me, and asked me to talk to Sirius and Dumbledore about it. You do have trouble every year. Even Ron had to admit that Albert's words had some truth. Since Harry enrolled, he has been in trouble every year. That's not my fault. Harry was a little annoyed, and he seemed to like to make trouble everywhere. We know it's not your fault, Ron asked, turning the subject away. Hermione, what's in your letter? Albert suggested that I contribute to Sirius's magazine. Hermione put away the letter, thinking about the feasibility of Albert's suggestion. The letter was short, without comfort, just telling her the current situation and a little advice. Can be regarded as providing her with an idea. It is impossible to change the status quo in a short period of time. It is not difficult to see this from the attitude of the wizards towards the house elves, and she even had trouble with Percy about this. After reading Albert's reply, Hermione breathed a sigh of relief. To be honest, Hermione was really afraid that Albert would be like other wizards. That night, Hermione even felt that she was the abnormal one, and that feeling made her feel restless. Let the wizard realize that the house elves are loyal and reliable members of the family and let them subconsciously treat those house elves kindly? Hermione repeatedly read the contents of her heart. The house elves she saw in Albert's place, it really belongs to two different worlds from the elf named Shining. What happened to that letter? Ginny asked suspiciously, seeing Hermione staring at the letter. Albert's letter. I talked to him about house elves. Hermione explained. House elf? Ginny was a little confused. There is a house elf serving him. Hermione said to Ginny that house elf is not like other house elves, and Albert is also very good to house elves, unlike other wizards. You were not there at the time, and you have never seen how other wizards treat Shining. He is special, isn't it? Ginny said. Otherwise, Anderson would not be admired and admired by so many girls. Yeah, Hermione said softly. He is special. Do you like him? Ginny asked. He is engaged. Hermione said suddenly. Engaged? Ginny was surprised. The one with Ravenclaw? Don't tell me. Hermione reminded. Yeah. Ginny was silent. What about you? Hermione asked, turning the subject away. I? Still like Harry? Hermione asked. Ginny was silent. Perhaps, you should try to give up Harry. Hermione suggested. Try to get along with others. Try to show everyone your charm. Maybe Harry will notice you. In the quiet night, there was a sharp explosion, and a black shadow in a cloak appeared out of thin air. He seemed to be holding something in his arms, wandering down the path, and finally stopped in front of a big house. Ding dong. The doorbell rang. Damn it. Who is calling the door so late? When he was awakened in the middle of the night, Crouch was in a very bad mood. At the moment when the door was turned open, the expression of consternation on Crouch's face completely froze because he saw a dead person. The other party he was holding an ugly baby in his arms, and the baby was pointing at him with a magic wand. The soul is out of the body. A hoarse voice sounded under the night. Crouch, who had been hit by the imperious curse, converged the expression on his face and turned to the side like an okay person, letting people from outside enter the house, as if he was entertaining guests he hadn't seen for a long time. Peter soon found Batty, who was unconscious and he was hidden in a very secret place, 
covered with a cloak of invisibility of very good quality. Voldemort raised his wand, awakened the still unconscious man in front of him, and lifted the imperious curse on him. Little Batty opened his eyes and looked at the strange man in front of him suspiciously. His eyes fell on the father beside him, and he was startled. Then his eyes fell on the baby in the man's arms again, and his mind was in confusion. It's me, I'm back. Master, you are here to save me, to save your most loyal servant. There was a bright smile on little Barty's face. I know that the master is not dead. It's really great, great. Okay, Batty, sit down. Voldemort asked old Barty to leave the living room looked at the faithful servant in front of him, and said hoarsely, I haven't fully recovered my original strength. Now I have a plan. I need a loyal and reliable servant to help me execute the plan, so that I can take back the power that belongs to me completely. I am willing. Little Batty did not hesitate. I am willing to take all risks for the master. I need you to bring Harry Potter before me. Voldemort said the ultimate goal of the mission. Master. What should I do to bring Harry Potter to you? Barty Jr. naturally heard of the name of the Savior Potter. I want you to pretend to be the old Auror Moody and venture to Hogwarts. Voldemort began to tell his plan. Wormtail caught Bertha Jorkins in Arnia and let us know about you. I also learned a lot from her. The old Auror Moody is going to teach at Hogwarts. Hogwarts will host the Triwizard Tournament this year. Voldemort's words paused and continued. I want Harry Potter to be a warrior. You need to monitor and guide Harry Poo during the Triwizard Tournament. Especially, I need to ensure that Harry Potter gets the top three cup. You need to replace the trophy with a door key so that the first person who catches it can bring him to me. Ahem. Sorry, Master. Wormtail coughed lightly and reminded. There is one thing I must remind you. Harry Potter may be good at the same age, but there is a genius named Albert Anderson. Now. It's almost impossible for Harry Potter to get the top three first, unless we get rid of the mudblood first. It seems that in order to strengthen Voldemort's determination, Peter did not forget to remind. Albert Anderson has won several world-class championship titles and is known as the most talented wizard of the century. I'm sure he will definitely become Hawk. Warriors of Watts. Albert Anderson? Voldemort recalled the name a bit. He remembers that when he was possessed by Quirrell, there seemed to be a student named Albert Anderson who always liked to ask questions about the defense against the dark arts to Quirrell. In the end, Quirrell made him want to hide. Open. Wormtail, I know you hate that mudblood. Voldemort looked at Peter with a sneer. He got you into Azkaban prison, right? Yes, it's him. Peter shrank his neck and gritted his teeth. It seemed that it took a lot of effort to gather up the courage and say, but what I said is also the truth. Albert Anderson may be the biggest in the whole plan. Hinder. It's not appropriate to let that mudblood go missing, especially now when he gets the most attention. Once missing, it will cause a lot of attention, and Harry Potter has become a warrior at Hogwarts, and Dumbledore will have doubts about the whole thing. For Voldemort, it was a smarter mudblood. Compared with the chain reaction brought about by his disappearance, which led to the risk of early exposure of the plan, Voldemort was more willing to believe in the abilities of Little Crouch and believe that the other party could handle the matter. Instead of ruining the whole plan because of Wormtail's selfishness. Of course, even if there are problems, the plan can still be readjusted. For example, at critical moments, Crouch can even use the door key directly to bring Harry Potter to his side. Master, I will take care of this. Little Batty smiled confidently. I won't let that mudblood influence this great plan. Yes, in the eyes of Little Batty, the truly powerful wizards all come from pure blood, and the mudbloods are of that level, so you don't need to care at all. Wormtail mentioned this incident simply because he wanted to take this opportunity to avenge himself. Seeing that Voldemort had already made a decision, Peter didn't dare to mention it again. However, from the bottom of his heart, Peter still thought that Voldemort had made a stupid decision. Peter admits that he does have selfish motives, but he who has dealt with Albert Anderson knows more than anyone that he is terrible. Is it true to win so many world-class championships? Damn pure blood arrogance. We need to fix the old Aura Moody first, and we need to prepare the compound potion before that, Voldemort said and looked at Wormtail, who took out a bottle of the compound potion prepared in advance, 
which they bought from the black market. This bottle of compound medicine can last for a few days, but we need to buy more compound medicine, but it will easily attract some people's attention. System. So you can avoid a lot of trouble. Don't worry about this. My level of potions is pretty good. It shouldn't be a problem to make compound potions. Little Batty is confident in his potions. I have already purchased some materials. It should be possible for you to make the first pot first, but the horns of the double-horned beast and the African tree snake skin are more difficult to obtain. I have to take time to purchase more materials from the black market. Make sure there are enough compound medicines. Then it is to subdue Moody. It is a bit difficult. We need him to be alive instead of killing people. Voldemort continued, Wormtail will help you. Before that, you have to restore yourself to normal. To prepare for the plan. In the next few days, Voldemort controlled Crouch to buy the common medicinal materials of the compound potion in the pharmacy. Peter disguised as a foreign wizard and bought the horns of the double-horned beast and African tree snake skin on the black market. African tree snake skin is the main raw material of compound medicine, and it is an uncommon potion, causing them to become prohibited trade items. After Barty and Peter made all the preparations, they quietly came to Moody's house. As the former Auror, Aristo Moody was very vigilant, and trying to subdue him is not easy. Of course, for today, little Barty and Peter are ready. They even use the illusion charm on themselves, intending to take the opportunity to attack each other. However, the plan always fails to keep up with the changes. Neither Barty Jr. nor Peter knew it, but Moody was blinded by a blind eye and put a magic eye on it. Therefore, when Peter rang the doorbell, Moody had already seen Peter cast the phantom curse on himself through the magic eye. How can it be? When Moody saw Peter, he was very surprised. He didn't expect that Peter, who should have died, would appear at his door. Peter's goal is obviously himself. However, Moody did not intend to escape, and Peter Pettigrew did not make himself afraid to the extent that he needed to escape. He wanted to catch Peter now and figure out what was going on. What's more, Moody occupies a great advantage, because Peter didn't know that he had discovered him through the perspective effect of the magic eye. The doorbell rang for a long time, but Moody never opened the door. Seeing that there was no response inside, Peter used magic to open the door lock and broke in. He obviously realized that Moody had found himself, or was he still sleeping? The former is more likely. What warning measures may Moody's have, they must catch him before the other party flees, otherwise all plans will fail because of this. As soon as he entered the house, Peter was attacked. Although Moody's is old and has some inconveniences in his legs and feet, he still embarrassed Peter with his rich combat experience. The explosion sounded in the room, and Peter hid behind a wall in embarrassment. Damn it, Batty, come and help. Peter yelled, they must rush to subdue Moody as soon as possible before the others arrive. Sorry, kid, I blame you for tiring you. Stay alive. Don't do bad things anymore. Peter opened his eyes suddenly and woke up from his sleep. He stretched out the sheet and sat up. His forehead was soaked with sweat for some time and his breathing became a little short. As soon as he closes his eyes, Peter will return to that day. His mother sacrificed herself to help him escape from Azkaban prison. Since his mother died in Azkaban prison, self-blame and guilt have been torturing Peter's heart. Live well? Peter smiled helplessly. Can he really give up everything and keep his name incognito and live well? Too difficult. It's too difficult. In order not to be found alive by others, Peter had to stay away from the magic world and hide himself in the muggle world. But how can a wizard live like ordinary people? Of course Peter couldn't, and he knew he couldn't integrate into the muggle world. Even Arthur Weasley, who is most obsessed with muggles, can't do this. Therefore, most of the time Peter can only use magic to solve the problems he encounters so that he can lead a decent life. Long-term use of magic in the muggle world is easy to cause trouble for himself, it may also attract employees of the Ministry of Magic, so most of the time Peter only stays somewhere for a few days. Then, you have to carry a suitcase like a traveler and embark on a new journey alone. Especially after leaving the UK, the language barrier made communication very difficult and also made Peter's life more difficult. He had to frequently use magic to solve the troubles he encountered. And everything Peter does is not compatible with good people. 
He knows that he can't become a good person, probably let her down again. The sky was still dark, and the street outside the window was completely dark. Peter, who was awakened, had no sleep. After putting on a decent dress for himself, he began to organize his suitcase. When it was clear, he would leave the hotel with a suitcase like an ordinary traveler. A familiar crackle came from outside the street. Peter was like a mouse stepped on his tail. He quickly hid his wand under the bed, and the whole person quickly turned into a mouse and got under the bed. After a few seconds, the door of the room was opened without warning. The three wizards with magic wands rushed into Peter's room vigilantly. They quickly scanned the empty room. Their eyes fell on the half-organized suitcases on the bed, and they exchanged glances. I didn't hear the sound. It shouldn't be apparition. A wizard quickly scanned the room and began to check where people could hide in the room. Naturally, he didn't let it go under the bed. It's a man just left. One of them glanced at the clothes in the suitcase and said, Who do you think it will be? I don't know. That guy is really alert. I guess he hasn't run far yet. Another wizard waved his wand toward the suitcase and took it away directly. Before the three of them left, by the way, the magic used by Peter on the innkeeper was disarmed. Damn it. Peter waited for a long time before he got out of the bed. He didn't want to change back quickly. Instead, he watched the neighborhood for a while to make sure there was no threat around him before he took out the wand he had hidden under the bed. Then change back to human form. This is not the first time Peter has encountered this kind of thing. Using magic in the muggle world at will, it is easy to be targeted by the Ministry of Magic. This time his luck was relatively bad, and he never expected that he would be targeted so quickly. However, the situation is not too bad. At least, the wand is saved. As long as the wand is still there, he doesn't have to worry about life problems. Magic can make him easily get everything in the muggle world. Before leaving the inn, Peter secretly borrowed some money from the innkeeper to avoid the embarrassing situation of having no money. It is quite unwise to use magic rashly now, especially in such a dense muggle area. He doesn't want to be targeted by the Ministry of Magic. So Peter used apparition to leave after borrowing the money. Somewhere in a remote alley, Peter appeared out of thin air. He sniffed the terrible smell in the alley, frowned slightly, and quickly left the alley, bought himself a sandwich with the borrowed money in the shop on the side of the road, and then just wandered the city. The destination is walking. Peter actually didn't know where he was going. What did he want to do? Ever since he left England on a muggle ship, he has been wandering all over Europe. Most of the time, Peter only needs to avoid wizards and let others find that he is still alive. Of course, Peter called Barty to distract Moody's attention, and the opponent was an elderly man, unable to fight as flexibly as before. Peter's shout made Moody stunned, and intuitively told Moody that there might be another enemy around him. Seeing that the situation was not good, Moody was ready to retreat. But little Batty did not give him a chance, and quickly outflanked Moody from another corner, blocking Moody in the room. We must subdue Moody as soon as possible, Peter yelled to Barty Jr. You can't let him run away like this. You must stop him. Shut up. Little Batty waved his wand and blasted the wall open. He rushed into the room without fear and used the stunning charm to knock down Moody who was about to apparate. This guy is really difficult, and he almost let him run away. Peter couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Once Moody's was really led away, the consequences would be unimaginable. Quickly get this back to normal. The guys from the Ministry of Magic will be here soon. Barty glanced at the yelling waste, pulled out a few Moody's hair, and added it to the compound potion. He took a sip of the potion and became Moody's appearance. Then, from Moody's body, he took away his wooden legs and magic eyes and installed them on himself. What about this guy? Peter used the repair spell to repair the place in the house that was damaged by the battle, and at the same time asked Batty how to deal with Moody, they must ensure that this guy is alive. If Barty Young wants to hide Dumbledore, he must understand Moody's past and his habits in order to hide it from Dumbledore. Moreover, he also needs to use Moody's hair to prepare the compound medicine. In the end, they turned Moody into a mouse, temporarily locked up in a magically conjured cage, and prepared to wait for the people from the Ministry of Magic to go back and deal with his affairs. After helping to restore the traces of the fighting in the house, Peter hurriedly left. According to the original plan, 
Little Batty took Moody's wand to explode the trash can in the yard and fly the trash everywhere to deal with the upcoming Ministry of Magic employees. In fact, the plan went very well. When the Muggle police arrived, there was even a trash can spraying garbage out. The expressions on the faces of the Muggle police officers are quite wonderful. In the end, it was him, or Moody's old friend Arthur, who came to deal with this matter. Arthur had to modify the memories of those policemen, was able to end the matter and let them leave. What is going on? Arthur asked wearily. I heard the alarm go off. Moody looked around warily. I couldn't see the other person, but I could hear someone breaking into the yard. The other person was walking quietly towards the house, but he failed. Probably unexpectedly, the trash can will ambush him, but because of too much noise, he can only retreat temporarily. I suspect that the other party may be someone who wants me to seek revenge. It's fine if you are okay. At least the situation is not too bad. I think you will only be warned by the Ministry of Magic at most. Arthur sighed in relief after listening. Although he suspected Moody was suspicious, he also knew that the other party was suspicious. Many enemies, especially in this situation, God knows if the Dark Wizards in the Quidditch World Cup will have a brainstorm and run over to find Moody's trouble. Thanks to you. Or I might be in trouble. I remember you were going to work at Hogwarts today. Mr. Weasley asked. Yes, today. Well, honestly, the defense against the dark arts professor is not very lucky. I only taught for a year and did Dumbledore a favor. He couldn't find a suitable defense against the dark arts professor. Moody murmured. Then I can live a peaceful retirement again. I have to go to help you deal with people who are prohibited from abusing the magic office. Arthur reminded me before leaving, if Rita Skeeter comes to interview you, it's best to ignore her, if you can avoid it. It's better. After Arthur Weasley left, Barty Jr. returned to the house to count Moody's clothes and black magic detectors. Finally, Little Batty discovered that there was a dark room in Moody's magic box, so he used the Imperious Curse to control Moody and put it into the dark room in the magic box before leaving for Hogwarts. So, we are going to the Far East next summer? Luke held the steering wheel and stared at the road ahead, chatting with Albert in the back seat. Yes, next summer, it will not be safe here in the UK. It is a good thing to leave as soon as possible, so as not to get into trouble. Albert put his cheek in one hand, looking sideways at the pouring rain outside the car window and rubbed a fat cat next to him. Naya said, Foreign languages must be studied carefully, and you have to go to study there. Herb will buy a house there, and then everyone will live together. I thought I had to wait for you to marry Isabel before the family emigrate. Sansa in the passenger seat couldn't help asking, What about your wedding? Come back then. Anyway, magic is very convenient. Naya scratched Tom's ear and asked casually, How many years should we stay abroad? About four years, it's time to study abroad. Albert estimated the time and felt that as long as there are no accidents, Harry Potter should be able to eliminate Voldemort step by step, and he is pushing behind to eliminate Voldemort's soul. The task of the device will definitely be easier. As long as there is no Horcrux, Voldemort, who can be killed, will be much less threatened than before. Next year, can I really go to Hogwarts? Naya asked about this again which is what she cares about most now. Yes, I have fortune telling. Albert reached out and touched Nia's head to comfort him. If Herb and Daisy don't come back, Isabel will pick you up. How do I get to Hogwarts school and do a train? Naya asked. I don't know. I'll help you ask at that time. I always think it's a wonderful thing for wizards to go to school on a steam train. Sansa thought it was incredible. There are basically no steam trains in the UK now. It's really amazing. Albert continued the topic. Actually, there are several other trains to European countries at King's Cross Station. To European countries, take a train? Luke was a little surprised. I thought you could drill a fireplace. How did they cross the sea? The wizard allows the train to pass through the sea. I have taken it once. It's okay, but the speed is very slow. If you want to travel around Europe by train, it will take a long time. Albert added. The price is very expensive. Boring. It was raining heavily outside, and the car was talking about the magic world, and occasionally a few laughs could be heard. I don't know how long it took before the car finally arrived outside King's Cross Station. The rain outside was heavier than before. 
Naya held up the umbrella high and tried to cover the rain for Albert who was carrying the luggage, but the effect was not very good. The rain wetted most of the clothes on the two of them. Remember to write to us. Luke gave Albert a hug, and Sansa also kissed him on the forehead. Be careful on the way back. If you have a cold, remember to drink the cold medicine I left for you. There are labels and instructions on it. Don't make any mistakes. Albert took the cat cage from Naya and placed it on the cart again. After giving her a hug, holding an umbrella, walked toward the station with a single trolley. The pedestrians at King's Cross Station were in a hurry. Albert walked leisurely towards the partition wall, and when no one noticed, he immediately passed through the wall. The Hogwarts Express train has stopped on the platform, and the locomotive is emitting thick smoke. There are many Hogwarts students and parents talking on the platform, mixed with various pets, which is really noisy. His ears were filled with various buzzing sounds, as if someone had used closed earplugs to listen to a spell on him. As Albert joined the crowd with his luggage, he put a hand on his shoulder from behind, and then a familiar voice rang in his ears. Albert turned his head and looked. Lee Jordan and his father did not know when they came to him. Ludo Bagman gave us a bunch of copy gallons. Mr. Jordan led Albert toward the entrance of the train. I took it for the goblins of Gringotts to distinguish, and found that there were only a dozen gallons inside. It's true. All the rest are copies. I have contacted Fred and George, and their situation is similar. Lee Jordan added, Have you ever found Ludo Bagman? Albert kept his voice low. He noticed that many people were staring at him. Being too famous is sometimes not a good thing. I found it. Lee Jordan's father gritted his teeth, but it's useless. He doesn't admit it, and his attitude is very perfunctory. He probably has no money. Albert guessed. You mean to forget it? Mr. Jordan couldn't believe it. You can write to Bagman or send a yelling letter, urging him to pay back the money. But if you want to get Garen back from Ludo Bagman, I am afraid it will be difficult. It is said that he borrowed a lot of gallon from the goblin. I'm being debt collection. Albert stopped and suggested to Mr. Jordan. Of course, you can unite with other wizards who have been trapped by Bagman to form a debt collection group to negotiate with Bagman and allow him to negotiate with Bagman every year. There are also some garoons. It is better to get the money than to be directly squandered by Bagman. What if he can't afford to pay? If Bagman can't pay it back, let the debt haunt him until he dies. Really worthy of you. Lee Jordan smiled and gave a thumbs up. That's all. Mr. Jordan had no better way. Before leaving, he took out a letter from his robe pocket and handed it to Albert. He blinked and said, The part that belongs to you. I have already deposited it. You are in the vault of Gringotts. This is a letter from the fairies. You can also find relevant information in Gringotts. Happy cooperation. Albert smiled and stretched out his hand. Mr. Jordan shook his hand and said heartily, I hope there will be another time. I think there will be. Albert put his luggage on the train and went to the carriage with Lee Jordan. He received countless curious eyes along the way. People stared at him unabashedly. Some even put their faces on the glass windows of the carriage. A.I. Bert felt like a cherished animal in the zoo. After entering the box, Albert immediately closed the door and pulled down the curtains, blocking people's sight from the car, and he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. You are really welcome. Lee Jordan doesn't envy Albert's attention, but rather gloats. The gazes of those girls made him a little scared, as if he was about to take Albert alive. Not everyone is like Lockhart who likes to be noticed. Albert raised his wand and tapped his clothes lightly. A large amount of water vapor quickly evacuated from his body and was swept out of the window by a gust of wind. He was originally uncomfortable. All the dampness disappeared. Fred and George must be angry. They lost a lot of gallon. Lee Jordan sat down opposite Albert and helped him open the cat cage and let out the fat cat inside. I can only say bad luck. Albert shook his head. If they come to me before placing a bet, I will tell them not to bet on Bagman, then why don't you remind us? The part of your bet can't actually be taken back. Albert touched Tom's head and looked at the platform through the window glass of the car. So, whether you bet or not, it doesn't make much sense. You are generous, so a lot of cannon. Give up if you give up. You can't be too greedy. When Albert saw Lee Jordan pick it up, he seemed to think of something. By the way, 
Sirius's magazine is now on sale, and the sale should be pretty good. The dark mark of the World Cup caused a lot of panic. Lee Jordan waved to Fred and George on the platform. Many people think this is a bad omen. I think this matter may tell you. There will be turbulence in the British magical world. It's true. You will know why next summer. Can't you say it now? You certainly don't want to know it now. Who can tell? Are you sure? Albert said softly. Many people don't want to believe it. The mysterious man is back. Lee Jordan couldn't help swallowing, feeling that he really asked a terrible question. Do you regret it? Albert opened the door of the carriage. What regrets? Fred and George, who were all wet, walked in. The return of the mysterious man, Lee Jordan said. It's not funny. Fred and George shivered together. Suddenly, there was a dead silence in the carriage. Albert, do you know what will happen at Hogwarts this year? George asked, turning off the subject. I heard that we are going to prepare for a match, like the Triwizard Tournament. It was Lee Jordan who answered them. However, he doesn't seem to know much. The Triwizard Tournament jointly organized by the three schools has related records. Each school will select a warrior to participate in three magic events. Later, people often die, and the competition ceased. Albert lifted up, pointing the wand at the two of them. A lot of water vapor began to emerge from Fred and George, and Lee Jordan quickly opened the window to get the vapor out. Dead? The three looked at each other. Literal meaning. It seems dangerous. Do you plan to participate? All three felt that the warriors at Hogwarts were none other than Albert, and unless he voluntarily gave up participating in the competition, he basically didn't need to consider other students. It should be signed up. I feel the Triwizard Tournament is very interesting, Albert said with a smile. The panel task of the Triwizard Tournament is definitely very good. He naturally did not intend to miss it. Moreover, if you want to realize Naya's wishes, you also need to participate in the competition. As for the threat of Barty Crouch Jr., Albert didn't care at all. Because the enemy hidden in the dark is really scary. For someone like Barty Crouch Jr. who has been seen through, Albert can arrange him in minutes. I don't understand why Bill and the others are not willing to tell us. Fred was a little depressed. Do they really think there will be unexpected surprises when we know it? I think this is purely a bad taste. If they really want to surprise us, they shouldn't disclose the news in advance. Knowing without knowing it is a surprise, George curled his lips and took it out of the back. A box of biscuits is placed on the table. It's the same character as yours. Lee Jordan suddenly turned into a big canary after eating a small piece. Both Fred and George couldn't help laughing. Damn canary biscuit. Lee Jordan murmured and ate the whole biscuit. As if to combat the arrogance of the Weasley twins, he brought up the topic just now. Albert thinks the mysterious man is back, and the dark mark is a sign. The laughter of the Weasley twins suddenly stopped, and they looked at Albert stiffly. I didn't say that. Albert shrugged. Of course you didn't say it, but that's what you meant. Lee Jordan continued to use it to fight the twins' arrogance. Actually, we guessed it a long time ago. Albert had said before that the British magical world would be in turmoil. Fred and George looked at each other and put on a posture that everyone would die together. The atmosphere in the carriage became more and more weird. Don't worry, even if the mysterious man really returns, we still have the Savior Potter. Albert said comfortingly, Are you serious? Lee Jordan suddenly wanted to laugh, but couldn't laugh. Of course serious. Albert nodded. Harry Potter is called the savior for no reason. Well, we have Potter. The three looked at each other, agreeing with Albert's words. To be honest, people are more willing to believe in Dumbledore than Harry Potter. Moreover, the sky fell, and there was a tall man against it. I don't need to worry at all. Anyway, it's up to Albert what to do, and they follow along. Since Albert has foreseen this matter very early, he will definitely be prepared, and they don't need to worry about it at all. You said, why didn't the mysterious man die? Fred seemed to be worried about being heard by others, so he kept his voice low. He even came to Hogwarts to steal the Philosopher's Stone. Actually, I'm even more curious about why he looks so ugly and doesn't have a nose. Albert couldn't help but joked. They had all seen Voldemort through Bogut. There was a sucking sound from the carriage, 
and the three of them did not expect that Albert would dare to tease the mysterious man, even though his appearance was really ugly. At this time, the car door was knocked. It's Harry, with a magazine in his hand. Sirius asked me to give it to you. After Harry Potter handed the magazine to Albert, he seemed to have something to say to him. Something? Albert glanced at the cover of the magazine, feeling that Blake and Lupin had the same aesthetics. Do you know what will happen at Hogwarts this year? Harry asked in a low voice. You mean the Triwizard Tournament? Albert asked in surprise. Sirius didn't tell you. He has been busy with the magazine recently, Harry said helplessly. It seems that he likes this job very much. Albert told Harry about the Triwizard Tournament and asked with a smile, Why? Do you want to participate, too? No, it sounds dangerous. Harry shook his head quickly. Although he did have similar thoughts in his heart, he also knew that with Albert's ability, he could easily win the championship 80% of the time. Don't rush to deny it, Albert said suddenly. I have a hunch that you might be involved. Get involved? Harry was a little dazed, not understanding Albert's words. Since you went to Hogwarts to go to school, I have summarized two things. Albert raised his index finger and said, First, there are accidents at Hogwarts every year, and things are related to you. At least you are involved. Bye. Don't deny it in a hurry. You can think about it after listening to me. He raised his hand and interrupted. Second, the defense against the dark arts professor at Hogwarts has problems. Harry was speechless, because it seemed, indeed, as Albert said. It's just a coincidence, he said dryly. Is it really just a coincidence? Albert narrowed his eyes and said, It's really you. Even Harry made you fool you. After seeing Harry walking away in a daze, Lee Jordan smiled and said to Albert, Actually, I always think it's a good fit to be a priest in a church, and I can definitely fool a large number of believers. Don't tell me, if I were Harry, I would believe Albert's words. There was no joking in Fred's words. He really believed the two things Albert mentioned. You also think Mad Eye has a problem? George asked, frowning. Can't you have a sense of humor? Lee Jordan complained. In fact, he also believes Albert's words, although this good friend always likes to fool others with the truth. Do you still remember the year when Harry just enrolled in the school? The incident happened when Coral stole the Philosopher's Stone, and Professor Coral is said to have been possessed by a mysterious person. Albert began to count what happened during Harry's three years of enrollment. Matter. There was a secret room monster attack the year before. Although Lockhart said he was not the person involved, he was an out-and-out -out liar. He was attacked and has not been discharged yet. There was also last year's black prison escape. Harry was also involved, and Professor Lupin was actually a werewolf, and Black is a good friend, and finally came up with Peter who pretended to be a mouse and died for more than ten years. Reed thought it was normal for Harry to be persuaded by Albert, because even he felt that way. There are natural coincidences in the world, but successive coincidences are not called coincidences. Do you think there is a problem with the defense against the dark arts professor this semester? Lee Jordan realized that the three of them were not joking, and condensed the smiles on his faces and began to think about the reasons. By the way, do you know who this year's defense against the dark arts professor is? Crazy-eyed man. Crazy-eyed man? Lee Jordan was a little confused, which was obviously a nickname. Crazy-eyed man? Aristo? Moody. George shared what he knew. It is said that Professor Moody is a retired Auror or an old friend of Professor Dumbledore. His father respects him very much. By the way, Professor Moody seemed to be in trouble this morning. Mr. Diggory said that he thought someone was trying to break into his house, and there was a lot of noise. Dad hurried away early in the morning to help him solve this. I dare to say that the Daily Prophet will publish it a while ago. Fred added, If that crazy-eyed guy has a problem, maybe he was really attacked this morning, and someone tried to control him to do something at Hogwarts. Lee Jordan couldn't help laughing as he spoke. What are you laughing at? George asked puzzledly. It is obviously impossible to use the imperious curse to control a person, and also need to prevent a wise wizard like Dumbledore from noticing it. Albert explained to the two for Lee Jordan. Furthermore, crazy eye. He is a very powerful auror in his own right, and he must have a certain resistance to the imperious curse. For me, as long as I am not a very strong imperious, 
I should be able to resist it, and the Viva in the World Cup failed to fight it. I have too much influence. Fred and George were a little embarrassed. In the World Cup final, they were confused by Viva, and they were both recruited in the box. After the incident, Ron did not use this incident to laugh at them. What if the wizard who attacked him just wanted to sneak into the school pretending to be him? George looked at Albert and asked, If it is you, can you pretend to be someone else through clever transformation magic? As far as I know, the aura of the Ministry of Magic will change his appearance through transformation magic. I haven't tried it. If you give me some time to practice, I should be able to do it, but I think it should be very difficult to use shape-shifting magic to pretend to be a certain person. Albert is confident in his own shape-shifting magic. He said, if you want to pretend to be someone else, I think the other party will use compound potions, so that it is not easy to be seen. Especially if you want to hide from a wizard like Dumbledore, the transformation magic is easy to be seen. Flaw. But it is impossible for him to drink potions all the time. That would need to consume a lot of compound potions. Lee Jordan felt that it was not okay for someone to use potions to lurch in school for a long time. It takes a full month to make compound potions. To pretend to be a professor through medicine requires a large amount of medicine to be consumed, and there is a risk of exposure. It may be difficult to reach the level of a small cup of compound medicine that lasts for 12 hours, but it should be no problem that the medicine made by a smart pharmacist lasts 10 hours. Albert judged at the level of a pharmacist. Needed medicine the number is definitely not as much as you think. If the Moody that appears tonight is fake, then the curse of the defense against the dark arts class is too terrible. The crazy-eyed man would be unlucky before he took office. The guy who pretended to be him and ran to the school to work is really unimaginable. Maybe one day he will be in Azkaban prison. George ended the conversation with a joking tone. He knew that everyone would be staring at Moody tonight to see if that guy was a fake. By the way, do you read the magazine? If you don't read it, please lend me first. Lee Jordan also no longer entangled the question of the authenticity of the defense against the dark arts professor. He believed that the other party must not be able to hide Albert's eyes. If it is really a fake good thing, this semester is going to be lively. The little dwarf Peter a while ago was really miserable. Look at it first. Albert handed the defense guide magazine to Lee Jordan, took a comb from his pocket, and gave Tom Shunmao. Albert knows the general content of the magazine. A few days before the start of school, Sirius and Lupin wrote letters frequently, discussing various things in the magazine with him, and he arranged the layout and gifts of the defense guide. The magazine also comes with a map of Hogwarts Castle. Fred spread out the map in the magazine, some of which are similar to the spot map, with detailed indications of the locations of classrooms, halls and lounges, and the shortest route. Let the new students integrate into the school faster through the map. Avoid the embarrassment of the new students cannot find the classroom during the enrollment period. That's a gift for the wizard who ordered the four-month magazine in one breath. Albert explained, It's a small gift for freshmen. Of course, there are other gifts to choose from. What other gifts? George asked curiously. Danger warning device, Albert said without hesitation. Your new invention? The inspiration I got from the sight glass is to detect the surroundings of the house. Once a malicious wizard appears, the danger warning device will sound an alarm. His advantage is that it is not easy to cause false alarms. There should be an upgraded version of this thing, right? The three of them immediately heard the business opportunity of the hazard warning device. With Albert's character, the best thing would definitely not be sold, and now is not the best time to sell this thing. Someday the magic world really starts to turmoil, this thing will definitely sell well. Yes, that thing is a crude version. There is also a beta version of the pocket watch, but I gave it away. Albert did not deny that the hazard warning device is actually similar to the sight glass, but he adjusted the spell and added it. There are several kinds of magic. Give it away? Lee Jordan looked at Albert in disbelief. Idiot. It must be his girlfriend. George could guess who Albert gave away without even thinking about it. By the way, when will you get married? Lee Jordan said with a smile. Remember to find me to be the best man at that time. I am the best man, Fred said. It's time to guess the punch, George suggested. How do you feel? I mean this magazine. How did you feel after visiting? Albert asked, turning the subject off. I think it's very good. It should be hot. 
at least very practical for ordinary wizard families, Fred gave a high evaluation, especially from Albert learned that the British wizard's dark magic defense is average. After leveling up, I feel that this magazine will be more popular. Whether it is the analysis of the situation, the popularization of the dark marks and death eaters, or even how to deal with the uninvited dark wizard, George is very familiar with the method given in the magazine. You should run away immediately when you encounter danger, and then try to notify the Ministry of Magic. Although the method is indeed a bit intimidating, the magazine said that it makes sense that ordinary wizards are not the opponents of dark wizards at all, and saving their lives is the best choice. The magazine also teaches several spells to strengthen the protection of their houses. They are actually very practical. You must know that no one in the school teaches them, and ordinary wizards don't even know how to strengthen the safety of their houses. It feels like the content is a bit mixed, and the part of dealing with pests is completely made up, and how to distinguish it, it feels useless to deal with dangerous plants. The guide to defense is more like a professor teaching you how to defend against the dark arts, that is, the content is more complicated, and it is divided into several areas. For example, every issue will teach you a few practical spells, such as disarming spells, coma spells, and obstacle spells, teach you how to crack the evil spells, how to deal with some of the more common pests, magical creatures, and dangerous plants, such as how to calmly deal with dangers, and the correct treatment methods after injuries. The last few pages of the magazine are used to serialize novel stories. The content of this issue is A Day in the Prisoner of Azkaban. The Guide to Defense has 48 pages, and the content is actually not much but compared to other magazines, it has a lot of pages. Of course, the price is not cheap. Ten silvers are available for one copy, which is a relatively high price in magazines, especially in the case of Panic. However, it is undoubtedly worth the price. If it could be cheaper, I would definitely buy it. Lee Jordan mumbled. Ten silver coins are really too expensive, not a 50% discount. The price was given by Albert. Just opened. In order to attract customers, if you order in the last few months, you can get a 50% discount and a free gift. Actually, I also think the price is too expensive. Please allow me to use your magazine for free before graduation. Fred returned the magazine to Albert with a smile. How much is your canary biscuits? Albert asked rhetorically. Seven silver kashi. Now, do you think it is expensive? Compared with other magazines, it's really expensive. Xenophilius Love Goods, the contradictory, only needs a few gnats. Fred pointed out this fact. Would you be willing to spend a few gnats to buy a copy of The Contradictory? Albert asked back. If I found fun on the internet, when I didn't say it, well, you're right, that's rubbish. Fred and George both felt that Albert was right, and they couldn't get fun from the magazine anyway. Well, you can always tell your own truth. Lee Jordan shrugged. Anyway, he was about to rub Albert's magazine. Are you also planning to use this magazine as a breakthrough point to sell defense against the dark arts props? George felt that he had guessed Albert's plan. No wonder he would be willing to spend the time and energy to help Sirius start the magazine. I do have this idea. Albert did not deny that this is indeed part of the plan. I think we also need a similar magazine to introduce our joke props, Fred murmured, so that people can better understand our joke props and they can choose what they like at any time to order owls. Isn't it already done? George was speechless, the advice Albert gave last time. Yes? Fred was a little confused. Why didn't he know? It was still raining outside, and the four people in the carriage got together to discuss the future. Making money and realizing their ideals obviously attract their attention more than other things. They talked for a long time, and even rarely borrowed a pen from Albert to record the idea just mentioned. Lee Jordan was very interested in the wizard broadcasting project that Albert had mentioned, and he thought he could set up a broadcasting station in the school to test it. Albert did not refuse, but said he could not help on the radio. Fred and George found it very interesting and expressed their willingness to help. The three soon began to discuss how to build a radio station, completely unaware that they were simply too busy. The Hogwarts Express train finally slowed down. It was still pouring rain outside the window and there was a rumble of thunder in the sky. The students who had just got off the train were instantly drenched by the hurried rain. Tom got wet from the rain even when he held up an umbrella. It's really choking, let's go, 
I don't want to stay here in the rain, Fred urged. The students who were dizzy by the cold rain had to lower their heads and move their feet little by little with the flow of people. They left the dark platform and passed a rough and muddy road, and finally found a horse-drawn carriage in the wind and rain. Everyone quickened their pace and crowded in the direction of the carriage. Some of the hapless guys even fell to the ground as a result. The four Alberts picked up a carriage at random and climbed in. After closing the door to isolate the cold wind from the rain outside, Fred noticed that Albert was not wet by the rain and couldn't help asking, What did you do? Arrived? I just turned my robe into a raincoat and my boots into rain boots. Albert explained, moreover, I'm holding an umbrella, so I won't get wet by the rain. You are well prepared and don't know if there is a water curse, Lee Jordan said and looked at Albert. You can try to cover yourself with a bubble head curse. I'm sure it will prevent the rain. Albert thought of a bad idea. It might seem a bit funny. If you want, I can try it. While talking, Albert raised his wand and pointed it at Lee Jordan. The next moment, most of his body was covered in a bubble curse, just looking quite funny. It looks good, like in a big soap bubble. It just looks funny. Fred and George couldn't help but laugh, and they used their fingers to poke the foam outside. Not to mention, the outer foam was so tough that it didn't burst. Amidst laughter, the carriage bumped towards Hogwarts Castle. The night horse carriage stopped in front of the oak gate of the castle. Fred, George, and Lee Jordan got out of the carriage one after another. They held up their umbrellas with their wands, blocked the rain curtain on their heads, and looked at the group with interest. The heavy rain rushed to the students of the stone steps. Albert picked up a Hufflepuff girl who accidentally fell to the ground and walked into the castle with Shauna who was waiting for him. I read the paper and said something happened to the World Cup. Shauna frowned as she looked at the students who were pushing each other forward and screaming. Something bad really happened. Albert took the wand and tapped the water bomb thrown at Pepe Ghost, turning it into a leaky balloon. Okay, Pepe Ghost. Don't mess around here. Nosy kid. Pepegui gave a rude gesture to Albert and giggled. He didn't know that he took out two water bombs from there and threw them at the densest place. Amidst a scream, he flew away with a grotesque smile. Pippi Ghost is still that bad. Looking at the back of Pippi Ghost, Shauna shouted to the drenched student, Enter the auditorium. Don't squeeze here. How did you do it? A boy couldn't help asking. What do you do to make Pippi obedient? Albert looked sideways at the boy with light brown hair and a strong Irish accent. As everyone knows, Pippi will not buy it except for Barrow and Dumbledore. I can't make Pippi obedient. Albert shook his head and said, Go in. The sorting ceremony should begin soon. The auditorium is still the same as before, and the school has been specially decorated to welcome the new semester banquet. The college desk was already full of chattering students, and Fred, George, and Lee Jordan had reserved a space for him. When Albert and Shauna passed, the Weasley twins were chatting with Angelina and Alia about the Quidditch World Cup final. I'm so hungry. Lee Jordan grabbed the knife and fork and looked at the golden dish in front of him eagerly. I really hope they will carry out the sorting ceremony soon. At the time, I was nearby. Alia said gloomily on the night of the World Cup riots. Those evil guys in hoods and masks control four poor muggles, set fires everywhere, and the tents in that area. They were all burned. I really don't know what the people at the Ministry of Magic are doing, and they don't even plan to compensate for the financial losses. My father was so angry that he sent a roaring letter to Fudge. He thought it was a mistake of the ministry. There was magic at the time. Ministry officials are nearby, and no one has stopped the riot at all. I know a little bit about this. George took out what he knew to share with everyone. Percy told me that many wizards lied about their property losses and tried to make money from the Ministry of Magic. After registration, Magic the Ministry found out that it needed to pay a large sum of galleons, so it decided not to do anything at all. George's voice was masked by the thunder that rang outside the castle, and a forked lightning flashed across the ceiling above everyone. At the entrance of the auditorium, Professor McGonagall led the first-year students into the auditorium. When they were crossing the lake, they were soaked in heavy rain, and they were shaking all over. The style of the famous freshman is different from that of others. Wearing Hagrid's moleskin coat, he looks very excited, 
as if he has just won the Quidditch competition. The freshman stared blankly at the shabby wizard hat placed on the triangular stool in front of them. At the moment when the sorting hat began to sing, the freshmen were dumbfounded, and the original auditorium gradually became quiet. After an unheard song of the sorting hat, the familiar sorting ceremony officially kicked off. It was a boring ceremony. As the prefect, Albert needed time to remember the new members of Gryffindor College. However, the boy in the haggard cloak brought some novelty to Albert. He was telling people about how he was rescued by a big squid after he fell into the lake. Our defense against the dark arts professor seems to have not come to school yet. George touched Albert with his arm and said, pointing to the empty seat in the teacher's seat. Maybe something is late. Who knows what grades are needed for the newly appointed defense against the dark arts professor's improvement class? Shauna was a little depressed. Her defense against the dark arts score was only good. As long as most of the courses are good, they are allowed to go to the improvement class. Angelina comforted, Thanks to Albert for giving us a makeup class last semester, this semester's defense against the dark arts professor found that a group of people reached the improvement class. Level, I'm sure to be surprised. I hope I can come to a good professor. What you can learn in this course depends entirely on the professor's teaching level. Alia believes that everyone's poor defense against the dark arts is entirely the professor's problem. If there is another Lockhart with that kind of stuff, I don't think it doesn't matter if I go to a higher level class. Don't worry, the defense against the dark arts professor this semester is a powerful character and is said to be a retired Auror. Lee Jordan happily shared the good news with everyone. Which courses are you going to take? Shauna asked Albert, who was immersed in eating. The first five courses, as well as ancient magic writing and arithmetic divination, Albert said after swallowing the pork chop in his mouth and taking a big sip of the drink. By the way, I haven't congratulated you on winning two world awards. Angelina raised the goblet to Albert. There is also a third level medal of Sir Merlin. Shauna also raised the goblet. Counting out, you have already won four heavyweight titles. Alia also raised the goblet to Albert. Maybe you can win another Triwizard Championship. I can guarantee that Albert is definitely a genius in Hogwarts history who can reach that height before graduation. Fred and George also raised the goblet. You should be recorded in Hogwarts, a school history. Respect our genius, Lee Jordan said with a smile. At this moment, a deafening thunder sounded outside, and the door of the auditorium was slammed open. A strange man appeared at the entrance of the auditorium and immediately attracted everyone's attention. A forked lightning flashed across the ceiling, illuminating the stranger's cheeks. It was a scarred veteran with war wounds still remaining on his face. It seemed extremely hideous, and the most intriguing thing about this man was him. S eyes. Yes, false eyes. One of the eyes of the strange man is fake, and it turns around up and down, which makes people feel very uncomfortable. Suddenly I kind of understand why he has the nickname Mad Eye. Fred murmured. It's really suitable. Lee Jordan nodded in agreement. Maybe... We can learn a lot of useful knowledge this semester. What do you think? George is asking if Mad Eye Moody is fake. I don't know, but it should be a magic eye with special effects. Albert looked at Moody with interest, wondering how to use the technology of the magic eye to study, the kind of see-through camouflage, invisibility, hidden magic, and weird perspective techniques are actually very useful. The others seemed to be stunned by the strange man's appearance, and they all stared at him intently. Moody seemed indifferent to everyone's reaction. He walked directly to Dumbledore and shook hands with him like an old friend. The two whispered a few words and sat on his right at Dumbledore's sign. Empty seats. Dumbledore happily introduced the new defense against the dark arts teacher, but apart from him and Hager in the auditorium, almost no one applauded the new professor. Moody didn't care about it. He pulled a plate of sausages and ate it with a knife in his pocket as if the utensils on the table were all smeared with poison. The habits of the Auror for many years have made Moody's instinctively look at the students in the auditorium with magic eyes. What do you think he is drinking? Albert saw Moody pull out a curved wine bottle from the travel cloak, and when he took a sip, the corners of his mouth could not help but curl up slightly. It's definitely not pumpkin juice, Fred speculated. I don't think it's pumpkin juice either. George immediately agreed. 
Of course it's not pumpkin juice. Lee Jordan exchanged glances with his friends around him, feeling that Moody was really suspicious. If you don't know it, it is normal to think that there is wine in it, but the four of you are suspicious of Moody's identity, then the curved wine bottle may not necessarily contain wine. What are you talking about? Angelina was puzzled by the four people's words. Okay. Dumbledore looked at everyone with a smile. I want to announce a few notices. No one really cares. The annual notice is basically the same. Filch prohibited items. Everyone is prohibited from entering the Forbidden Forest. Students below the third grade are not allowed to go to Hogsmeade Village. I also regret to tell you that the College Cup Quidditch will not be held this year. Dumbledore waited for the noise to calm down and continued, I am very happy to tell everyone that the Triwizard Tournament will be held, held at Hogwarts this year. The principals of Booth Barton and Durmstrang will lead their carefully selected competitors to come, and the selection ceremony for the Warriors will be held on Halloween. After hearing that, in addition to winning honors for their own school, individuals can also receive a 1,000-gallon bonus. Many students were shining on both sides. With all their faces writing, I want to participate. After all, if you can get honor and wealth, who will give up? There was a whisper in the auditorium, and countless students imagined that they would become a warrior of Hogwarts. I know you are all eager to win the Triwizard Trophy for Hogwarts, Dumbledore said. This summer, we have done a lot of work to ensure that every warrior does not endanger his life. However, the participating schools and the Ministry of Magic agreed that only students over the age of 17 are allowed to sign up. Because the competition is still very difficult and dangerous, no matter how much precautions we take, students under the 6th and 7th grades cannot handle it. Some people protested in anger after hearing Dumbledore's words. However, Fred, George, and Lee Jordan forced themselves to laugh. They all thought those angry protesters were stupid. What's wrong with you? Angelina asked suspiciously. Stomachache? Warrior? There is only one. Alia said meaningfully. Ahem. Albert told Alia to shut up. Don't attract firepower to himself. They got it. Yes, there is only one warrior. As long as Dumbledore has no problem, he will definitely make Albert a warrior. Who can compete with Albert? The delegation of Booth Barton and Durmstrand will arrive in October and spend most of the school year with us. Dumbledore had to raise his voice. I know foreign guests are staying here. During this period, you will all be warm and friendly, and you will wholeheartedly support the Warriors at Hogwarts. I know you are all eager to win the Triwizard Trophy for Hogwarts, Dumbledore said. This summer, we have done a lot of work to ensure that every warrior does not endanger his life. However, the participating schools and the Ministry of Magic agreed that only students over the age of 17 are allowed to sign up. Because the competition is still very difficult and dangerous, no matter how much precautions we take, students under the 6th and 7th grades cannot handle it. Some people protested in anger after hearing Dumbledore's words. However, Fred, George, and Lee Jordan forced themselves to laugh. They all thought those angry protesters were stupid. What's wrong with you? Angelina asked suspiciously. Stomachache? Warrior? There is only one. Alia said meaningfully. Ahem. Albert told Alia to shut up. Don't attract firepower to himself. They got it. Yes, there is only one warrior. As long as Dumbledore has no problem, he will definitely make Albert a warrior. Who can compete with Albert? The delegation of Booth Barton and Durmstrand will arrive in October and spend most of the school year with us. Dumbledore had to raise his voice. I know foreign guests are staying here. During this period, you will all be warm and friendly, and you will wholeheartedly support the warriors at Hogwarts. Dumbledore ended the dinner amidst the controversial noise. Yuyukeungshu.com drove all the students back to sleep. Actually, I think their quarrel is meaningless. Professor McGonagall shook his head after the students left. I think so too. The warrior at Hogwarts must be Albert, Hagrid said confidently. It seems that the warriors in our school have been selected. Moody raised his eyebrows slightly when he was talking to Dumbledore. To be honest, I am a little worried that other schools will request that Mr. Anderson be banned from participating in the competition on the grounds that Albert is the gold medal winner of this year's Banabs, Finkley's excellent spelling technique. 
Professor Flittick also felt that AI Bird's participation in the Triwizard Tournament is indeed a bit bully. Mr. Anderson is also a student of Hogwarts. It makes perfect sense for him to be a warrior to participate in the competition. Professor Sprout suddenly looked forward to how other schools would react. Listening to the professor's views on this matter, Barty Jr. suddenly felt that the situation was a bit bad. However, it is even worse. That guy is definitely a fake. In Albert's dormitory, the group of four is discussing whether Moody's is true or not. The thing in the curved bottle is definitely a compound medicine. What do you think the other party has in coming to school pretending to be Moody? Fred took the lead in asking the question. His target may be Harry. Why? Anything you can't think of, it makes sense to push it wherever you are. For example, the other party actually came to murder Harry. Fred said, murder Harry? This is definitely the dumbest way. Albert, what do you think? I don't know, but it's probably related to Harry. Albert said, if Moody is really fake, can it be predicted? Cannot. It's enviable. I always feel that the difficulty of ancient magic texts has increased a lot. I don't understand what Professor Babbling is saying in class anymore. Shauna took the time to glance at her deskmate. Albert I haven't been attending the class since the beginning of the class, and I don't know what I'm doing there. Language should be used frequently. Reading books, memorizing words, and translating articles are all good choices. With Albert's speech, Professor Babbling on the stage has finished the content of today's course. Then, amidst everyone's wailing, after leaving two articles to be translated, they signaled that everyone could dismiss the get out of class. Mr. Anderson, stay after class. Professor Babbling stopped Albert when everyone was about to leave the ancient magic text classroom. Others cast inquiring gazes at Albert, wondering what Professor Babbling asked Albert to stay for. It seems that the improvement class of ancient magic text has disappointed you. That's right. You came over to listen to it a long time ago. Professor Babbling did not get angry because Albert was doing his own thing in class. Instead, he used to chat with his friends. The tone said, How is Isabel's guide to ancient magic texts doing now? It should be done before Christmas. It's much faster than I expected. Professor Babbling murmured, surprised by Isabel's work efficiency. However, if you want to use the Guide to Ancient Magic Texts as a textbook for ancient magic texts, you still need to make appropriate deletions to make the content in the book easy to understand, so that everyone can easily access, learn the basics, and systematically. Ancient Magic Text Albert paused for a while and reorganized his speech. It's best to move the ancient magic text to the first grade. This kind of thing needs to be learned from an early age. In the third grade, he desperately went to the students. They have a bunch of strange things in their heads, and it is unrealistic to expect them to learn the ancient magic texts well. This requires a lot of time and energy, and there are a lot of classes to be taught in the third grade, and there is definitely not much time and energy to focus on this class. There was a moment of silence, and both of them knew that Dumbledore did not expect the students to learn more from this course. Most wizards had difficulty translating an article of several hundred words. Albert is actually even more curious about how Dumbledore and Crouch learn dozens of languages. Even if they weren't proficient, it was incredible how they could communicate with others. According to Albert's observations over the years, wizards are no smarter than ordinary people. He ultimately blamed the magical world for these inconceivables. It is impossible to speculate with common sense. We can't be too demanding. Not everyone is like you. You can easily translate ancient magic texts into English at a glance. Professor Babbling showed a wry smile on his face, using Albert on the ancient magic texts. There is no need to attend the ancient magic writing improvement class anymore, because the ultimate goal of this course is to let students understand and understand the ancient magic writing, nothing more. Even the outstanding students who have graduated can't reach it, to the level of Albert. You should also be very clear that the ancient magic text is not just a language. Albert frowned and said, The most important part of it is being forgotten by people. Maybe one day, everyone will treat it as a language. Old language treatment. It seems that you still have not given up on digging into the knowledge of ancient magic texts. I am actually looking forward to the moment your book of magic texts is published. Professor Babbling looked at his students and recalled what he said past words. 
Ancient magic text is not just a language. It still hides a lot of things. It is an important part of ancient magic. It's just that many things are forgotten by people, causing the current wizards to fail to understand them and feel that those ancient magic is powerful and unbelievable and cannot be cracked. If you need help, you can come to me. I am very happy to be able to provide you with some help, Professor Babbling said with a smile. Today, there are nine students in the ancient magic writing class. In fact, there are quite a few. Professor Babbling remembers only five people at least once, and there are very few peers like Albert and Isabel who can become exchanges. Yes, peers. Professor Babbling has never regarded Albert as a student, at least after Albert showed his abilities, he did not pass. Even most of his homework is exempted from him. It doesn't matter whether he does it or not. Flexible education methods should give outstanding students more freedom to play. Of course, Albert did not love the ancient magic texts as much as he showed. He himself wanted those ancient magics, the reputation he could gain, and the ability to complete the panel tasks by the way. The most important thing is that Albert felt that he should find something to do for himself and record the knowledge he gained from the skill panel, which is a good job. Who wouldn't do copywriting? The ancient magic text is a good direction because many people don't understand it. If you don't understand it, it means that his spells are difficult to crack and his magic will become unpredictable in people's eyes. In the future, he can also hold the title of Master of Magic, Expert, or Professor, and these titles can often bring him a lot of convenience. When the time comes, he can also go to Hogwarts to teach students. What does Professor Babbling do with you? While eating lunch, Shauna asked about it curiously, could it be because you didn't listen to the class seriously, so I kept you locked up? It's about the guide to ancient magic texts that Isabel is preparing to publish. Albert deliberately lowered his voice and said, Professor Babbling is also giving suggestions for the book to make ancient magic texts more systematic and easy to learn. We are going to use the guide to ancient magic texts to replace a simple introduction to ancient magic texts as a textbook for third grade students. Guide to ancient magic texts. Do you plan to publish a book yourself to replace a simple introduction to ancient magic text and become a textbook for third grade students? It seems to say that a book on defense against the dark arts is going to be published. A deep sense of frustration surged from my heart and the two parties were really not in the same world. When the guide to ancient magic texts is published, I will definitely buy one. Shauna's smile was a little stiff. When the time comes, don't set the price too high. The price should be around two gallons. What two gallons? Fred and George walked over with a grin. Book pricing. So, do you plan to publish that Defense Against the Dark Arts book before graduation? No, I plan to publish that book after graduation, Albert explained. This is not what we were talking about. Have you heard of it? Lee Jordan hurried over, talking about the news he had just heard. I don't know what's going on. Now someone in the school has heard that the Warriors of Hogwarts are already your business. How did you do it? Albert asked, frowning. Some things need a fig leaf, which can reduce a lot of trouble. Even if everyone knows that Albert will become a warrior at Hogwarts, they can't say it naked. Because the selection of warriors is relatively fair from the beginning, every student over the age of 17 can participate and has the opportunity to become a warrior. In fact, Hogwarts will also provide a fair opportunity for everyone. Albert eventually became a warrior. It can only be said that his ability is better than other wizards, which has nothing to do with the default. I don't know, anyway. Such a rumor spread inexplicably in the castle this morning. Lee Jordan didn't know which idiot was spreading the rumor everywhere, and there were people who believed it. Albert can completely become a warrior of Hogwarts by his strength, and there is no need for the so-called default at all. As long as you are a clear-headed guy, you must know that you are the most suitable candidate for the warrior, Fred comforted. I dare say that most of the girls in Hogwarts want you to be Hogwarts's warriors. After all, you have so many sturdy records, participated in several international competitions, and easily won the championship. You will definitely be able to easily defeat the warriors of the other two schools and win the championship of the Triwizard Tournament for Hogwarts. The key is the default da, George reminded. Yes, some idiots who are dazzled by jealousy will think that Albert has the inside story of getting the warriors. Lee Jordan also felt that the guy spreading the telephony was purely unkind. 
In the afternoon at the defense against the dark arts class, Albert finally knew what was going on. Cedric Diggory took the initiative to come to him, revealing that he accidentally caused the incident. The reason is that Cedric's friends think he is fully qualified to compete for the Warriors at Hogwarts, but Cedric said that if Albert intends to participate in the Triwizard Tournament, no one else has a chance. In fact, he is telling the truth, but it doesn't necessarily mean that when it comes to other people's ears. Then, everything comes from jealousy. After all, Albert had already made his mark during the summer vacation. Don't worry, once a person becomes famous, even if you don't want to, trouble will automatically come to you. Albert showed a helpless wry smile, patted Cedric on the shoulder and said, Before the Warriors were selected, everyone has the opportunity to compete fairly, and I have a hunch that the Triwizard Tournament may not be peaceful. You predicted it, you know what I mean? Cedric stared at Albert with wide eyes. I couldn't help but took a sneak peek, and the result was a bit unexpected. You can look forward to the selection of the Warriors a little bit. Albert smiled and greeted the others before walking into the defense against the dark arts classroom. What did he tell you? Actually, I hope he can get the Warriors, Cedric said. However, I will try it. Albert is right. Before the Warriors at Hogwarts are selected, everyone all have the opportunity to be a warrior. Soon after, Moody walked to the podium with difficulty on crutches and scanned the students in the classroom with his magic eyes. I received a letter from Professor Lupin, and he introduced me to the course. To be honest, it really surprised me that when you changed five professors in a row, so many people passed the OWLS exam for this course. Everyone exchanged glances, with a smug smile on their faces. You have just finished Dark Force, a guide to self-defense. To be honest, I really don't want to comment on this book. The content is just like that. In my opinion, you lack the knowledge to deal with spells. Therefore, I am going to teach how do you deal with black magic. Everyone looked very excited, and finally a reliable professor came. Now put your textbooks away, you don't need that thing today. Moody took out the roster and started to call the name, focusing on a certain name. It seems that there is a celebrity in our class. Where is Albert Anderson? Bit. Stand up and let me know. Everyone turned their heads to look at Albert and Albert stood up from his seats under everyone's gaze. Anderson, please tell me what to do when facing dark magic. Moody put down the roster, looked at Albert with his magic eyes, and raised his right hand slightly as he spoke. You should be vigilant at all times, sir. When Albert answered, Moody did not know when he had raised his wand, and a red light flew towards Albert without warning. Careful. I don't know who screamed. When the red light was about to hit Albert, he raised his hand and swiped it aside, as if it was a sandbag flying over just now. The curse was just like that. It was blocked by Albert, and there was a scream not far away. It was obvious that an unlucky person suffered a disaster and was affected by the curse. The sudden change stunned all the students. Before they could react, they saw the wand in Moody's hand flying out, traversing an elegant arc in the air, and Albert was holding it in his hand. Inside. The students in the classroom stared dumbfounded at the wand held by Albert, and then at the disarmed Moody. What happened just now? The unlucky voice hit by the pimple curse nearby brought everyone's attention back. Very good, very good, worthy of the name. I am very happy. To be honest, other professors have told me that they think you are very likely to be selected as the warrior of Hogwarts. I still don't believe it. Moody's way way he took a breath and continued, at your level. If you participate in the Triwizard Tournament, I don't think the Warriors from other schools will be your opponents. There was sporadic applause in the classroom, and the applause became more and more intense, and finally became a piece. Except for a few Slytherin students who did not applaud, other college students were applauding for Albert. Albert helped them learn the defense against the Dark Arts last semester, which is still somewhat useful. In particular, they didn't react to the confrontation between the Sparks and the Fire just now and Albert not only blocked Professor Moody's magic sneak attack, but also successfully disarmed Professor Moody's wand, which was really cool. After the applause, Professor Moody took the magic wand passed by the students in the front row and said to Albert, You can consider becoming an Auror after graduation. With your grades and skills, you will definitely be able to achieve the fastest speed. Through the Auror's assessment, before that, 
You can learn some experience in dealing with dark magic and dark wizards from my class. Okay, sit down. I will consider it carefully. Albert lightly waved his wand to relieve the pimple curse on Roger Davis, who was hapless and did not forget to say sorry to him. It's not your fault. It's just that I am more unlucky. Roger Davis murmured. Sir, I'm very curious about how Anderson got the spell wrong. A Hufflepuff boy glanced at the hapless Roger and raised his hand to ask. Anderson used the iron armor curse to deflect my pimple curse. Moody turned his magic eyes around and stared at Albert as if he wanted to see him through. Anderson used wandless magic. To be honest, this technique is for you. It's quite remote, and only skilled wizards can master this technique. Sir, can you use wandless magic? Lee Jordan asked, raising his hand. I can barely do it, but I usually don't take the risk to use it in confrontation with the enemy, because that is to make fun of my own life. Moody regained his gaze and patted his hands to calm down the whispering students. I don't expect you to be half of Anderson's level, but at least I hope you can listen to each of my lessons carefully. Okay, let's get back to business. You are in the sixth grade, and you can be allowed to come into contact with some illegal black magic spells. In my opinion, the sooner you understand what you need to deal with, the better. If you have never seen something, how can you protect yourself in front of it? Moody glanced at the students in the classroom with magic eyes. Now, who can tell me, if a certain wizard wants to recite an illegal spell for you, what should you do? The students in the classroom looked at each other, and no one took the initiative to answer. In the end, Moody's looked directly at Albert. Anderson, tell me what will you do? Strike first to break his spell, Albert said without hesitation. If it's too late, just avoid it or get an obstacle to block the spell. Very well, I'm very happy to hear that it is not blocked with an iron armor curse. Many black magic cannot be blocked with an iron armor curse. The iron armor curse is indeed a very practical defensive spell, which can effectively block many spells, but in the face when you don't know the magic, it's best not to take risks. Moody yelled at the other students. Remember, criminals will not tell you his plans, let alone chanting spells to you stupidly, if your actions are sufficient. If you are fast, immediately interrupt him to cast the spell. Of course, Anderson's actions may be fast enough, but I don't expect you to be able to do it, so avoiding unknown spells is your best choice. If there are strong obstacles nearby, it's a good choice to move the obstacle over to block the spell, or to hide behind the obstacle. Usually, you don't expect criminals to fight you upright. They will do everything they can to defeat or even kill you. This is one of the reasons why Aurus need to master the hidden and disguise skills. Avoid being attacked after revealing your identity and falling into a disadvantage. When fighting criminals, one will pay the price if you are not careful. He pointed to his eyes and legs. Of course, I don't want to encourage you to go. Sneak attack on your classmates is definitely the most dirty, despicable, and cowardly behavior. I hope you don't confuse this matter. The students in the classroom began to whisper, very surprised that Professor Moody would talk about these things in class. Now, who can tell me what illegal spells will be punished the most severely by the Ministry of Magic? Moody said hoarsely, you can't count on Anderson every time. Don't tell me no one can answer. The Imperious Curse, the Heart Drilling Curse, and the Avada Soul Curse. They are known as the Three Unforgivable Curses. Once any one of them is used on humans, they are enough to be imprisoned in Azkaban for a lifetime. George is like this. I recite the content as if I was reciting the article. Very well, as Mr. Weasley said, the Imperious Curse, the Heart Drilling Curse, and the Avada Sutra Curse are called the Three Unforgivable Curses by the Magic World. They are all extremely evil and cruel black magic. For human use, I'm afraid I will have to spend my life in Azkaban but you can't expect the Ministry of Magic's laws to frighten those criminals, let alone try to use the Iron Armor Curse to stop the unforgivable curse. Moody suddenly yelled, the best way is to stay vigilant at all times and try to avoid being hit by them. Everyone was taken aback by Moody's yelling again. What's the matter, Anderson? Moody's looked at Albert, who raised his hand, and the others also looked at Albert. Sir? Is there a way to tell whether a person has planted an imperius? Albert asked. Unfortunately, no. Moody shook his head and said, 
Some clever imperious curses are difficult to distinguish. Is there a way to dispel the imperious curse imposed on others? Albert seemed unwilling to get such a result and asked again. If you can find a solution to the imperious curse, the Ministry of Magic will definitely be happy to award you another Sir Merlin First Class Medal. Moody's scarred face suddenly became distorted and weird, he recalled. Years ago, many wizards have been controlled by the imperious curse. People can't tell who is forced to act and who is acting according to their wishes. So, how do they get rid of the control of the imperious curse? Albert asked again. Most of the spells will weaken over time. Moody seemed satisfied with Albert's question and even smiled friendly at him. Wizards who have been casted by the imperious curse will also gradually come into conflict. The resistance of the soul curse will eventually get rid of the control of the imperious curse, but that is not an easy task. The imperious curse can be resisted, but it requires your willpower to be strong enough. Not everyone can do this. You should try to avoid being hit by it and stay vigilant at all times. He suddenly yelled, again. It shocked everyone. Sir, what kind of spell is that? With Albert taking the lead, others joined the questioning team. There is no doubt that the heart drill is also a very evil spell, and it cannot be resisted. Maybe the iron armor curse can weaken part of its power, but the effect is very ordinary. Moody's face suddenly had a cruel smile. It is said mysterious people like to use it to torture people, and this spell was once very popular because of this. Anyone hit by the heart drilling charm will feel piercing pain all over the body. That kind of pain will make it painful to be cast. Moody seems to think of some unpleasant memories. You don't want to try that kind of it's good. It's considered evil black magic for no reason. Of course, the heart drill requires powerful magical power as a support. Generally, only very evil wizards can use it freely. Therefore, if ordinary wizards use them, the effect is very general. But I am here to warn you not to try to use them, even if there is such a thing. The idea of will not work unless you want to go to jail for a lifetime. When Moody said this, his eyes fell on the Slytherin student. You know? I know, sir. Everyone said in unison. I hope you don't forget. Moody murmured. Okay, let's talk about the last and most powerful spell. The Avideso Curse. Death Curse. After Moody's finished speaking, many people behaved very upset, apparently knowing the Avada's mantra. Albert remembers using it before although Smith was eventually killed by the eight-eyed giant spider. Avideso Mantra has a very obvious feature, that is, when the spell is used, a dazzling green light will appear. There is no way to break the spell, and there is no way to resist it. The best way is not to let the spell hit, or use a strong enough obstacle to block it, but the killing spell will cause serious damage to these objects. Under normal circumstances, if you encounter when someone uses a life-killing spell on you, my advice is to avoid it and don't risk your life. Sir, I heard that Harry Potter survived under the Avideso curse. Albert raised his hand and asked. Yes, but no one knows how he did this. Potter himself probably doesn't know. So I suggest you don't waste your efforts. Moody went on. Avideso's curse needs to be very powerful. Many wizards can't use it as a foundation. Even if you read this spell at me, I suspect that I will stay in the St. Mungo's Magical Injury Hospital for half a year at most. Of course, unless Anderson, everyone couldn't help but laugh. I hope you must be fully aware of what is the worst situation and know how to deal with it. Of course, don't encounter the best. Remember, stay vigilant at all times. He roared and shocked the class again. Do you like this video? Let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on my future uploads.